All right, here we go. It begins. It begins. That's uh, uh, that's definitely a case by case thing. The doctor and uh, you know, person's parents have to uh, consider. I was like, when am I getting my check for promoting you in far leftist circles as the most extreme leftist? <laughs> uh, if you're promoting me in leftist circles, hey, I'll take it. Uh, but uh, I don't know. Uh, hmm. I don't know what I'm uh, more extreme on. Uh, than I feel leftist, bad that, that both of us are covered by chat. Manuel Breeden says, are you nervous about do. tomorrow? What is tomorrow and what should I be nervous about? Can you let me know? Uh, I, I, I want to know. I'm curious here. Hey, welcome to the fold, Parka. Happy to have you. Okay. Look at this. Yeah, this I'm, I'm curious. Here. What should I be? What's going on tomorrow that I need to be worried about? You know, let me know. What's going on? Look at this. What's happening? This is wild. Wait, what? Why is why is oh, Bastian just, talking so loudly? Nothing's happening. Tomorrow. Is he mute? Is he not muted? Okay. Yeah, I'm not sure what's going on. <laughs> yeah, what's happening? All right. So we're all here. But we're all here. So last yes. username's here. So I am here. We got hey, Aubrey, how's it going? Mad man. Good. How are you doing, Bastiat? You would. Doing good. How are you? I'm doing pretty good. Wait, is let me just for the for the for the for the record, is it Bastiat or is it Bastier? I hear both all the time. Bastiat. 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 I knew it. I knew I was right. Fuck yeah. That feels so good. Yeah. Vindicated. So I've been saying it wrong Thank this you. whole time. Yeah, I guess so. Vindicated. Oh, well, <laughs> you'll continue to hear it the wrong way, I reckon. And you know what? <laughs> You ain't uh, never said that, so now it's stuck. <laughs> I, I I don't even really think about it anymore. As long as people are watching, I really don't care what they call me. I've never been yeah. on with Mad with That's Mad weird. Man. Yeah, you can call me a lot theory. of Just don't call me. Don't call me late for dinner. That's right. <laughs> okay. Oh my. Oh man. Um. Yeah, Megan, you're you're. Uh, or sorry. Uh. uh CTV. Your uh, your phrase earlier is a real hit. <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, real hit. That's a, that's already a new meme on the channel. The devil P. Huh? Are your eyes yeah. confused by this magic? <laughs> I'm just here to help, brother. I'm just here to help. Yeah. Nah, I appreciate it. I have to. Uh... I will be uh, right back. Oh. Oh, it sounds like op okay. Operation Mammoth needs right, Okay, right so back. so we're gonna have the this will be cl this will be fixed and then the camera will be down here. Milo Yiannopoulos has a lot to answer for. True. Who wins between Riley Bastiat and Dylan's hair? Uh, my personal vote is probably Riley. Um, Dylan's hair is incredibly, incredibly beautiful, though. So it's a close. It's close. It's close. No, Milo is not here. There is no Milo here. Um, Dylan's hair is pretty, pretty good. I'm not a big fan of like super short hair. I just, I'm not, I'm not in general. No offense to anyone who has super short hair. I, I, I really like Riley's hair though. It's stained with the color of American imperialism. True. Hey, Coco Barracuda, so happy to see you. Hope you're doing well. All right. You're a Bastiat hair guy? All right, that's fine. Yeah, I'm now... waiting on uh, Operation Mad Men. Hey, okay. thank right. you. My hair finally yeah. dried out. Yeah, Demon Fun Mama stuff. and Riley Grace. You got it. This is going to be a wild show. It's going to be a good-ass one. Good-ass show. Dylan just turned his camera off, man. What's going on over there, buddy? Dylan, what's happening? It's okay. That will be the fixed. The inevitable Claire's that world has just joined us. Claire, I this is just temporary. Well. How you doing tonight? How's that raid? It was a lot of fun. Yeah, I know. We doing this. We're doing this. This is about to begin. This is just the sort of pre-panel chit-chat as everybody gets their stuff taken care of. I got my water. I got my sodi. I'm ready to fucking blast. So then I started blasting. We got a lot of good hair on this panel, let's be honest. Um, just a Diet Coke today. Demon juice. I had my demon juice earlier, my fucking delicious triple cola, my favorite fucking local soda. Um, but now I just have some Diet Coke. That's all. Grab hey, how's everybody doing I love ginger now? beer. Oh, hey, it begins. Up, How you doing, buddy? Here we I go. Am, I'm doing. I'm doing. I, I'm, I'm doing, to say the least. Well, that's better than the alternative. That is certainly true. That is 100% true. True. So, uh, how, how is everybody... Well, I'm, I'm waiting for everybody to unmute. Is everybody unmuted? The boss yet, sure, I am indeed. It? Test, test. I'm by, man. Yeah. He's, he's been back and forth. Okay, well, okay. Well, I'll just have to do it without him. No matter. I uh, would like to welcome you all to the Hippie to Be podcast. I'm happy for you all taking time out of your day, your long schedules oh. to make the show, uh, to make time for this show and this program. And, you know, it takes a lot to put together. And can you not hear me? 
No, no, you're fine. I'm trying to get Bossy out to I got you. Okay. Any of you. you can't My hear any. Your phones are working just fine. Your earphones oh, are working? I can't hear anybody. Oh, that's. That's that unfortunate. Is unfortunate. That is very unfortunate. And it's great Death to have that happen. Definitely Discord? Now. Bastiat. What's going on? Hi, how's it going? Gonna have to turn having... him down a little bit. Sorry Tech if there's issues a... issues at the very last second. That's all right. My yeah, my internet actually went out like right before I um I was getting ready for the stream today, so I'm my connection is coming from my phone. So hope I don't die. Well, you know I what? Hope I he doesn't die too. Also that you do not pass away. Thanks. I'm gonna have well, to turn I mean, you know, levels like, a little bit here. Doesn't go out. That's what I'm yeah, we love Riley. Okay. I fucking love Riley. I've had um, a couple conversations with her. Currently, Riley's Operation great. Man Man cannot hear anyone. Uh, I don't know how we're going to work with that. I wanted everybody in here <laughs> before I to do I, trip issues. I'm going to scribble out kind of the gist of what I'm saying and hold it up to the camera. Probably a di it's probably uh, Discord settings. I don't know if you want to DM. Uh, yeah, she might just be on streamer mode. Like sometimes I forget to turn streamer mode off. That can happen. Okay, can happen. I will. I will ask her to turn streamer mode off. Let's stop. That's but true. Yeah, otherwise, I'm mullet, I go hard. Time. I do go hard. Um, I'm sorry, gay fash. That sucks. Get that. Get ready now. There's a lot going on on the screen, so that might affect it. I'm not having any issues on my end, thankfully. So hopefully, once you get your stabilized, okay. there won't be any further issues. So, okay, so we're, we're just going to do intros uh, at the moment. We're going to do, okay, did you turn off stream? Nope, I'm going to ask you to turn off stream. We're going to do intros, and while you all are doing intros, I'll try to see if I can fix this, figure it out. Uh, everything always happens at once during the intro at the same time, so this happens every show. Uh, anyway. Sorry, I'm just getting a little frustrated. Mama, can you start with the intro? Absolutely. Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for having me on, Dylan. My name is Demon Mama. Demon Mama live here on Twitch. Your Demon Mama on Twitter. I am the demon of Twitch debate. Or so I've been told. Um, I do a whole lot of political content. A um, lot of debates. A lot of panels. A lot of uh, dunking on um, political news and stuff. So if you like any of that um, and you want to have a fun um, community that's very welcoming and also doesn't mind a little bit of debate, you want to come over and join my channel. Again, that's uh, Demon Mama Live, and uh, thank you for having me on. I'm very happy to be here and talking with you all tonight. Good to have you here. Uh, now I'm going to throw it over to Last Username to introduce himself. Hey there, I'm Last Username. Um, good to be here as usual. Um, hey, everyone. Great, great, great. Now I know everything I ever needed to know about you, Les. You'd like to know more about me? I don't know. Well, that that's good enough for me. I'll throw it over to CTV. <clears throat> good evening, everyone. I am a critically thinking veteran. I'm very happy to be here tonight on the Hippie DB podcast with everybody once again. Look forward to having a productive, efficient, and hopefully, hopefully some uh, good memory content for all. So. Hey, that's always what any panel host wants. I'll throw it over to Basia next. What up, memers and dreamers? My name is Bassiat. Uh, I do politics and memes, and and uh, I, I, any of you. Uh, I yeah, uh, and uh, you know we do debates. We have a lot of a lot of fun, and it is uh, such a joy to be here on the Dylan Burns uh, uh, Hippy Dippy podcast. Uh, uh, my favorite of uh, of, we'll uh, of, uh, we'll see, of the Cosmo. Friday night uh, debate we'll podcast. See. Certainly one of the best, maybe even the best. All right, it's yeah, it's all good. Isn't it so also good to be the here. only one? Hey, uh, you know who can say? But I love be I love, I love Hippy Dippy. I'm glad to be here. My Hippy Dippy is always fun. Wonderful. Um, I'm I'm gonna maybe have to have uh, somebody come in and help her in a different chat to get her fixed because I've already ex uh, extended all I my replacements. And I don't know, I exactly know what I'm gonna. Do. Oh yeah. Wait. Okay, so I'll, I'll figure something out. Okay, one second. I'm gonna move her into a different chat. Um. Okay. So, uh, R G R, you're next. Oh I'll shit! Hey everyone, my name is Riley. Uh, yeah, I full name Riley Grace Roshong. You can Google that. You can find me YouTube, Twitch, Twitter, Insta, all that good stuff. Uh, law student. There we go. Uh, I talk about politics and yeah, I don't know. I'm I do the I do the memes as well. So if you if you want to get some quality meme content, then yeah, you can check out my stuff. 
Okay, we're going to start the show without Mad Men until we can get this uh, audio problem resolved. There's not really much more I can do at the moment. I don't have any other replacements handy. I've already uh, exhausted all of them. So we're just going to have to do our best to uh, do what we can to get her back in game. Are you are you no. taking any walk-on replacements, if need be? Uh, I will take if, a walk-on. If anybody's listening. If need be. Yeah. If anybody's listening, sounds like we need somebody from a more conservative perspective. Wait, who had a crowd around? Who's listening? And is Was interested. it CTV? Oh God! Wonderful. Right. Okay, right. so let me oh, go through the God. rules quickly. Oh, Madman. Uh, number one, oh, uh, oh, I want no. people to do their best not to interrupt each yes, other that too was much, right. too excessively. If you do so, I will jump in. Number two, you're not to at each other in the chat. You're not to at other streamers that are currently on the platform in the chat and argue with them in the chat or only escalate the situation and is not for productive dialogue. If you want to say something, you have to say something. Number three, if you cannot work your way into the conversation, raise your hand. I will write your name down here right on my here. handy little notepad, and I'll try to make sure that you have at some point a period to talk. Number four. I've heard many mixed um, things about his views, four, but he is a right winger. There is an intro Trumpism, and an yeah. outro period of one minute nope. for both and intros cap, and outros, where you will all be able to introduce what you believe on the topic without any interruption. If you interrupt people, you will be <laughs> muted during the outro period. It is similar rules. Uh, besides that, I think I've gone over just about everything. Also, of course, but this is by the default, stay within the terms of Twitch TOS. Is there anything uh, that I have said today that you don't understand or you need some clarification on? No, well, we've, all, you've, we've all been through the ringer before, so I think we should all understand what's oh. going on. Okay, wonderful. Uh, okay, Mr. Geek, if you're here, uh, I need oh, you to man. jump in the chat with... Um, I need uh, get Operation Madman uh, kind of working because her audio We're is not see. currently We're gonna working. We're going to see how this she goes. about us. to begin. So if you drag her into a different full. chat and try to figure it out with her that'd be splendid because we we want to get her thing working so she can participate in the conversation okay so we're going to go to the first topic should healthcare have to cover gender reassignment surgery i will state it one more time should healthcare have to cover gender reassignment surgery okay i'm going to start this time in the top right hand side with ctv hmm well, clarifying question off the bat, are we specifically talking about government or private, or are we leaving that open? Uh, you, it would be basically the idea is that should the government mandate uh, companies or with its own separate thing, if you want a different type of healthcare plan with its own public option, for example, should that be covered? Should gender reassignment co uh, surgery be covered by that? <coughs> okay. Uh, Shish kebabs are good. Then, no, I don't think the government should be mandating that company well, i don't know see that was hmm. a little bit different than what i had read it in my mind to begin with uh if you don't mind i can bring it back to you if you want yeah if you don't mind okay got it i'll start with okay. last username then okay um i mean I i'm generally against uh government um being involved in healthcare at all uh, i'm an anarchist so I mean, I kind of have to make a lot of assumptions to answer this question. I mean, we assume that the government is going to be involved in healthcare, and that they're going to cover. Let's, um, I mean, they need some sort of standard for what kind of healthcare they cover. Uh, and uh, I guess whether they can't cover this is going to depend on on what that standard is. And I mean, the answer should be yes. Um, I'm doing great. I guess I that's up to some... you know Happy what. To have you. What kind of uh, philosophy um, are you using to justify the government getting involved in healthcare in the first place? So, I mean, I, I guess I'm just going to have to to punt and say we need to answer that question before I can before I can tell you what I think of this. Mm -hmm. Because ultimately what I think is I don't think the government should be involved in making these We've decisions. We've got a double punt. Um, I think there's no reason for them to intervene in this at all. Got it. Uh, next, I will go over to Demon Mama. Yeah, um, the uh, answer for me is an unequivocal yes. The government should mandate the covering of trans health care. And the reason that I believe this is, uh, in my mind, the purpose of government is to protect the people. Um, if we're going to have a health insurance, whether it's private or public, if we're going to use a health insurance system and not some sort of universal coverage system, or even if we do go to a universal coverage system, um, we should take care of the needs, the medical needs of all of our people, trans or not. Um, um, the efficacy of uh, gender um, reaffirming surgery has been um, well studied. This is a, a, a 
closed issue. This has been decided. It is modern science has decided on this issue. It is highly beneficial to trans people um, to um, be able be able to have access to that. And and as it currently stands, many if not arguably most trans people do not have access to that. So yes, the government needs to, in my mind, make sure that. Um, anyone operating within its country is doing so on an equal basis. And that would include protecting and offering coverage to trans people for gender reassignment surgery. Okay. Uh, next I'm going to throw it back over to CTV. Yeah. Yeah. I'm ready. Uh, I think that, uh, for me, I wouldn't want the government. I really don't want the government involved in this process now. Right? I feel like Thanks the, the government the involvement Little lady with Jess, it happy to have you. cost exponentially and that, uh, coupled with a few other pieces of pieces of legislation that <clears throat> have typically to do with you know pharmaceuticals, has not done a lot to help the the cost of everything. So I wouldn't want government involved at all, uh, as a rule. Right. That being said, the fact that government is involved and continues to uh, gain more and more control over specific types of procedures, etc., and it. it it doesn't really leave a lot of room for innovation. It doesn't lead, leave a lot of room for growth, uh, I think, because it's so restrictive. And it's you think specifically so? you when think it so? comes These to Maybe. government mandate sure. health care to, to cover gender reassignment surgery. I don't think that the government should be in the business of doing anything other than providing immediate <clears throat> physical care uh, and that mental and those other things, depending on what it is, I mean, there would be other things to consider for mental, right? So, no. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, uh, next I'm going to throw it over to Bastia. Or Bastia is not going to grab the thing, okay. Hey, um, uh, can you hear me? Yes, can you hear me? Okay. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm uh, my uh, internet just died. So uh, I am back to life, though, uh, and ready to answer if you're ready to have me answer. All right. So uh, I think uh, in a fully private free market healthcare system, then no, it would not be the government's business to tell people what to cover and what not to cover. But we don't have such a system. We have a quasi-government system, and for people on Medicare and Medicaid, it's basically you know it's a very much uh, involved government system. So in that sense, it seems like uh, you would treat. Uh, uh, healthcare for trans people, you know, I mean, the same way you would treat uh, healthcare for anybody else, which is to say that uh, gender reassignment surgery, which seems to have a serious uh, uh, benefit for people who, you know, uh, people's mental health and well-being, uh, seems like that would be something you would certainly cover the same way you would cover any other kind of mental health treatment. And I was curious uh, whether we already do this in the United States, and it looks like uh, under, uh, you know, Medicare has been doing, uh, has been covering transition-related surgery since 2014. Uh, so, it, in fact, apparently in 2015, the Medicare Appeals Council issued a decision ordering a Medicare plan to pay for transition-related surgery for a transgender woman Some states, because yes. it was reasonable and necessary to treat gender dysphoria. So, it seems uh, pretty reasonable to me. Uh, the same, you know, to the same degree, it's reasonable for the government to take care of uh, people's mental health care and other health needs generally. Um, I, I don't really see how it differs from those. Uh, it does seem like the bigger question is whether you think government should have a role in health care or not. But to the extent it does, then it seems like there's no argument that I'm aware of that cat. you shouldn't. The cat always for, appears. You know, uh, provide care to transgender people. What a cute kitty. Okay, uh, as we have all had our intro segment, uh, except for Operation Madman. Operation Madman cannot hear us at the moment, though. So we're right. going to go into a general dialogue. Hello? Where we try to. Uh, hello. Hey, did I have an intro segment? Oh, did I not? Oh yeah, I didn't hand it over to you. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I forgot about that. I'm I'm just I'm dealing with a lot of things at once. I'm sorry. RGR, you can go first. You mean I can go? Anyway, all right. Sorry, I'm fucking. I'm I'm just not in it right now. I'm sorry. You're you're all good. You're all good. Um, yeah. Oof. So I mean, it's this okay. became a lot uh, of. I've heard right it from now. a couple other people. I wasn't aware this was like a two issue system. I thought we were just talking about like healthcare generally, whether it should, it should cover. But I mean, we can talk about whether or not healthcare should also be like covered by the government. Um, on the first issue, whether or not it should be generally covered by health insurance, uh, yeah, I mean, like, I don't even think I've really heard an argument that it shouldn't, but just to cover the bases, um, I think that health insurance companies should cover a form of medical care if it is able to demonstrably alleviate a provable harm. This is especially true of access to medical care is normally prohibited by cost barriers, and Damn. I'm going to name off a couple premises. I have evidence to support all of them. If you want to go into them, then let me know. 
uh, not only is being transgender an intrinsic quality, not only are there trans people who experience gender dysphoria and that gender affirming care has been shown to alleviate that gender dysphoria, and not only can it otherwise be necessary to mitigate harm from forms of discrimination in society and one of the largest barriers to trans people in accessing gender affirming care RGR. is cost, but also providing gender affirming care wait. has been shown to be affordable and cost effective for insurance, Sorry, for insurance companies and has low work. budget impact in US society. So I would say that like, just at the merits of should it be covered by insurance companies that it overwhelmingly should, whether private or public. Now onto the government issue. I think as a policy matter that anyone that like yeah, she's in your inability to be able she. to cut, like pay for medical necessity should not be the difference we'll between you getting it or not. There. And I think that that's very uh, questionable to leave to the private sector. The private that's sector bad. has a profit motive. So it is incentivized to try and price out certain people who it finds to be not profitable. And so when we're talking about people who are trans, the private sector might look at that and be like, oh, well, this person is not profitable. This uh, section is not profitable. And therefore, we don't want to give them adequate health care in the same way that we would give ad adequate health care to other people. I'd rather that be managed by the government where we can keep costs low and accessible to people who most need it. Um, yeah, so I guess I don't know. there's like the two arguments in there, but that's probably my positions on all of them. Okay, uh, I actually, I'm super sorry. I need to step away and deal with something that's currently going on with my household in a second. So is it, can everybody just try to have a productive dialogue I, I for, for the intro section? I think we have a pretty mature panel here tonight, Dylan. Okay, say, sorry, I'm just, I have a person canceling out I got to deal with, I got to, sorry. I'll be right back, everybody. All right, uh, so uh, let's see. Uh, okay, so... Uh, I guess, while I have no uh, objection if the government is already taking care of health care, uh, Riley, is your position that if the government was not taking care of health care and we had some just free market system that people like companies should be forced to cover certain kinds of treatments anyway? No, I just don't think that it's a great idea to put health insurance into the private, like to be managed by the private sector. I think that when okay. you leave health right. insurance to be that. managed by the private sector, that you end up introducing cost motivations to whatever barriers or whatever qualifications people or those companies have to providing those health insurance okay. or that health insurance. And so oh. when you have that, you have uh, mm -hmm. like, this is an instance where I feel like a government would be better by virtue of the fact that they could <clears throat> keep prices lower um, prudentially as opposed to relying on like a market yeah. to determine what like a market value of health insurance would be. Okay. So then for the sake of trying to get this to one issue rather than perhaps two, let me see if everybody agrees or disagrees on this one point. If the government, and so for a hypothetical here, if the government is involved in providing health care to people, is there anybody here who, I, I understand we may disagree whether that should be the case or not, but if we all agree that that is the case, is there anybody here who would conclude, well, okay, even in that scenario, I don't think these uh, transgender uh, treatments should be provided? Like CTV, last username, like, again, I know that's a, a, you know, a hypothetical that both of you would disagree with by default, but... If it were the case that government was covering health care yeah, costs anyway, do you think going. that um, uh, transgender uh, you know, treatments, uh, surgery, uh, therapy, yes, uh, yeah. medications, an hormone lawyer, therapy, do you think that stuff should be covered? Yeah. Or is that so, yeah. just, you know, different God, in some way and it shouldn't be? Volume is all over the place. I mean, if you're going to allow that, then where's where's the line? For me i mean where's the line because at some point there has to be a line otherwise we're going to get to the point to where plastic mm -hmm. surgery right go get a nose job that should be on government dated health care because it helps somebody feel better about themselves so i'm just curious where the line is well it's the not line about... is i mean i can i can answer that immediately okay. all right let's say uh, yeah let's let's hear what the line is yeah, the line is that health insurance companies should cover a form of medical care if it is, one, able to demonstrably alleviate, two, a provable harm. Transgender-affirming or gender-affirming care has been shown by numerous studies to be able to demonstrably alleviate gender dysphoria. And also gender dysphoria is a provable harm by like the over like it's the overwhelming scientific consensus that like gender dysphoria is something which a sizable number of transgender people face and which gender affirming care demonstrably helps. This isn't the same as like a cosmetic yeah, surgery, I mean, which people uh, okay, just get because they want sense. to. Yeah. By the um, way, am I the only one whose audio is going in and out? Um, I hear you fine. Y you've had a few in and out spots. It's more like a volume variance. I'm catching your volume going down and up quite a lot. I don't know if it's um a software thing or your noise gate. Is it just me? Yeah, I think it yeah, is. Yeah, I think okay. it's just you. I've, I've been hearing you just fine, man. 
Okay, sorry about that. I guess uh, this is the uh, the uh, cursed uh, podcast. I'm sorry about that, folks. Um, okay, so I think Riley's line makes a lot of sense. Um, you know, I mean, I think that you could then look at, you know, the way that gender dysphoria, like, for example, uh, uh, the Medicaid Appeals Council I mentioned in 2015 said, hey, uh, you know, we have to, we apparently uh, decide, make, care, make decisions about care on a case-by-case basis. And in this case, we are pretty sure it would alleviate a real, clear, substantial harm. So what do you think about that, CTV? I, I just, every time I hear about government involvement in something, I just see the, the number of dollars necessary to be able to do anything, right? And, and because the administration is there, then you have to work inside their specific framework. There's no way that you could try to accomplish the same things in maybe a much more streamlined manner, right? There is so, also, I mean, like there's evidence that providing gender affirming care is also affordable and cost effective for insurance companies and has a low budget impact in U.S. society. Like there's also been studies on the impact and they've overall been like minimal. Right, yeah, like, right. So my point in all of this is, though, when we're talking about anything when it comes to government involvement, right, is as soon as you pass legislation, the government then has the responsibility to the people to actually hire people to make sure that this law is, in fact, being enforced, right? Otherwise, right, but right now we're not talking we're about the government. We're just talking about generally providing gender affirming care, like, we're, like, assuming yeah, already sure. that the government right. is involved, right? So like, we're just, just like, the government switch. issue is punted. Mm-hmm. Right. And so, we can talk about the government issue afterward. I'm happy to do that too, but I feel like I feel like the two issues, like it, if your point is, I don't think I think we should have a very uh, strict standard of care because we're all paying for it. I guess that would be one line um, that you might draw that would be different. It's like based more on cost than on harm, but like you'd have to you'd have to make a distinction of some kind. Okay. If you're just saying like government shouldn't be involved, that would be a different issue, I guess, from the call of the original question, which was specifically this type of medical treatment. Right, and it's it is a very specific type of treatment, right? So, like for me, like whenever I would view the government getting involved in something as far as the cost of uh, care for like a mental, mm. uh, you know, thing like PTSD, for example, right? There would be something uh, that was possibly criminal uh, that somebody was brought up on charges for that, as a result of their, you know, bad behavior, just to kind of keep it in the you know, their bad behavior caused this to happen, so they were What's brought up on charges, found no guilty by the government. So then, of course, the government, in order to help that person get over that, should help with the cost of yeah, I don't you know, know why PTSD he's got sunglasses and on. mental health and things. But when it comes I don't know to what he's talking about. like this, it certainly seems like that there's got to be at least a choice in there somewhere, right? What do you mean? What, what do you mean? mean, mean, mean like, what do you mean? I the have choice? to uh, reset everything. That's my yeah, but what do you, going yeah, 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 but what do you mean the choice? Like, it's right. not a choice to be a gender identity. It's not a choice to have gender dysphoria. It's not a choice. People like this is a demonstrable harm that people experience, regardless of their choices in the matter. And it's a harm that medical care has been shown to alleviate. Like that's a perfect case for allowing medical care, whether or not provided publicly or privately whether or not provided publicly or privately, to allow that to be covered by health insurance. Right, but you still have to make a choice to do it, right? What do you change, mean a choice to do it? Like, what do you mean? Change, no, 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 no. You don't get a choice to have gender dysphoria. There's no choice in yeah, there. there's no choice in that matter, don't. yeah. Well, I don't think you understand it. Maybe I just don't understand what the surgery actually is. Why don't you explain to me what the surgery is? There's the multiple. Movie? There are many different kinds. Yeah, yeah, no. If you actually don't understand, then yeah, I'll, like, I'm, right. I'm taking you in good faith right now. I'm assuming that you don't know. I'm going to walk you down through it, all right? All right, I'm going to walk you through it. So there are many different forms of gender affirming care, whether it's hormone replacement therapy, that's taking a series of essentially like versions of hormones, whether it's injection or pills, those alter the physiology, like largely secondary sex characteristics. Some people choose to get surgeries then. There's a variety of surgeries, whether it's top surgery or bottom surgery. It's usually the way that people generally refer to it. It differs from person to person. Those have been shown by studies to demonstrably alleviate gender dysphoria, which is an extreme visceral discomfort that trans people have with their bodies by virtue of the fact that they were born with a body that the gender dysphoria makes it so that they have like such an incongruence with that it makes it so that they can't really function in society to the same degree that other people can, right? Like it is a mental health issue, you know? And so this gender affirming care, because it's been shown to alleviate that discomfort, that extreme uh, impairment to be able to interact with the rest of society, um, that's why we say that it's medically necessary because it's able to help people who otherwise would have extreme troubles doing so to be able to 
um, to the same degree that you or I or anyone else would want to, to be able to contribute to society. Because that's all that we're trying to do. We're just trying to make sure that every American is hardworking and contributing to the well-being of everyone else in the country, right? That's all that people want. Does that make sense? It, it, it makes sense. Yeah. Like, I want to be able, like, you and I, like, I, I see the American flag in the background. You see mine in the background. We both care about the country, right? I want to be able to contribute to it and make it as good as you, I'm sure, want to as well, right? I want to be a hardworking American. You want to be a hardworking American. I just want to make sure that people have the health care to be able to do it. That's it. Yeah. And I mean, I would also point out that there are, um, this was brought up a little bit earlier um, that the like plastic surgery is, is plastic surgery comes up as a um, response to um, trans issues relatively frequently. Um, often I think because it does come from a sort of not understanding what, what procedures are actually done, what, what therapies are actually offered to trans people. Um, but there are many forms of, there are many other forms of plastic surgery that are also necessary. Uh, I mean, for example, um, if you were in like a house fire and your body got burned, you may not be able to participate in society without significant plastic surgery. In fact, you might not be able to live without f pain with extensive plastic surgery. And I would put that in the exact same category as a trans person seeking out gender reassignment surgery, something that could offer them incredible pain or the inability to even interact. Um, like this, these are, you know, gender dysphoria um and 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 genital dysphoria specifically if we're talking about just surgeries um is something that can ruin someone's life um and this is again something that's been studied to a great extent these surgeries have been developed and, and innovated upon um in such a way that it can alleviate that and i think we should we should back that and and any health any company that you know that purports to be offering health care should be willing to participate under those rules as well um in fact, here in the United States for some time, um, uh, this is, and this perhaps maybe touches a little bit on the private versus public thing. We don't really have to dip into that, but I just think it's important for people to realize that here in the States, there was a very long period of time where despite us having non-discrimination laws, trans people were still discriminated against, not offer, not given, um, HRT, which is hormone replacement therapy, not given surgeries, not given the therapy that they need. Um, and this was done under the guise of pre-existing conditions um, where being trans was considered intrinsic enough to be a pre-existing condition, but not intrinsic enough for them to cover until, you know, uh, I think it was at the, I think that happened when the repeal uh, or the out abolishment of pre-existing conditions clauses happened. Okay. okay, so there are um, a lot of, uh, I guess my problem is I'm not, I'm not seeing, so I'm not seeing a clear distinction between what a criteria for deciding what kind of medical things should be covered, because there are a lot of medical of um, kinds of medical services that would be like a huge benefit, like something like a personal trainer, right? I'd love to have a personal trainer that would that would definitely make me healthier, happier, uh, you know, I'd probably live longer. Um, you know, someone who would, uh, you know, help me exercise and, and take care of nutrition and stuff. Mm -hmm. Should that also be covered by, by public health care? Yeah. Well, I think that the issue here, well, I mean, like, here's where I would make the argument. I don't know. Maybe I disagree with demon mama. I mean, like, there's probably an argument for that, but specifically with like hormone or like with gender affirming care. Yeah. I usually yeah. make my focus on what has been demonstrably shown usually through like empiric studies or evidence to be able to alleviate demonstrably a provable harm. Right. Like that's usually where I draw the line as far as like well, medical I mean, intervention. Poor nutrition, nutrition and poor and being out of shape is definitely a provable harm. Okay. Yeah, except, then I don't know, then maybe there's an argument there. Yeah, here's where I would make the argument just to respond. Excuse me? Can you guys hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you now. Yeah, you're good. Yeah, I think your mic was okay. cutting just a tiny bit. Uh, um, I mean if you're talking about like we do have like healthcare coverage for like personal I don't know, like like sport or like uh, rehabilitation trainers, right? Like those are covered. Yeah, in fact, um, uh, at multiple workplaces I've worked at uh, with private insurance, mind you, um, personal trainers um, were offered at either a discount or as a part of the plan. Um, so I would say yes. Sure. In, in many cases, that would be the case. Perhaps not everyone needs a personal trainer, but the thing is we already have structures to verify this. Some are imperfect, of course, but we have ways of doing this. Like say if your doctor says, damn, like – um, my patient is d like really struggling with weight for whatever reason, and it's threatening their life. I think that if they, if I was able to give my patient a personal trainer, then I would be able to solve this problem, prevent them from dying, extend their life, have them be a, a functioning member of society for much longer. 
and then that would be a perfectly good reason for that to be covered, would it not? No. Um, Why okay, not? Well, what because the person has personal responsibility for themselves. If you know, at some point, you know that person that decides that they're go. going to sit there on that Here couch for you know, however long to be able to get to the point that they're at. And their doctor's like, you know, if he only had a personal trainer instead well, of just getting... Wait, what is personal responsibility? The thing is, that's, yeah, yeah, I just wanted to... Kind of beside the point. Wait, I was using wait, this as wait, an example, wait. right? Just give me give me a second. I'd like to hear the end of CTV's point. I didn't get to hear it. Okay. And, well, I didn't get to hear anything because I've been busy, but still, I'd like to hear the end of it. Well, I mean, at some point, there's, you know, you, you sit there on the couch long enough and you don't move and you eat enough damn donuts... Uh, at what point is there a personal responsibility for you should have just got your ass up off the couch and went and walked the dogs or something? Right? Yeah, you're arguing against Listen, like, my I mean, example, <laughs> not against the actual uh, Yeah, you are arguing against it. <laughs> Hello? Like the I... purpose of my example, let's say that this person is not going to get in shape without a, a personal trainer. Let's just assume that's that's been decided. Um, how How much of a threat to their life or their well-being or whatever does it have to be? Because you could probably say that for you know almost anyone, a personal trainer is going to is going to extend their life a little bit, or increase their well, you know, reduce some harm, eliminate some harm from their life, right? Um, yeah, and also to to follow up on that point, um, like I don't know, I I just really you know, no offense um, to you, critically thinking veteran, but thank God that you actually don't have any say in this because um, doctors are actually quite good at determining what their patients need, um, and as it turns out, the the only reason yeah, that far be it for yeah. me to think that right. you, know, you know i was talking but it's okay their own it's all right it's all right i, I, would, I, I know. would like i would like to hear the end of demon mama's point and then i'll let you respond because that was uh barbed towards you ctv i'll bring it back over to you yeah um the the thing is is that um there's not only one reason i know i know for some people out there who really hate fat people and think fat being fat is inherently evil or whatever um that you think that the only way you get fat is and by nice. eating tons of yeah yes true eating tons of donuts and sitting on the couch but as it turns out there's all kinds of things that can cause you to become fat um and in fact some of the people who struggle the most with weight um struggle with that um because of things like uh like uh lymphedema i think it's called which is where your legs swell making it very painful for you to walk at all and for people like that being able to have access to a personal trainer or some sort of special facility that helps them deal with that could save their life not only could it save their life um once they lose weight it can make the lymphedema better now i don't far be it from me to like claim that i'm like a doctor but i think that doctors know what their patients need better than you do and that's why I would say that we should consider the fact that, hey, if a doctor determines that an overweight patient um, needs the help of a of a uh, of a uh, you know personal trainer, why shouldn't we have that happen? Especially because well, coverage already does that to this day. No longer your sentences. No, that's no, no, wait a minute, though. I, I'm inclined to agree with you that you're yeah. right that doctors like know in terms of like what I guess. What you need medically but ctv has a right to have a, some questions mm -hmm. here given that the other point here is who pays for it and basically you're saying ctv should pay for it but he also should you know in effect shut the fuck up with respect to whether uh the treatment should be provided and i while i am sympathetic to that argument to some degree i mean ultimately the taxpayer probably should have some say in terms of how expansive a health care plan is if the taxpayer is ultimately being asked to pay for it. Uh, yeah, some okay, say. Yeah, yeah some say, but I was I was about to pass it over to you, CTV. That was directed towards you, so I'd like you okay, to have a chance to respond. Thank you, buddy. All right. So Demon Mama, damn, you like to make assumptions about people right off the bat, right? <laughs> no. Lots of assumptions. Really. Like why how how would somebody that served nine years in the US Navy and was an assistant command fitness leader on board the USS Tennessee and was helping shipmates be able to get in shape every motherfucking day know a goddamn thing about keeping in shape? I wouldn't know a damn thing about that, right? You're right. So and and for all those other you know, people that have health problems, shit, I've got, you know, family members that are going through a bunch of shit having to deal with it anyway. I wouldn't know a damn thing about having to deal with that either, right? See, there you go. That's all you're good for, right? Just, you know, you know. Oh, Hey, CTV. Can but, I, right, the point is, is that when you try to start insulting somebody's intelligence to try to get aroused, all you're doing is is creating attention-seeking behavior and not even cre and addressing the point, right? And Bosti got right around real good for you, so that's why I'm glad that that man had the mic right there, made the point, and now you need to go ahead and be a little bit more respectful when you're speaking to other people. 
Um, I'll be about as respectful as other people are on the panel. I do agree. Bastiat did a much better job answering the question than, or, or addressing the question than you did. You literally just mm -hmm. dove in about fat people sitting on the couch and talking about donuts. And I'm not going to lie. That yeah, sounds like... It was no, no, Everybody listen, was listen. Oh, my body. dude. You my dude, come her. on. I want to hear, I wanna hear her respond. I want to hear how she responds to it. You had a time to speak. She has time to speak. You know, I got to be the UN right here. Yeah, I'm glad that you got to get it out of your system to talk about how you're the best person and you did all this stuff in the military and you trained people and whatever, but that doesn't stop you from clearly having really unhealthy opinions towards people who are overweight. Opinions that, which actually plays perfectly into my answer to Bastiat, which is yes, I do agree that in any nation, the taxpayers, the people who, um, you know, in a democratic nation, you should have some say. However, that doesn't mean you should be able to dictate. There are all kinds of people with all kinds of fucked up views about what is and isn't. I mean, I grew up in a family that literally did didn't believe in psychology at all. They sure. didn't believe that um, that you that that they believe that parents that like allowed their children to have antidepressants would be like abusive parents. And to me, that's ridiculous. So sure, while they should have a say in the creation of government, it is absurd to say that they should be able to have the sort of personal control over what help other sure. people that they might be totally uninformed on get. Yeah, I guess the only the only reason ordinarily I would not be uh, down for government, you know, uh, managing a whole sector of the economy like healthcare. But the only reason I'm so sympathetic to it is that it seems like nobody has ever ever been able to do a full free market system. I'm not aware of any examples of full free market healthcare uh, in the world today. Uh, really, I'm not aware of any. If they're out there, uh, maybe last year's name you can tell me about them. But it, so it seems like all of the developed countries that have good outcomes have already some got a map. role for government in healthcare that's very expansive. Um, and that includes the U.S. It's just that we've limited our uh, expansive healthcare to what over 65s and under what 30,000. You know, uh, you know, you make a certain small amount of money, or you're over a certain age, and you get a lot of coverage. But otherwise, Thank you know, you, you have I appreciate to be that. military, I try to be or best. you have to be a veteran, or you have to be a member of Congress, or whatever. You know, so we provide private, or we provide good, you know, or at least uh, public health care to some people. But it just seems like to me, um, if you if you want to get good healthcare outcomes, all the countries that have good healthcare outcomes have some role, uh, some expansive role for government and healthcare. And I'm not aware of any alternative that is just designed around personal responsibility. And I would like that alternative to exist because I don't, you know, I'm ideologically opposed. Kind of making my argument, but I don't know. Like last year's name, what is the? Is there a model I can look to if I don't like government involvement in healthcare? Um, no, actually, it's, it seems to be something that uh, has never really been tried properly Damn. in a developed country. No. Pog? But you're saying that, like, well, the re well, it's never been tried be because it wouldn't Pog. work, which doesn't make well, sense to Pog me. Is... I'm not saying that necessarily, but I am well, saying is that, that, the argument for socialism? Given that given that it's never, well, uh, it, yeah, I, I I'm will just say saying, that. Like, I'm, not, I'm not advocating for socialism, but that's the same yeah. kind of argument, right? I like, am. It's never been tried, you know, in the right way. That's well, right. Yeah, they, all, they all say it's never been tried. Of course, it, it has. But what, like I having, I or, or, like um, having a fully like having a healthcare system that's run by, uh, just purely by the private market. I'm just saying, like it's right. a very similar kind and of argument, only, right? Yeah, like just saying that like it could work conceivably. One at a time. I can't. Like to yeah, me, it's yeah, yeah. very okay, compelling. Okay, give me a second. Yeah, it just seems like give me Bastiat, both of you. Okay. Another role. When I speak up, I'm dealing with a lot of stress right now, so I'm gonna ask for everybody to be as cooperative as possible. Okay, so. Um, Bastiat, I, I just couldn't hear you both talking at the same time. I couldn't hear okay. either of the point that was just made. Right. So, Bastiat, could you redeclare what you're trying to make here, the statement you're trying to make? Oh, uh, just that, uh, you know, look, I would personally prefer if we could have uh, all free market uh, all the time, but I don't think that's just, it just doesn't seem to be possible with healthcare, given, given you know, it doesn't seem to be possible with healthcare if we want to have, you know, good outcomes, because all the nations that have good healthcare outcomes have a large role for government in their healthcare system. So, therefore, uh, I, you know, I, I just don't think there seems to be another way to do it. Um, I don't understand why you would say it's not better possible. System, but, uh, because it seems like if it were possible, then given all the developed nations in the world and all the incentives for why you'd want to get government out of healthcare, for example, oh, I didn't know so that. that you can <laughs> avoid conversations about, well, you know, what should be covered? What should not be covered? You know, I don't want to pay for this. I don't want to pay for that, right? It seems like there are a lot of advantages there. Incentives for but, who? Not for government. Government no, has saying, incentives, incentives for ordinary people. Like they yeah, would be more affordable. Like, if it would be better, you know, in some way. I mean, if we could decide what the government does, you're ordinary throwing, people like, do decide what, you're what the government is throwing does. The entirety of like a essential commodity, like what people need to a profit motive, right? Yeah, if that's, people that's need something, fine. Then there's not going to be no any limitation. 
What do you mean that's there's not no an issue, issue with that? If you're we, literally, food, if you the need to pay for thing something, if you need to, yeah, if you need that, if you need something, if you need something, then people are going to pay whatever they need. I mean, this is the problem with the pharmaceutical company, right? Like pharmaceutical company recognizes that that many limitations on what prices they're able to have for their for like for their various medications so they jack up the prices to the point where people if they don't have a health insurance are going to hmm. die without it right because the they aren't able to afford it but the pharmaceutical companies also benefit from, from a massive government handout in the patent system that allows them not only to create drugs but then to protect them with like a virtual how monopoly that, for a period of 20 years whereas if you relevant? just said no patents no patents no government protection well, in that situation, then it would it would be very hard to protect your drug monopoly and then charge whatever you like, because once they're out, people could replicate them on their own and sell them on their own at a much cheaper price, like they wait, do wait, with wait. generic drugs. Right, well, hold, so, hold on, because I, I mean, like, I this is the I same would, kind of... Before 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 you get in there, CTV, I want RGR to finish your point, and then I'm going to throw it over to Mama who said their hand up, and then I'll see if I can bring it back around to you, okay, man? Wonderful. Yeah, okay. but I mean, like, this is the same kind of policy argument as to why, like, most of... Uh, I don't know, like I'm taking nonprofit law. I don't know if you took that when you were in law school, right? Like this is the same exact kind of policy argument for why, oh, we should let nonprofits handle a lot of like the shortcomings of either the private market or governments, right? The problem is that like nonprofits and uh, like when you try to create effectively a, a vacuum where in your instance, it's like, oh, well, if we take away these regulations and other people will step up and take care of it. But the problem is that like when you have especially like a tendency towards monopoly where a lot of resources are pooled over, you know, the course of time in the hands of fewer and fewer people, it becomes very hard for people to be able to go out and do those kind of things. You know how hard it is to be able to like form an organization or a nonprofit dedicated to actually being able to meet those kind of needs. It's incredibly hard. You can't just go out and form an organization, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, you, you can go out and form organizations and businesses. I mean, there are people with capital yeah, you have, and money like, invest. I mean, have, like, I don't, I don't know. If you I'm have not really like sure the, the startup money from your rich parents, then sure. It's, it's are you saying that all businesses are started with startup money from rich parents? I'm Nobody's saying ever that's probably, a loan. I'm I mean, saying it's very. I'm saying that's like how predominantly. Yeah, what I'm saying is that predominantly it's much harder for people without that kind of a startup income to Damn, be able to form those wild. businesses as compared to people who don't have them, right? Like it's it's predominantly easier, right? I'm not saying impossible. I'm not saying it's impossible. Of course, intersectionality exists. People from all sorts of backgrounds are able to accomplish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We get it, right? But like it's predominantly easier for people who come from backgrounds where they already have a bat like a like a background of bottom like like a background of wealth to be able to do those things than people who don't. And the people who don't are going to be disproportionately the people who are like adversely affected by these kinds of policy decisions cut before i bring it to you boss yet because see i i think operation madman's audio is working now am i correct in that was, yes hi Wonderful. everybody hey you, hi. Hi. hello hello uh would you like to introduce yourself and uh do you know this first topic by chance um, I, I, it sounds like you this guys is are Operation talking Madman. about um, I don't know this whether person. insurance companies should have to but pay for uh, transgender surgery. Yes, correct? yes, correct. Okay. Um, it seems and like the topic has changed. How are you guys? Well, hey. Nice to I mean, like see now... some of you again. Yeah, uh, I believe you know a few people on the panel. Uh, would you like okay. to say who you are and give your take on the topic? Uh, I'll get, since you are a little late, I'll give you 30 seconds uninterrupted to give you a take on this. <laughs> um, I, I know. I, I wish that I had been able to hear more about what you guys already had to say. I'd probably be repeating some uh, uh, some points of view already. But no, I... Um, well, okay. I'm Operation Madman. I do some political streaming and some other stuff here on Twitch, like... I just recently did a Russian stream where we were learning how to speak Russian together and uh, do some guitar playing and yada yada. Um, uh, also, I do not believe that insurance companies should have to cover um, <clears throat> any uh, type of medical treatment at all, including transgender surgery. So that's my take. Wait, did you, oh, I, I just need to make sure that you said it right, right? Because this is an interesting take um, that health insurance companies shouldn't have to cover. Well, okay. Riley, just don't get well, too no, distracted, I, because what, what we had earlier, right? Yeah, I want to well, talk about the personal responsibility it, take. I'm interested in that. I'm interested well, in the personal responsibility yeah, bit. Yeah, but I, I'm I, just, I, I, I'll, I'll, there's, the different there's different I, levels of health. There's different levels of health insurance and coverage I, I, all I over will, the place. I will 100% make sure that the topic is brought back to you, CTV, so you can make a point on that. And Demon Mama, I haven't forgotten. I got a notepad. This is why I brought the notepad in here. It, the, no, the notepad is the law of the land, okay? This is the holy book on which builds the foundation of the Hippie Dippy podcast. So, Riley, I do want you to respond mm -hmm. to what Madman just said because I don't want to have any point kind of just going to the wind. And I will bring it to CTV and Demon Mama again. It's just, you know, everybody wants to have a period to talk. 
Yeah, so I really just want to understand the argument. So, I, and again, I just want to make sure I hear this because, like, I'm, I, I think I misheard this, but I don't know, maybe I didn't. Are you making the argument that health insurance companies shouldn't cover any surgery or any medical procedure at all? Like, is that what I heard? Or did, no, 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 did no. I they shouldn't have to cover because I believe that's how the the question was worded. They shouldn't have to cover any specific surgeries at all. Period. Wait, why? They, that's that's literally their job. That's what they do. That's because like that's that's their whole purpose. That's why you pay for them, whether it's private or public. They have different layers of coverage, and what you, you pay that? into it. Well, I think so she's when, saying that. Sorry. Well, Just the government shouldn't you, be forcing you to do one thing or another, right? Right. So I mean, okay. when you buy this is weird. dental insurance, this is really you weird. Will see that some insurance companies this is weird. will cover a root canal and some of them don't. And insurance companies shouldn't have to cover root canals if that's not what they want to cover. Okay, why? Because I don't believe that any insurance company should have to do anything. Okay, if but I want to I, I know why. Like, if what's, you the, what's the bottom in, justification? You, because like, you think there's, that there's other insurance like, companies. Well, well, let me hear the answer first. What's your answer okay. to that? I didn't get to hear that. So, for example, if that's this is something get real that interesting, want, real fast, then you can go and get it elsewhere. All right, what if no insurance companies have it? There are places that do cover it. Yeah, but I all mean, right, I, I want right, to. Now there, I want to ask you the question. There are places that offer this service. It's not something that does not exist. Well, Hold that's on, actually you know funny that you mentioned that because that isn't actually true when it comes to trans trans healthcare. Um, in fact, for a very long time, insurance companies did not cover it at all. If you wanted, uh, tr if you wanted to have um, gender reassignment surgery, um, you either had to be lucky enough to live in one of the states that er that um, early had a government step in and demand that it be covered, or you had to pay for it in cash, which is a cash surgery is unbelievable and almost no trans people are able to come up with that money offhand so that's that's it's it, it's actually not true the idea that like somebody's gonna do it they're not necessarily going to um and, then, and um I, just I, while or sorry demon i i just really want to like what madman like do you mind if i just i, I really want to learn about like your what your beliefs are about like healthcare, right because I want to put, I think it's a lot more interesting than like, I don't know, some of the other perspectives, right? Um, do you think that healthcare companies should be able to Owned. choose, broadly speaking, whatever they want to cover? They, yeah, I don't believe that any any company should be forced to do anything. Okay, do you not think? All right, then let me ask you the question. Hmm. Considering that, like, healthcare, as compared to something like buying shoes, would be considered by a lot of people to be a medical necessity. Right, something that people need to live. Do you think that that offers any kind of like additional onus on health insurance companies to provide additional things, which could save lives, demonstrably do does save lives, um, as opposed to just like a shoe company, I don't know, deciding not to sell sure. like shirts. Sure, I think that would be really disingenuous for me to say not to. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So I mean, like that with that logic, because there is plenty of evidence that gender affirming care does demonstrably help trans people, especially like alleviating, alleviating gender dysphoria, saving lives. Like there's overwhelming I don't evidence. I know there have been some really interesting studies that have shown that, like, for example, excessive hormone treatment has actually caused people to like have you have any citations. Uh, um, I don't know. Because I, I mean, like, I, I can like, um, I, I like this is the, not a battle that you want to fight. Study that showed. I don't know. I thought it was the the cohort study showed that there was uh, an increase in uh, morbidity with um, uh, uh, um, it was um, heart disease. I think it was, or was it the Canadian study? I'm I'm not so sure. I can I cite can six studies that. right now have... that show overwhelmingly that gender affirming care demonstrably helps trans people. Like I can no, give no, you no, six no. right I'm now. I'm actually I'm actually talking about um, uh, how hormone treatment. I'm not talking about yeah. like the 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 happy good feelings i'm actually talking about how like no it how it, it, it does, actually could yeah the no, happy we're talking about good the same feelings thing. we're talking about the yeah, same how thing. it actually can I, and that's not a bad thing i'm not i'm not talking I'm, <clears throat> I'm not trying to um that wasn't trying to um uh be um a, a nasty um i mean it's like kinda, shot at you're anyone. either like that, not you either don't know about this or you are being disingenuous so i'm trying to figure out what it is if you don't know no no, that's no, no. Fine. that, that wasn't trying to be nasty i'm, okay. I'm actually that just so you know i'm, I'm not like a, a 
a, a fucking like um person that okay, is fine then i can send you literally bigot. every study showing that it that overwhelmingly that... helps people and we can walk no, through them we can no. do that so there have been studies that show that that hormone treatment actually does have lead to 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 heart problems so you have a citation saying, for that? like, like i see I it said, like right now i like i want to see it right now Okay, if you give okay, me a minute, this I can is, look this it up is on getting my a little, Well, uh, listen. I, I will. Oh, give me a second. I can look it up on my laptop and send give me a second. it to you if I wanna, you want. Give, give me a second. Okay, so um, I, uh, she will take some time to look it up since you okay. since if she you is, uh, said she will. Um, uh, I know that Demon Mama and CTV wanted to talk about something earlier. Both had their hands up and they wanted to comment. First, I'm going to go to Demon Mama and then CTV right after. So Demon Mama, I'm going to start with you. Um, yeah, it's been a little bit... Uh... Since we were talking about the um, the the points that we were talking about before, but um, I would arg I just wanted to add some context to what we were talking about before, which is that um, there are huge problems in privacy private privatization of many necessities. Um, it, not just um, you know this idea that like healthcare is the only one that is really good to have public. I mean, we have huge swaths of food deserts in the United States and um, we've had nothing but cuts towards our, our food programs. Um, but I guess that's kind of a different conversation at this point. And I would just like to point out at this point um, that what we're talking about here, this idea that like, oh, there, there could be um, other potential negative health side effects that come along um, with um, hormone therapy, that's true about any drug, literally any drug. In insulin is necess necessary for someone with diabetes to live, but it has other side effects. There are all kinds of side effects of any drug that you take, but the side effects aren't necessarily the only thing that matters. The, 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 the side effects might be very, very minor or very small cases. Nearly any drug can do that. In fact, um, hell, there are negative um, things from over-the-counter medications like uh, aspirin and yeah. But I think insurance companies have the right to take that into consideration. Do well, they not? Well, I mean, into consideration is one thing, but but deny it outright is another. Um, like, well, I guess I guess the the question is like, where's the where's the rationale? Like, what is the? I, I I'm with you folks on like basically everybody who agrees with me that, that public health care leads to better results than this free market alternative that doesn't exist. I'm I'm with all the folks that agree with that. But I guess I don't I don't think there's any like moral uh, right to force an insurance company to cover something or another. I just concede that it probably leads to better outcomes. So if Operation Madman's point is, look, I don't care whether it leads to better outcomes or not. You don't have the right to tell me what to do. And that's that. Well, that's a point that I can also get behind. Well, there has to be limits to that, though, right? Like, there has to be limits. Well, I don't know. I mean, it depends on what you're talking about. If you're saying you have the right to extract money for me for a for something that will lead to better outcomes, I don't know that that's something that I would uh, I would uh, you know always uh, concede to. Well, let me I mean, try and give you. Day, right? you're, you're dropping Hold something. Let me really just try. Big. And... You're dropping a real big point here. Yeah, but let me just add, you, offer an alternative. Well, let, let me finish my point here. Let me finish my point here. I would agree with you in the sense that you are probably right that you would get better outcomes from doing everything that you're talking about here. But I'm still saying, nevertheless, I think you could consistently argue that, hey, I don't care about the better outcomes because you don't have a moral right to put your hand in my pocket for your social project. Well, true, but I mean, I don't even know if that's the question we're discussing. I mean, I think you could make that argument and I would be able to contest certain portions of it or perhaps all of it, depending on the framework of the discussion and how it goes. Um, but, but I think the problem that we have here is like, I think there's another problem with that sort of or with the currently proposed thing. I don't know if there's, um, I don't know if we're going to go into a morality discussion, but there is an issue, which is that if a health insurance company is supposed to cover your health, um, but they're picking and choosing which people they don't want to cover, that becomes an issue for the entire industry in the same way that say, um, like, oh, I'm getting a little bit of an echo here. That's uh, a little odd. Um, but, um, in the same way yeah, that like, uh, yeah, somebody's echoing. Oh, I think past chat. I think your mic is open on, um, whereby. Sorry. We yeah, Thanks. no worries. Um, in the same oh. way that like, uh, we, we surely have some reasonable limits. Like for example, if you bought a loaf of bread and it blew up on you, um, you might have 
you might be able to go, hey, like, um, this company sold me a loaf of bread and it's not a loaf of bread. It's actually a bomb. Yeah, um, so likewise, in the same way, if somebody offers you health insurance and then all of a sudden it's like, oh, actually, um, <laughs> we're not going to cover your actual health. We're, we're going we're gonna to cut you out for whatever reason. Doesn't that undermine the entire system of health insurance? If, well, I, so the way like it works is the insurance company will list in advance the right. things that they cover, and that's part of the contract that you sign. Right? Yeah, like so, if they violate the contract, or if somebody sells you bread that explodes, you would sue them for the harm they caused. And again, I'm not saying this is the ideal scenario here, but I'm saying if Operation Madman's point is, look, I don't care, I just want to, you know, I don't want you to tell me what to do, and I don't think you have the right to tell me what to do. I wouldn't argue that that will always lead to the best outcome, but I mean, you know, that's a consistent well, alternative is, argument. There's another problem too, though, real quick, that, that is on the same thing. I don't mean to cut you off. I just want to pin this on, which is that health insurance is a little bit unique, right? Because um, you don't know what health problems you're going to have in your life. You don't know what what health and health problems you might have right now so yeah. are you expecting that uh that in a health insurance situation that that literally you just get plopped a a book a yeah. dictionary the size of uh, uh, to the to the moon of every possible right. condition and you have to predict which yeah. ones you might or might not get surely this yeah. is irrational that's a rational way I, of yeah. conducting business well, the purpose uh, of insurance. i agree that that's not after, i, I after, agree that that would after, not lead after, to better uh, outcomes mm, 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 after boss yet answer, answer this question i want to throw it over to ctv he's been waiting very politely Okay. Uh, I agree that wouldn't lead to better outcomes. That's why I don't advocate a system like that. But I do understand somebody who says, look, I don't really care. I just don't want to pay for it. I don't want to pay for your health care because I just want to, you know, I just, I don't, I'm not interested in the best outcome for society writ large. I'm interested in maximizing my individual freedom and therefore, you know, that's that. Yeah. Hey, uh, CTV, you are next. Yeah. <clears throat> all right. So we have went all the way around this whole gambit. And we were still back in the middle of, uh, since the system is set up the way that it is, right? Uh, I think the only thing left to talk about in and amongst all of it is what the requirements should be before the government, uh, like what type of things should these people that are uh, having these issues, what level of diagnosis, uh, how long are they showing their commitment to you know their decision because a, a major surgery like you said earlier riley top bottom right yep uh that's a that's a pretty big commitment right because now you're allowing right. somebody to cut on you with a blade right i think that's a pretty big commitment so like i mean like people this. get the idea without like going into details like yeah it's a surgery right you know so it's a surgery so that's a, it's you know, so is it just one of those things where you can just decide one day you're going to walk in there without anything and you just say, okay, I'm ready. Do we this. leave it to medical or... professionals primarily. Like right. we leave it to experts. But still, there's a question there. Can I, can I speak to this? Because I, I can speak from personal experience on this with a private health insurance company, mind you. Is that, is that all right if I just jump in here and talk about it? Because I had um, I had a, a gender confirming surgery a couple of years ago, um, and uh, the experience that I had to go through was um, dehumanizing, to put it nicely. Um, and this is with one of the better private health company uh, companies um, for trans care in the country, in one of the better states for trans health care. Not only, despite the fact that I had been on hormones and had um, had had my own my own doctor sign off on it my endocrinologist sign off on it i also had to get two further independent psychoanalyses from psych psychologists not just couldn't just go to a therapist i had to go to psychologists and and be analyzed um for my sanity of mind before i was able to get a surgery that i had already been talking to my primary care doctor my specialist endocrinologist and my own mental health care therapist about so the current standards right now are are, are absurd um to begin with but um i can assure you that if somebody's getting to that point there are very few people who are just going to take something on like that frivolously without ringing any bells in the medical community we have a highly medicalized system a system that has an incredible amount of checks and balances an, an amount i would argue that is that is absolutely inhumane. Um, the amount of shit that I had to pay out of pocket, the amount of stuff that I had to sit through, the amount of questioning I had to go under, deep intrusive questions about, oh, did you did you dress up this way when you were a kid? Ooh, hmm, I'm gonna check mark this off as that's a point against you or that's a point for you. It's a horrifying process. And that's the way it runs. That was the way it ran five years ago. 
five years ago, that was the process that we go through. So I assure you, there is no shortage of, of um, gatekeeping that is done when it comes to getting trans surgeries. And keep in mind, mine was a more minor one. Like CTV and the example I provided, like they had to go before a board to get, basically get the Medicare um, program to pay for it. So it's not like it sounds, you just oh, it's say, terrible. Okay, it's a terrible I'm surgery. Experience. Okay, government writes the check. Well, like, I think it's you a know. question, though, because there's qualifications. You know, well, a lot of people easier. kind of raise this out, right? Well, a lot of people raise this kind of a issue, but the problem is that like it's a strong like this isn't a real issue, right? A lot of people make very similar issues about like trans youth. Like this is very similar, like a uh, trans exclusionary radical feminist talking point. Like, oh, the they're giving the the tran the the five year olds hormones or injecting kids with hormones and get and giving them and lobbing off their their genitals or whatever. But no one is doing this, right? Like no one is doing this. The worst that people will do doesn't is they'll happen. go to a psychiatrist. It simply doesn't happen. And they'll be like, all right, come back in a couple of years. We'll give you like some hormone blockers and and that's probably it. Right. Like what you're talking about is like, yeah, if, if it was something that was happening, it'd be like a very like it'd be a real concern, but it just doesn't. Hmm. I don't CDB, know. do you think the government should have any role in health care? Well, to the point that we are now. Like any role. Like well, if so, right? if what, somebody, what role should it have? Well, specifically for physical, right? If you get into a car accident. You know, any number, you know, fall out of a tree, yeah. break a leg, go yeah. to the emergency room, yeah. you know, you know, you know, but yeah. it's one of those things where so let me your, ask body, you. your body will continue to exist, yeah. right? If you don't, if, if, if you don't put things into it, yeah. you know, unless well, it's been actually prescribed, right? So well, I, I don't know, maybe I, I just have more of a naturistic viewpoint where whenever I have really needed to grab a hold of myself, right, and go, what am I made of? Like, what is the shit? I take my ass up to the mountains of North Carolina, and I go, you know, camping out in the woods for a few weeks in the woods, in the, and I just do what I do out there, right? Oh, hold on, wait, I, wait, wait Bastia, I, I really need so to follow I, up on this. That's my relevant experience. No, 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 if, suppose, yeah. all right, look, here's the thing. Here's what I don't get. All right, you're saying basically, okay, car crash, something physical, eh, I'm willing to pay for it. But, you know, this trans stuff, I'm not willing to pay for it. I mean, why don't you just go up to the mountains, right? And I guess what I don't get <laughs> fundamentally is, no, I mean, look, I, maybe that's not what you meant to say, but it sounds like what you're saying is, look, if you're feeling like a girl, why don't you go hang out the for a few days and see if it's for real, okay? And, and while I think that's, you know, pretty reductionistic, all right, to say the least, I think the bigger the the issue that I just don't fundamentally understand about what you're saying is why is it that like I'm willing to pay for your treatment in this case, but in this case I don't think it's legit. I don't understand how you can really come to that conclusion when ultimately there are a multitude of a variety of what different uh, treatments that are, are are complex and nuanced and vary from person to person. And if you are willing to accede to the notion of doctors making decisions about whether a patient should receive a certain form of treatment uh, or not anyway, why would you? Why would things be any different with uh, with the issues facing transgender people? Again, if you're already saying that the government should be involved in these situations, I don't see what's different here. Well, the part that really gets me is the surgery, right? Because mm -hmm. that is a major commitment. What does right? that matter? But it. What does that matter? It, does, it matters. I right? had my gallbladder like, out. Now. That was a major commitment. <laughs> It's not like it oh, goes yeah. back. CDV explain himself. It's not like it goes back the other way. So you got to really be committed. Yeah, to any the, surgery that you right? have so doesn't go me, back the other way. I, I want to hear. I really want to hear him finish his statement first before he got any response. So for me, when we're talking about government involvement, right? Because that's ultimately where we're talking about taxpayer dollars, etc. Right? You know, Demon Mama complain. You know, pointed out the did. process of the mm -hmm. check boxes they're asking questions and mm -hmm. how important and but that's very personal information that you're having to reveal to complete strangers right to be able to get the government involved which is ultimately going to be something that's going to have to happen other people have to be involved with that you know because there's taxpayer money involved so there's no way to just issue a check and not have any checks 
you got to do that. What is the difference yeah, between that and literally any other medical necessity surgery, right? Like it is a medically necess like necessary surgery. Like it, like the overwhelming academic consensus and the overwhelming me medical consensus is that it's medically necessary. Why not have? And again, like the government private right, so distinction doesn't really question, matter here, right? right? So like why does it matter whether or not it can go back? Right. So for me, the question is: Is it how long should somebody say have to be? Uh, committed to this before we do the surgery right we and already have like years, years wait list i don't know i'm literally just trying to ask a well, question then I can, and no, it no, feels I will answer the question in the room right well, yeah because like you're at you're acting like these are questions we don't have the answers to but literally we have the i don't right have now. the answers to them that's why i'm asking well, a fucking question well, okay. okay cool first, then can you listen I would like, first i would like to say that if it feels heated i hopefully you have an air conditioner maybe you should turn up the knob a little bit dude uh, tell him. Just, be let's just go to the mountains man come yeah, on it's, it's all nice and chilling up in the mountains and the springs and shit um <laughs> okay so uh rgr i know you wanted to make a point there yeah. uh bring it bring back to you Right. No, we literally already have, and kind of like Dima Mama said, and mind you, we already have limitations on how long people have to wait to be able terrible. to do these and certain terrible. like gender affirming procedures, like what you're talking about. We already have them. For the average person to get any kind of like invasive surgery, the wait is usually at minimum two years, right? Like usually that's like, and mind you, that's before yep. you can even see a doctor. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll talk about, actually, you know what? Like, fuck it. I have my own experience. I can talk about my experience. I had to be first on HRT, hormone replacement therapy, for two years before I could even talk to a doctor. And now that I've talked to a doctor, I have to wait for another year after the already first two years. And that's after I've gotten yep. two different letters from other therapists signing off that I have gender dysphoria and that I need this medically and this medically necessary treatment to be able to alleviate my it's gender terrible. dysphoria to be able to do that. So it's only after I've been on HRT for two years and after I've seen not one, but two different doctors who sign off that I need this. And after I've talked to the surgeon, after I'm waiting another year, until I can get this, right? Like the idea that people can just like decide one day that they want to get this and walk into a surgeon and be like, hey, I want to have my, you know, whatever, whatever done, right? Like it's just not realistic. It doesn't happen to anyone. That's why I'm asking, because I don't know. All right, well, that's how it you works. I mean? Overwhelmingly. Maybe there's, somebody, maybe there's somebody that's watching this, you know, sometime and they go, well, I don't know about this stuff either. So you know what? I ask those questions in the hopes that I get real answers and not be, you know, combative behavior. Mm -hmm. Right. right. Well, does that's that help? Where my mind goes because I'm not. A, I'm not only considering myself and the people in the room, but anybody else is watching. So, what are those questions that might could be asked? So, yeah. Does that answer all of your questions? I mean, we can go through whatever questions you have. Like, if you actually are trying to learn, you're asking them in good faith. We can walk through whatever you don't know. I'm more than happy to, and I'm sure Demon Mama is as well. Given that you want to raise your hand. Yeah. Because at some point, there's the when the government starts picking up that tab because it's government mandated. So then it's like. You know, is there a pattern of behavior? You know, that's that's all I'm asking. And yeah, and, and if that's we only the prescribe those surgeries when people overwhelmingly show that they are medically necessary, right? The same way that if someone gets into a car wreck and it's medically necessary for them to get a surgery to save their life, it's only when there's an overwhelming amount of evidence to show that trans people need surgeries to save their lives that we give them those surgeries, well, at least see, when it's covered. I think that's where, where my point would probably go way off in the other direction because I do believe in people's ability to choose what they want to do for themselves. I believe in free will. What do you mean? I really believe that. No, what, all right, what do you mean? What do you mean choose for themselves? Because you're implying that like whether or not you choose to get a surgery is like a personal hey, Bobby choice Fino. that actually isn't based in like How's alleviating some kind of demonstrable harm. No, no, I get that these, Happy to that see these you people here. have a mental condition. Don't say these right? people. You're talking about me, all right? Just like when you say these people, just like straight, just talk about me, yeah. all right? And you're talking about me too. Yep. Okay, so there's a mental condition associated with it, right? So it's yeah. not it's called dysphoria. Yeah. Okay. So. Yeah. This is this is, is the thing. Connected. It's right? okay. It's okay to like not know some of these things, especially these things that are like very well established. Again, like decades we're talking of established science, of established research from many nations all working together, people coming together and coming to, um, you know, scientific consensus as this process works. Uh, it's okay to not know those things. But what's not okay is to not know those things and then come onto a panel and, and, and suggest, why don't you just go for a walk in the woods in response? And that's part of a harmful culture that has been built about um, built up around well, trans people that's denied us care that has caused right, so us immediate will, harm well, I, here's the question then for me is like if somebody doesn't hasn't been diagnosed with anything then they can be assumed to be quote unquote normal right and well, hold on whoa 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 whoa, whoa 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 dude i mean literally all right I'm let me like, ask you I'm, a question i mean oh like all right God. like 
I'm no, I'm gonna build. I'm gonna build a bridge to you. All right. I'm try. I'm really trying with you right now. Okay. I'm really trying oh, with boy. you. Oh boy. We will bring it back to CTV after, so I can finish the point though. Okay, CTV, you're a veteran. You know plenty of people who have served who have mental issues, right? You wouldn't say that any of them are not normal by virtue of having those mental issues, right? And you wouldn't say that those people can't just go for a walk up in the mountains Getting to get rid of those same mental issues. Getting on language and then interrupting me to then start down this little tirade is inherently you're literally disrespectful. Fragility. Here inherently comes that fragility. You're just drawing lines because between, oh, this kind of mental health we care about, but this kind we don't. On the language in which I'm using to try to explain my fucking ideas. Oh, wow. Right? You, you, hey, maybe you need to go for a walk in the mountains to calm down a little bit. Maybe I do need to go for a fucking walk in the mountains. <laughs> Maybe yeah, that's exactly yeah, what I mean, like, I'm just right? trying to explore like why if you care you about certain go, mental health and you don't then, care about then, other mental health. Pack you know, pack, I want to go. Like, you want to like uh, you want me to talk to you in the mountains? Here, look, let's dude. Look, the I'll next do, the tonight. next the next Fuck, donation dude. the next donation goal of Dylan Burns TV is going to be for a group trip for all of us to go up in the mountains and we'll leave once yeah. this COVID shit is blown over. Okay. There we go. I like that idea. Amazing. Yeah, but I don't know. It seems like you just care about certain mental health and not others. I don't know. Well, you guys have a walk in the mountains. I just want to point out something to bring the kind of two topics together. Um, I say if you want to live in a society where gender reassignment surgery can be is covered by insurance, then I'd say you want to live in a a society with free market health care. The reason is in in a free nope. market you can choose nope. um, what health insurance policy nope. you want to buy, and you are you are free. I mean, both parties are free to put whatever conditions on that uh, on that policy that they can come to an agreement to so if there's a demand for for a particular treatment any kind of uh controversial treatment to be covered then um then there's a incentive for the for someone in the market to provide policies that cover that uh that procedure on the other hand oh, the public goal. health care system oh, okay. where the government is sent to some extent has to choose for everyone, what is covered by insurance and what mm -hmm. isn't, yeah. then you might get lucky and that controversial treatment will be covered or you might not. And if it's controversial, I mean, it's going to be a battle at best. Here's um, the thing. You can get I have a couple really quick questions. Before all the socialists yeah. listening to this uh, rage against what last username just said, let me remind you that what he said has never actually been tried. All right. Thank yeah, you, yeah, I mean, but yeah, we have had supplementary insurance, in, in even if you have public health care, but it's going to be competing with the free government health care. So uh, you are going to have to pay more to get supplementary insurance to cover something than that the government doesn't cover in more than you would in a society with completely uh, free market for for insurance. Right. So the free out where market gives you more choice and is good, generally a good thing for getting new kinds of uh, new kinds of treatment covered by insurance in general. Uh, a couple of really quick questions. So the first, what if okay. uh, those kind of procedures aren't profitable enough to be able to offer an accessible at an, an accessible level for the average trans person? What, not profitable for who? For uh, for the healthcare the, insurance company. Well, you're going to have to pay for you know at, at a level that makes it profitable for the insurance companies. That's yeah. True so what if you price out? Insurance. Yeah. So what if like there's a decent amount of trans people who just aren't able to pay for it? I mean, if you can't pay for insurance at all, then you won't get covered by insurance. What he's saying is you yeah, die. That's kind of the problem. That's what he's saying. Yeah, he's saying you, you die. die. Yeah, that's right. kind of the problem so, I mean, with private health insurance in general, right? Is that like when you leave yes. it to the private market, then there are going to be some people who aren't able to pay for it because they're more concerned with the profit motive. Yeah, that's, that's the part the that we don't get to frequently in this conversation. Why? Oh, we get to that. Wait, wait, I, 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 I have, have my hand up for a while now. Well, well I just I, want to ask one question. Okay, you ask a question. Well, hold on. Can I respond to that first? Okay, yeah, but yeah, to be fair, yeah, you should be able to respond. Then CTV, you ask a question. Then somebody will answer the question, and then I will address the next thing. Okay, go. Okay, so yes, uh, the the you know the alleged benefit of public health care is that it that people who who uh, are poor can get it right. You don't have to. It's guaranteed to everyone in a sense. Um, that doesn't mean that you're not paying for it. Every everyone is paying for it in a sense. Like you're well, everyone's paying, paying demonstrably less. I mean, you're probably paying like a dollar more per person. Cheers. Well, it's just the cost is distrib is redistributed. So if someone can't afford it, yeah. then someone who can afford it ends up paying for that person. So it's yeah, like, great. moving the cost. Uh, probably a dollar extra per person. Yeah. 
Uh, it depends entirely on the person and what and what you're paying. I mean, we have no. We I actually cited a study earlier that like the increased cost would probably be about like a dollar or so. A dollar for person. what? What do you mean? Like if like if insurance companies were to implement like gender affirming care across the board, so that there's no like uh, dispute within the market, so that you don't have like a monopoly on trans healthcare, right? Like if all of them were to implement it. And what? Yeah. I, I don't know what. I, I like in like how much different. people pay for uh, like how much in a, a person pays like monthly for gender affirming care. Right. Okay. So if this, if it, you're saying your premiums only go up by a dollar to cover this surgery. So, yeah, that I mean, means... like, not, there's not that many trans people, but like surgeries do per trans people cost like a decent amount. Right. Right. But so, I mean, if like, it's that easy to add, add this to, to a policy, then in a free market, it would be, it should be pretty popular. Like, except you know, like in the free market, if you have like, all right, let's say that there's only one or two companies that cover trans affirming healthcare, right? Because the other companies don't think it's profitable enough that everyone does it, right? And then those one or two companies only cost actually an extra cover dollar because it's so rare. Well, yeah, but except so, people can artificially increase pro increase the price if the pro if like the uh, demand is there, right? Because like this is medically nece uh, necessary healthcare, right? So if you leave it to the private market, then even though it but would if the be demand like, is there and it's cheap well, to provide, hold on a it, second. There's it. another way of looking at this, which is that we've already seen this happen once so while we've never seen a truly free um health situation we've never lived in an ancap utopia where you have to sign a document that goes from here to the moon listing every single possible disease we've never seen that sort of society what we have seen though is a society that is ideologically opposed to the existence of trans people and therefore companies recognizing that trans people they may not even know they exist but let's be real society, you're not i'm not done yet i'm not done yet Public healthcare is I'm not, not going to cover that. Society is ideally not, logically not, opposed. I'm not done yet. Like, such a society. Like, it's okay. I would like to hear Dean Mama finish. Yes. Thank, I would like thank to you, Dylan. I appreciate it. One of my original, one of the most important rules on the channel. So when I speak up, the reason I'm speaking up isn't to give anybody like a Did punch in the face Maybe and bloody their nose. It is to drag the conversation in a certain direction. Dean Mama, please finish, and unless you you you'll be able to comment right after. Okay. Yeah. Um. The thing is, is that it, it, we've already seen in a society where um, we don't even have a completely free um healthcare system, but we have one that is arguably closer to the free market. Um than um than existed in the past uh, when pre-existing conditions, for example, were allowed to be at the discretion of the um of the corporation, we saw that trans people were not covered. Trans people would be written out. In fact, the only way trans people got care on their coverage is if their doctors dodged it by by um, prescribing them things for different reasons, like say, HRT for acne. This is something that happened all over the place. This is well documented. Um, so the private market doesn't do a particularly good job of addressing the problems of small minority groups. Um, being trans is not end your life at all. But if obviously I'm here, I'm you know, streaming for a whole bunch of people. People give value from my existence, all kinds of stuff. Um, but, uh, you know, it's not like a condition that you die at birth or anything like that. However, it has a huge impact. And I can tell you from, of course, personal experience, but also from the data that exists that has been collated over years and years and years or collected over years and years and years, that um, being trans and not getting treatment for that can, can cause an incredible amount of suffering and can severely impact your life goals. With that in mind, um, despite, despite the fact that they're a minority of the population, and we know that corporations won't necessarily be able to make a profit off that minority of the population, the private market doesn't have an answer for that. It doesn't have an answer because we know that they won't do it if it's not profitable. And it, it won't does. be profitable it, if there's only a handful of people. See, if, no, if you, if question, if minorities of people are exactly who gets screwed in a, uh, in a, in a politically provided service, public health care, where... Um, what the list of things that are covered by the government is going to be decided by the majority, by the popular vote. Okay, if mm, if this if the, the policy that you want is that unpopular, room. the policy you want is unpopular. It's not going to happen in a public system. I, I will say that's simply Lashley not true, though. Well, okay, okay, Last okay, year, okay. was a very fair point that there are a lot more folks out there who are probably, uh, you know, I mean, in terms of voters, the folks thinking of, uh, you know, along the lines of CTV, probably outnumber trans people. So, in a pure government system, I mean, on the other hand, in a private market, you can have if one insurance company has, says, "Hey, I think there's a small." but worthwhile market here for providing this particular special kind of tailored insurance for people who are concerned who want this particular thing covered if there's just enough people to to make to make that uh you know a worthwhile just wait, thing just for wait. them to go into business to which doesn't have to be a lot can be a very small minority then it can happen there's an opportunity for that to happen i mean um, here's the thing you responded then after you respond i gotta throw it over to see okay that's anymore. fine i just want right, to be able right. to respond to this because here's the thing um while I will agree that if we were in a 100% direct 
democracy, majority rules, and that's not even close to the system that we live in, even in our imperfect democracy here in the United States. Um, but if that were the case, that probably would be problematic. I don't really advocate for that type of system. Um, and it's funny because, um, as it turns out, the closer we get to last username system, a system historically, the worse outcomes are for trans people. Because as it turns out, we have um, increasingly public systems all over the country. In fact, all of the states, really weird, that have really strong public health um, programs, Washington, Oregon, California, New York are a few examples, Vermont. These are states that have very strong public health um, infrastructure. All of those take care of trans people. And the ones that don't, the states that are the worst, are the ones with the most privatized care. It's only, it seems to be that people will find just about any excuse to screw over a minority when they have that sort of power. Okay, so can I can I uh, yeah, take it? First, for I need to thank a small creator. Small creator, I want to give a shout out to help him get you know get up on his pull, pull him up by his bootstraps. Bastiat for raiding me. Yeah, yeah uh, thanks for that, buddy. Uh, I apologize. My stream is falling to pieces, um, and my internet is going to hell. So I'm I have to duck out. Um, but I want to send everybody over because this is a really good debate. CCV, last year's name, uh, Demon Mama, and uh, Riley Grace Rashawn. Uh, it has been such a pleasure, Madman. I'm not sure if you're here. Or not, but it is always a pleasure seeing you as well. Uh, this is a, a good debate, so I hope everybody sticks around. I wish I could. Thanks, Bastia. Uh, yeah. I'm running off my phone, and it's all falling to pieces. Dude, so Bastia, Dylan, yeah. thank you so much. I wish you would just no make sure you watch, because I'm about to make a really, really good point. Okay. I'm going to see if I can fire it up on my phone and listen. All right, so wow. give me five seconds. All right, thank you all, all so right, much. Right. I'm, I'm Dylan, sure, sure it's going to be hot and spicy. Here we CTV, go. CTV, I hope you amaze me to the point where you send me into the mountains. Okay, let's do it. Well, Send me into the mountains. So, it certainly seems that we uh, are at the point where that it's being said that getting this surgery slash treatment is necessary to this person mm -hmm. to be able to save their life. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? Yeah. That's what the data shows. Okay. Right. Okay. So, in order to save this person's life, they must have this surgery, right? So at the point of their diagnosis, would it not stand to reason that in order to save their life, that we should also remove their rights to a weapon? I'm sorry, what? I'm sorry, Please what? Explain. Yeah, this is this is a very interesting argument. Hey, I wasn't expecting it, but go ahead and explain. Well, I'm, if the whole idea is that this is medically necessary for these people to have in order to save their life at the point of diagnosis you would want to take every step necessary to protect that person and i would remove their gun rights they should not have a weapon because i would so wait, not wait 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 the argument is themselves. hold on the argument is that uh, someone might be a danger to themselves or other people might be a danger to them because mind you it's not just that a person might be a danger to themselves but also that like they might be mistreated by larger society right like, there's also an argument that gender-affirming care is necessary to be able to function in a society where it's uh, otherwise a danger what? to be in society where you might otherwise be the subject of discrimination by people who want to take me for a walk in the mountain after I say something that disagrees with them on a panel, for example. Um, that, you know, it's, it's very important for them to be able to, quote-unquote, pass so that they aren't harassed by other people in society, right? Like, that's an equal, <laughs> equally plausible argument or an equally valid yeah, argument. Yeah, but if you're saying that this person cannot survive without this surgery— Right. If they don't get this treatment, they don't get this surgery, then at that point they must relinquish their control of any weapon because we can't risk them hurting themselves. I don't know what the hell you're talking about. Like, I'm sorry, just to follow your own logic, would you agree with the same thing that anybody who receives any surgery should also have that happen? Well, what I'm saying is specifically is that this treatment inside the framework of the reason why they need it is to save their life. Yeah, right? that's why just they like have many surgeries. Yeah. Surgery. yeah, like and literally any mental health issue. Also, oh, hold on, hold on. But so you, do you think that anyone who poses any kind of threat to themselves should have like any kind of weapon or any kind of like thing that could be used? I'm to literally take away their own flabbergasted. Life? Absolutely. Away? If look, we I had I remember we had a guy that he was under uh, when we were underway and he said that he was going to hurt himself. We took that. He, that threat very seriously we removed any type of weaponry that could be around him we confined him to quarters and made sure that he could not hurt himself and we didn't give him the ability to i think that when people decide that they're going to say those things where they are going willing to commit self-harm right that we have to take that serious so if under the same logic that the, these people wow. need to have this surgery because it's going to save their life 
then at that point, I would want to remove their ability to be able to hurt themselves. I don't well, understand about, how your logic works. Their really their ability to purchase a firearm is the least that I can do. The, uh, at least about, it's something. There's like two problems right, what about here literally real quick. Anything? You can kill yourself with literally anything. Yeah. All right. This is really, yeah, really, so, no, this doesn't make any why, sense. Why, is, why are you picking guns arbitrarily? Like anyone can kill themselves with anything. No. I could go and drink like a thing of alcohol, like bleach right now and fucking off myself. Look right? at Jeffrey Epstein, for example. He was able to off himself in an extremely <laughs> weird position uh, that was extremely suspicious. I, mean, I think I don't know ironically, why picked the, hold guns on, I don't know why because... anybody on the left would be like. You know, flipping like, out honestly, about exactly. It's because about it would play. probably be. I think it, it was his assumption that you would probably be uh, anti-gun to begin with. It was, I'm ass I'm assuming. I have no idea. No, I am not anti-gun, by the way. Just I, so you know. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm I. Like I yeah. said, I was, I was, might have been his yeah. assumption. I have no, no idea. I'm totally, I'm totally for it. Now, I think that there should be limitations on like open carrying in public, just because there's been evidence to show that that increases harm. But like, yeah, if you want to have a gun, that's go a damn shame. Go for it. I know, I, but unfortunately, like me. that's what the evidence, that's what the evidence shows. But if you want to have a gun and you want to go hunt or whatever, I come from a family of hunters, right? I, I have venison frozen in my freezer right now that I'm going to use to make jerky probably after this, right? If you want to have a gun, fucking go for it. Oh, I I, um, I I actually am going to have to cut okay. this off into ending statements. So everybody, don't worry. If you want to say something, you're going to get a period of time uninterrupted. One minute. We are looking into replacements at the moment for Bastiat. Uh, yeah, the replacements if you want to go in. Them, uh, and see if we can get a, another replacement. Uh, to see. If, yeah, do uh, not make assumptions. I was going to say. Balanced. Yeah. But at the moment, we're going to end with ending statements. This time, in the top left I, I, It literally made no sense. Demon Mama, then last username, then CTV, then RGR, then ending it with Madman. Okay, so Demon Mama, you take it away. Um, yeah. Um, so, yeah. Uh, I, I don't know. I got a little bit lost by some of the arguments here. Um, at the end of the day, yes, um, we should have... We should use the power of government. The reason why government exists is to ensure that we have a functional and equal society and we should be willing to say yeah you know what healthcare should cover even niche cases like trans people which is a very real need very well established by science this is not controversial um i really um don't understand a lot of the other things that were made some of them didn't even make sense on like a logical basis um so i can't really speak to those um but uh by and large, I think that arguments that try to imply that trans people are somehow, like, faking it, making it up, um, or, you know, just need to ha have a quick hike in the woods um, and that that'll just make them better is just, just patently ridiculous. Not only is it ridiculous on its face just for being a silly statement, but also it flies in the face of all data um, that we have available to us, which, as it turns out, is a lot. Trans people deserve the same health care that anyone else gets. And as it turns out, we haven't always gotten that in this country. The best way to ensure that is to say the state has to treat everyone equally. That way that corporations can't put profit over the health care of a minority group. And that's my stance on it. Okay, next I'm going to throw it over to last username. Yeah, so I mean, this is really a great example of... Um, the kind of thing that free market healthcare is great for, and the kind of thing that's going to be a problem. Too bad his argument didn't you, show that. If the government controls all of healthcare. Oh, it's right? the when next. The uh, we're going to the next topic. Something that's publicized queen. like that. It's one size fits all, right? Everyone gets the same uh, flavor of gruel at the at the you know the government uh, uh, food line. So, um, if uh, <laughs> if you want now, it may be that we're at the Thank point you, Dale, where Dan. where the it's issue, one of my strong there's sweets. so much awareness of transgender people and the treatments and such that it is popular enough you, that it's going to be um, I do my best. covered by uh, government insurance doesn't seem to be yet uh, just in a few places um, but uh, maybe um, it actually happens but generally speaking any time uh, anybody yeah. who has some kind of new treatment um, or new kind of health problem that there's not a lot of awareness yet it's controversial um, and especially if it becomes politicized um, there's, it's going to be this True. huge battle bring to up get a good that point, covered by the that is what they universal, think. um, that's what you know, they really government think. insurance that's that everyone is forced take. to buy into a free market allows, uh, creates a, a mechanism for that kind of change to happen, um, in a very, um, uh, incremental X way doubt. that is much more beneficial, is much more helpful to those, to those minorities, right? Last minorities username is not a lib. Last username is an markets. ANCAP. Choice is good for minorities. And... If uh, no, if you're asking, well, what about poor people who can't afford it in a free market? Well, poor people are a minority too. Um, and, what? What? And, and as per the rule, no, they're they not. Are get screwed 
No, um, they're not. In a majoritarian system, they're going to get screwed in a system no, not. The where poor, they not don't a have enough the political power. Majority of the to, world, uh, are you kidding to, me? To have to make any changes, right? Oh my maybe god! Maybe politicians may say, "Oh, we care about these poor people. We want to help." Poor people are a super but they're not majority. They're saying that to oh the poor god. people, right? I they're saying that this. to the middle class and the wealthy people who actually have the political power, who who have the majority hey, of the votes. Thanks, Ellison. So yeah, I'm in Riley's not, Discord. It, don't be. Thank don't, you so don't much. expect thank that you for the, the bits. whatever they do is actually going to help those poor people. And thank you for the sub. Whoever just subbed, I didn't catch it. system. Okay, so they're a super majority minority. If you are on on the margins. You should love free markets. I'm done. Got it. Okay, cool. Uh, we're going to throw it now to CTV. <clears throat> Man, that one just came to me. Uh, so what I will say is that uh, I felt like we had a really good discussion about this all the way around. Um, whether or not if the government is going to be involved, then that is as serious as you should take it, right? Because if you want to go through the system, I've been through that system. If you are going to say that you are going to do things or if you're, you know, if they need to have this because of, then there should be all measures taken seriously I and a no removal idea of, you know, point. the ability to hurt themselves. And they should pretty much come into, uh, I, I don't know, man, that is a, that just really came to me, right? So uh, I guess for me now, it's kind of one of those, how serious, how serious is this, right? I knew it! Okay, uh, next I mean, I don't going... know. I, that's, how serious is this? Mask next, off. Next, I'm going to throw it over to RGR. Fucking... Yeah, a lot of my points, I'll defer to Demon Mama. I thought she delivered a lot of arguments well, so I won't. So I'm going to be spending a lot of time just like responding to things I've heard. Uh, how serious is this? It's my life. That's how serious it is. And as well as the lives of like other trans people, right? Like it's our lives, right? Like it's it's, it's incredibly serious. It's in, as serious as anyone else's life. CTV's a um, Choice loser. is good for minorities. Yeah, for minorities who can afford it. Nah. Um, no Coco yeah, Barracuda. If you want to say that, the like, oh, he's... yeah, well, the private market will totally provide oh, trans affirming health care, yeah, to the trans people who can otherwise afford it. Because, like, if you have a profit margin, then you're going to naturally jack up the price to however high, uh, wherever the point is, where you'll be able to make the most amount of profit, regardless of if that cuts off, like, certain people who are going to be able to unafford it. That's the problem with, like, most privatized health care um, in general. And that's why it's better to leave it over to uh, public health care. The idea that like when you have public health care that there oh, are going to be he? problems where oh you have one size fits all that's a problem with funding that's that not a problem with the fact me. that's covered by prop by the government that just means that you need to increase the funding on that there are plenty of countries who do that and have demonstrably good wonderful benefits and demonstrable uh, health quality outcomes for their average citizen um if there are politicians if there are politicians who lie about poor people then oh, that's yeah politicians. Pisco. You yoink, them out, yoink them out of there and yeah, it does no. mean that you end up having to rely on Mad trying Man to persuade the public opinion on whether or not nothing. this is necessary. I would take that yes. over literally just throwing this over to corporations, I think so, which Coco we don't have any control yeah. over. And Sorry, if they decide to price uh, transforming healthcare at such a point That's where people guess. just aren't able to afford it, there's no way to be able to change that. Whereas with a democracy, like an actual functional democracy, there is a way to be able to change that by swaying public opinion. And I would prefer that over a system where we actually have no control over the private sector. That's it. Hey, and we're gonna end this topic with Madman. Um, yeah, I wish I had uh, been here to hear uh, more of everyone's opinions for a little bit longer, um, so that I could really uh, wrap this up a little bit more uh, tidy. Um, but basically, I think uh, the government forcing any insurance company to provide any insurance uh, to to provide any coverage whatsoever. <laughs> Hey! Thank you, the drunk Kruger. Deeply appreciate the subscription. With Thank you so much. Uh, transgenderism or not, and so I mean that that basically just settles it for me. It's pretty black oh, and you're white. You're not bad at all, Coco Barracuda. You did nothing wrong. Okay, uh, we're going to go into the next topic, but we're going into one about the uh, Supreme Court, and we we totally have not why uh, should you stop boycott here we have <laughs> upgraded i don't care what you say in chat oh i see uh and with pisco but i'm here though. Doing? but i'm here boycott to, lost uh, student you third cannot, year you cannot give lawyer advice you only do that to me behind closed doors uh, that's right that's right that's right um so 
Uh, the next topic is going to be well, Pisco, you can introduce yourself and then we'll go into the next one. Sure. Yeah, um, I'm, what's that, CTV? I thought this was I'll my time. Like, you were a little forget. liberal with the with the mute button before, um, Dylan, and now I feel like it's not equal. Well, well thank now you so much, no, Dylan Kerger. You make this different. possible. Thank gotcha, you so gotcha. much. Yeah, so I'm, I'm see Pisco. you more again in the future. Happy to have you back, back when you do come back. And thank you for bringing me on. We get better at pronunciation and just Pisco. generally. <laughs> I uh, love Pisco. Okay, so the next topic is should the Democrats pack the Supreme Court if the Republicans nominate Amy Coney Barrett? Uh, I'm actually going to throw this first over to last username because I, I know we, he, I actually like to a lot of times, I talk to last username a lot about how to morally frame these questions. And I, I know he had a, he, he thought of a different way to frame it. So I think he, him starting the conversation. Pisco's a lefty. Well, yeah, he's a sock down. idea. Not super okay, sure. So my different way to frame it was just to ask, instead of should, I mean, should Democrats do this? Well, are we answering that as a Democrat or as someone who doesn't, who's not a Democrat and doesn't want them to? So rather than that, I, I suggested perhaps we should just ask what's, what will happen if Democrats pack the Supreme Court? Because I think at the end of the day, that's what really matters, right? Um, we're talking about a you know a system which is meant to you know accomplish certain certain ends certain goals. So Thank let's you, just look God. at what are the consequences of I'm if sure people will do help that a little bit. and what and what effect it will have ultimately on accomplishing those ends. Will it help? Will it hurt? Um, my, my my prediction would be would be no. I I think there's um, it would be a massive massive um, a, a huge violation of existing norms. Um, that is really un, sort of uncalled for in response to anything that's happened so far. There's nothing that really justifies that. And it would just set off a, a, an escalation of violations on both sides that would result in, in nothing good happening. It's, it's hard to predict because it, it, it quickly escalates out of control, but it, but you know, it could very well result in the destruction of, of the Supreme Court. And I, I wouldn't like to see that. Um, though I'm an anarchist, I actually kind of like the, the, the Supreme Court in the U.S. and the mechanism. It's kind of not part of the government that sort of kind of works sometimes. Uh, so I, I wouldn't like to see it, it get destroyed. And I don't think there's any reason to do that. Wonderful. Next, I'm going to throw it over to Demon Mama. Yeah. Um, I mean, in this current, uh, in the current climate, um, uh, yeah, the Democrats should do that. Of course, Donald Trump has done that. Um, he's aiming to do that. He has no, uh, he's not exactly particularly sneaky about that. Uh, you know, he, he says it pretty openly. Um, so does the GOP. The GOP is, um, has made it very clear that they don't give a shit about precedent at all. Um, which, you know, Hey, that's fair. Um, that's, that's politicking for you. Um, I am not a Democrat, uh, though I think voting Democrat in this election is significantly, um, better than voting Republican, obviously. Um, but, uh, yeah, uh, if the Democrats were to do this, uh, we would end up with, um, almost assuredly a more just society, um, by at least a margin. I don't know by how much, I think there's a lot of problems that the Democrats are, um, unprepared to address. Um, but in our current stand, in the current standpoint, in the the current status quo, um, we have a really big problem with uh, Republicans putting extremist judges into places, in including Amy Coney Barrett. Um, and um, yeah, if we want to have any semblance of of fairness in our society and not regress towards like some sort of like monarchic society, which seems to be um, what a lot of Republicans are angling at these days, um, yeah, I think the Democrats need to be able to play hardball with the courts uh, and use the political power that is theirs that is given to them by the constitution that's the only way that you attain power when you're going against somebody who doesn't give a shit about norms so yeah for sure okay next i'm going to throw it over to ctv <clears throat> um i think that if the democrats um were to let's find out pack the courts or try to pack the courts uh, simply for political motivations and that's all I can see that it could be uh, I mean like the Republicans are doing now it it shits on tradition for sure because how long have we had nine justices right so a I think he took a bar yeah it certainly seem like a reason to maybe me two. considering that the justices should be blind to both parties right and that the only thing that should matter is that they're, you know, the merit of 
the way that they have judged cases uh, and it's the worst argument how they, they it's okay don't uh, worry Coco we'll blow them out specifically don't you worry I got you covered more so than any political affiliation uh, I can't see why I would be convinced to increase the number of justices uh, it, this is simply a process that all of us you know have been participating in for the last i think he's just done well at least 37 years of my life i mean or maybe both right? it's possible uh and you know hun- you know the last 244 years for everybody else yeah that makes sense in, you know in this idea called america uh this is just the way that it is and we need there are a lot of dumb grifters out there tim pool for example uh, seat on the supreme court and this is just the process so i feel like that this particular person fits the bill well and that, that there needs to be any number of justices added to it, I don't feel like we have the reason obviously, other than extremely to play bad political yeah, games to do this. It's not like Oof. there's some... We'll do some segments on Tim Pool. Don't worry, Coco. Okay, next I'm going to throw it over I've been to planning Matt. on it. Um, yeah, so, uh, of course, you know, I do not believe that the, that the Supreme Court should be packed, obviously. Um, but mostly it's just because it would send, it would just set a really dangerous trend if it was, um, another four years of Donald Trump in office and possibly, um, he's packing them a, now. A, a Congress with, with, uh, uh, Republican leanings. Oh. Like, would you want them to go bad ahead ideas, and continue though, Lynn. to like add justice? Nice voice, but bad ideas. Were, um, maybe originalists and not living document types and like would then would you be okay with, with them just adding justices and i mean it just seems like i watch this i'm gonna get this you're no, only you okay with people changing the rules i feel like madman is high as fuck right now our society if it benefits your side or if it hurts the side you're against so yeah i just think that that would be really dangerous and you you don't want to do that. I wouldn't want to do that. Okay. Next, I'm going to go to Pisco. Sure. There are some things that I would agree with on the other side. Got of the it house. right. Yeah, you got it right. Yeah. Wonderful. Um, perfect. Well, you can call me whatever you want, though. Um, one is, is this inherently partisan? No one denies that it is. And that, True. Um, of course, we would be against Trump if he was in control of the House, passing a law to expand the court as it stands now. So I don't, I don't deny that it's partisan. Uh, I, but I find it extremely ironic and problematic that now all of a sudden we're caring about norms and the continuity of institutions and the spoilage of our courts and what are we going to do? I didn't hear this crying on principle or on norms when the Republicans were breaking their own precedent, uh, asinine as it was, not to nominate someone in, uh, during an election year. I didn't hear the breakage of norms when the sitting Republican co- uh, Senate wouldn't even give hearings to a Supreme Court justice of Obama, let alone lower federal court yep. ju- um, judges, Pisco's which good are at extremely stuff. important. This is what he's good uh, there I wasn't like a concern a then I get along about with breakage well. of norm. What was sold to me, what was told to me in several conversations um, before, and before and after Justice Ginsburg's death was, this is a matter of pure power politics. That was what was sold to me. They're, it's their constitutional authority as senators to install or advise and consent the president's nomination and they have the right to do it and the power to do so therefore they should be able to exercise that power no matter what true you true. can't have it that way and claim power politics on one side of the house and then cry about norms after i see the addition of a modest number of justices as a necessary correction to years of republican breakage of norms and a and a sort of coming back to what I think is a more balanced court than three originalists plus whatever you want to call um, Alito. So the only concern I would have is how this would look in an electoral system and how it looks for the Democrats. So if it's bad for the Democrats, I probably wouldn't be in favor of it. I'm not denying that it's partisan. I'm just denying that you have any ground to stand on on your accusations of hypocrisy. And I don't think this parade of horribles is going to come that many of these people claim that all of a sudden we're going to see an escalating nuclear war of a thousand Supreme Court justices. We don't see this kind of thing if we ex- expand the lower federal benches. Um, and I think that um, you could add a modest number of judges, maybe over a 
justices over a period of time. And I don't think um, we'd see the parade of horribles that the other side is claiming. Okay, and we're going to go finally to RGR. Hey, what's happening? Yeah, I signed off on a lot of Pisco's arguments. Also, just... And here's the reason why... Um, because in principle, I agree that pack cor that core packing is bad. Last username, uh, yeah, I agree with the principle that like if we allow core packing to continue, kind of like this sashaying, like back and forth and back and forth, eventually it will result in a bad outcome. Uh, but the problem is that like to say that we shouldn't pack assumes that the system is functioning as it should, which it just doesn't, right? Like yep. basically the only limitations on whether or not people like the executive is able, like the Constitution was written just kind of expecting that the executive would in good faith not appoint partisan people to the Supreme Court. Mind you, that's what I want. I want the Supreme Court to be an objective neutral body, but it just isn't. And while, and I mean, like we can all pretend that it is a neutral body, but if we all just pretend to do that, then the people who want to act in bad faith and take advantage of that so that they can appoint people who are partisan and support their policies are going to take advantage of it, which is exactly what, the, what, uh, what Republicans have done. Because mind you, uh, Amy Coney Barrett, I mean, like, fuck, are we going to talk about the person who clerked for Scalia and has the same textualist and originalist views that he does, uh, was a member of Faculty for Life and an anti-abortion group, criticized uh, Chief Justice Roberts for preserving the an the Affordable Care Act, and who also said that being called the N-word by her supervisor doesn't create a hostile or abusive working environment? This is clearly partisan, all right? And also just, like, pretty blatantly, oh, and then also the amazing quality that she didn't even remember when asked about, like, oh, do you remember the five uh, essential civil rights or liberties that are protected by the First Amendment that she happened to forget? Uh, uh, most importantly, yep, the right to she protest. Forgot Very the right interesting to protest. She selectively forgot Whoops. to mention like that particular one at this point in history, right? Um, so like to say that. So mind you, while we, uh, while I do agree in principle that we shouldn't have packing the courts, and while I agree in principle Whoopsies. that we shouldn't have partisan appointing, um, like in the absence of an alternative, and I do want an alternative, then we need to make sure that we're not just allowing Republicans to basically trample over us, or I guess. You, if, I don't know, like how you're. I assume you're a Republican. Um, to trample over the other side when the other side is acting in good faith and. Clearly, Republicans are not. That's my statement. Okay. Everybody has had a one minute, uh, well, one minute, has had an opening statement. Uh, we are now going to slide into general conversation while I try to now fix my camera. Yeah. So I, I, I agree with what are the merits of having any number of justices? I don't understand why. Does anyone on the other side think that it was a horrible like Riley, breakage of norms uh, when the bench was increased before in our history? I don't know. This was a, a while ago. I don't know the circumstances that that happened under. I mean, the, the reason to have nine justices is because there's nine justices. And at this okay. point, it seems like, it, it, you know, any like any change in the number would be, you know, uh, considered a, a, you know, highly uh, partisan move. Like there's no there's obviously no consent. Like, like if everyone wanted to increase the number and they agreed on a way to do that, then sure, that's fine. But that's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about one party increasing it to retaliate against you know something that the other party why does this made. represent such a like a drastic step for you as opposed to the kind of um dereliction of duty may i say of the republican congress in years prior Fantastic uh, you, you see this is a sort of one-way ratchet the dereliction of duty specifically not giving hearings to judges America. that were nominated not just garland t scores of uh so just so you know a great deal of substantive federal law is decided upon by circuit um circuit judges and district yep. court judges a great deal of law and these were not why do you think trump had record-setting numbers of federal judges appointed partly because if not entirely because mitch mcconnell refused to give hearings for these judges what? i think unprecedented unprecedented in our history why didn't you have a problem with that yep and these were Bar uh, barack obama appointees and they refused to correct to so, Presumably, I you mean, would say because it's in their power to do so, and they have the advice and consent, and it's pure power politics. And if it's in their, you know, discretionary, total plenary authority to do well, so, ultimately, they have the right to they, do so. You know, if they had control of the Senate, they had the authority to. Okay, you know, we have the control of the Senate. We have a, anyway. Okay, so if Democrats take control of the Senate, we and and we have both houses, and we have the presidency, we have the power to pass a law increasing the number of justices. There you go. It's the same power politics. No, 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 no. You just gave. Hold me. on. Let me talk. Let me talk. You, they they didn't give a hearing, but they if they had a hearing, they could have just said, "Okay, we heard you, and we still don't like them," and we and they vote against them. Would that have been a violation of, of precedent, according to you? It, so or it would force them. Of, uh, it norms? would force them to say in public what we all know. So it, it it would be less bad if they had given them hearings and said, "We're not co signing on to you for political reasons." Forcing someone to go on the record and to be before a tribunal that itself is a signaling device to voters. And the, the not having that out there 
is a huge breakage of norms because now the public doesn't know if this was a valid, uh, if the Senate was validly exercising its power of advice and consent. So yes, so I just, think it's much worse to have- But just it, to be clear though- It's not they just pro forma. And, if and they had to, given and to, hearings to all these candidates and rejected them all and, explain, and said why, you would, that, that would not have been- That would be better. Right. Because they would have to have good reasons then or else they would be voted out of their office. The, the, he got to avoid, imagine the folly of having a hearing where they're like they're not able to at, at all implicate or or undermine any of these highly respected judges. Um, listen, I, I'm not going to sit here and say there was the worst hearings of all time. What happened with from TOS? Justice from Judge Barrett, but what imagine them having to do that for every single federal judge. I think that that would show the voters that this is a pure exercise of partisan politics, oh, and they see, would have paid the consequences. Can't. But they avoided yeah. that, and they avoided the democracy and the payback that would have come if they had held those hearings. Like I'm not going to say I'm not going to say that what they did was was perfectly fine, and I'm certainly not going to stand. You don't care don't at like all. The excuse that they. What, what do you mean? Uh, no, no, no. Okay, I don't like the excuse that they made. I think it was you know stupid to say, oh, let's wait till after the election. Like that's bullshit. No, no, I'm um, talking about the federal judges. So forget about Scalia's seat. Forget yeah. about for a second. Think about all the when when did the Senate uh, Republicans take control of the Senate? 2014. No, it is. I no, 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 Aji. Uh, some part in Obama's second term, right? From that point on, they didn't approve federal judges for the most part. W okay. What do we say to that? Did they just leave all these seats empty for years? Why do you think yep. the Republicans had so Trump. many? Yeah. Also, okay. I, mean, I just want to point out that just real quick, just to build on this, um, I think we would be totally like totally wrong to not point out the fact that this type of like as as Pisco calls it, the, the raw power politics or pure power politics is part and parcel of the Republicans' current strategy. What is it that uh, the the Mitch McConnell's desk is the the, the, the the graveyard of bills? That he's done the exact same thing, abusing the system that we have in place to stop all bills that come from his, that come from his opponents that would have any electoral benefit to them, regardless of how it impacts the, um, the American people. And one of the best examples of this has been the constant shooting down of aid in the middle of a of a coronavirus of the, yeah. of the coronavirus pandemic and so it's not just here this is a precedent this is a pattern that we can see with the republican party of uh, the republican party being willing to go in the worst face faith possible for their own personal gain and put the american people and the american democracy on hold in multiple ways including including the Supreme Court, including federal justice seats, including bills. We have the Republicans choking the entire government. But you're just assuming that they're turning, they're they're rejecting those bills for you know partisan reasons. Like maybe they just don't like. I mean, come bills. on, surely you can't well, be that dopey about you're, politics, you're, my friend. You're, you're when you have so, a when you have a graveyard, that's absurd. You're being so deferential and so charitable to Republicans. You're saying. Like I, I can divine a reason that could be legitimate, but on the part of the Democrats and their proposers, well, I mean, honestly, I don't know. I don't, don't give that charity. American oh, also, just so closely, you know, but you're gonna have to convince, like, just saying, like, re the Republicans turned down, rejected the bill. Well, oh. convince me that they did that for, for. Uh, don't worry, I can. Reasons, right? Remember, um, in fact, it was just on Fox News the other yeah, night. Yeah. I believe it was Fox News. Mitch McConnell said, uh, referring specifically to Obama being unable to get anything done in his last term. It's because of me. <laughs> It was because of me. That was yeah. Mitch McConnell. Mitch McConnell, the current leader of the Republican-led Senate. So yeah, he literally admits to it. They're fucking arrogant as shit. Yeah, they openly admit to this. And here's the thing that is wild to me being in politics. This is something I talk about all the time. And it's funny because there's all these conspiracies about the Democrats doing this and the, the parade of horribles and all these little catchphrases and buzz phrases. But when you actually look into the matter of public record, it's unbelievably clear that it is the Republican Party and the current power brokers in the Republican Party who have literally taken the, the, the Constitution and just shat on it, used it like fucking toilet paper as far as how they're concerned. They don't give a shit about the rights of anyone they just want to win and in, the worst part is it's not even for their constituents it's for them here's, here's a question for uh, people on the I, panel i'm curious if there if let's say biden wins the presidency but uh loses the senate and there's a vacancy on the supreme court does anybody think that the senate in even in the first year of the biden presidency would fill that seat does anyone think that T speak no. up if you think that they would do that i i would be honest 
No, not okay. with Mitch McConnell. I, so then I've I don't want to hear angry about letters to him so, before. So, so then I've essentially angry letters to him. What my are saying is because then they're just risking losing the Senate in two years and, and not getting any say in it. Well, what do you fold, think? I do, do you Happy trust them? I mean, I think about how today. like if I was pain. in their position, I would. I I would negotiate to get to get the candidate that I would you know. Uh, the last year's name you have more faith than I do. Well, it's just strategy, right? Like if they could lose the Senate, if they still have the Senate, they could lose it in a couple of years and then they wouldn't get any say. So it seems smarter. But what else are they going to do? Wait four years? How long do you think they held up Merrick Garland's seat? That's the same calculus was being at play there. You think just because it's closer to the election or it's it's now it's two years as opposed to one year, that calculus is different? And this is all inside the rules, the, right? Yeah, but after two years, they're not like they're not going to get any more power after two years. They're not going to get the presidency after two years, right? I understand that, but but why would the calculus be different if if you're saying they might face electoral consequences? I, I guess they, in 2016 they, they did were it in 2016 they would win the election. They didn't face consequences, and you think now they're going to be more after having not faced the consequences in the first go around. They're going to be more careful the second go around and more deferential to President Biden's Supreme Court pick. Well, Is that what you're suggesting? It's Even also if they funny don't face too consequences, because it's... it doesn't seem like a good strategy. Well, it's me. almost like they aren't able to face consequences specifically because they do everything in the shadows. They take advantage of every possible loophole, sometimes probably straight up violating the rules, but it's really hard when there's so many laws on the books. But they do everything they can to keep it out of the public eye because as it turns out, when you have the public eye on really bad and obvious corruption, that tends to hurt your electoral chances, which... No doubt. That is exactly what the Republican Party engages in. Widespread, disgusting corruption that is actively killing this country. So yeah, um, I have nothing but disdain for the way that they go for it. And, and I would love it if the, de if the Democrats would finally stop playing nice and pack the shit out of that court so that for once, in a li for, for, so we don't have to look forward to 40 years of absolutely regressive fantasy land so-called originalism, which is hilarious the idea that there could even be something called originalism when by definition we have mama excuse did me? you forget your quotes originalism i had one yeah i had this one yeah sorry i have my what? i have to press sorry. a button with the other hand yeah it's i, I mean, literally did this i know it's like okay. and it's hard to see but it's okay no it's all right yeah I mean, do you think it's bad that the that like with the origin, what, the idea would, of originalism is, is what would absurd. Supreme Court look like that isn't partisan and politicized. No, no, no. Wait, you can't have like... you can't have a non you can't have a truly nonpartisan court. It's of course it's absurd. The idea that nobody has I mean, any political you can idea. Try. No, well, no, it is, you, you can try. I, I, yes, I you can try. Well, do you think like, do you think the Republicans have tried at all have when they've put but on? That's been my only complaint about Amy Coney Barrett because I I really do admire a lot about her but that has been my only complaint about her what's that and and one of and one of the the democratic senators i can't remember his name durham i believe is the person that brought it up was that we've Big gotten durham. to the yep. point in this country he was the one that brought up the fact that we've gotten to the point in this country and i i do not blame republicans or democrats alone on this matter but we've gotten to the point in this country that we have justices that can sit in front of the Senate and they can't even give their own opinions about things. Well, that's they, understandable, she, right? She, I have a little bit more respect I for the disagree. court. I, 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 you, you can't I would, ask them to I opine would, on hypothetical I, cases. They don't have briefings from not, the court below. I don't, I don't blame mm, Amy Coney Barrett for not asking, like answering questions. How would you rule if the president tried to postpone the election? How could she possibly but answer that? But, but no, 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 but not about that, but okay. about just maybe about, her own personal she should be able to have a personal identity though maybe and but you sure. can't in today's world and she very smartly did not answer particular questions in a certain way because she would have been ravaged in the media but in our political climate you can't be you can't have an identity anymore so it it was kind of sad, you know. It well, she was, wants to de it, was... it because she has to rule. She has to like govern over cases, and even the appearance of bias is extremely bad. So you you see, oftentimes judges and justices shine but away it's from. Also really phony, though. I don't as think. Human pointing out there is obviously she is obviously going to have a a, a personal perspective, a skew of some. Uh, in, in she, she should she hide it. Well, no, no. I, I think it's. A, I think there's a split down the middle that we can do here, which is like I don't. I don't buy into the idea that you can't have any sort of opinions in in I'll public or right anything. Um, I, I don't buy that at all. I, I think people do, and and I think in fact Amy Coney Barrett's are pretty clear. Um, but um, 
this is a this is a Supreme Court seat. We don't hold um we don't hold, you know, Supreme Court candidates to the, the same standards that we would just your everyday person on the street. We hold them to a higher standard. Um but like again, there's there's a there's a there's another factor that complicates this, which is that um we have a political process that leads to that to that justice being put forward in the first place. And let's be real, we all know, every single person, any honest person on this panel knows that there are better options than Amy Coney Barrett justices who are not nearly as biased, who have not ruled as clearly in one-to-one -one support with the Republican Party's platform that could have been chosen, but they weren't. And the reason why is because there's an not attempt to all. pack the court. Yeah, so. But that's not packing the court. Oh, I'm, oh come okay. on. Don't, don't, you can't be honest. You can't honestly be doing this. We know Donald Trump. Donald Trump literally admits he's going to do it. He says this at his rallies. Yeah, we're going to put another Republican on there. We don't have to, we're going to, you know, I'm not going to talk about Roe v. Wade. Maybe it'll be gone. Who knows? We'll see. We know. Come on. I mean, Donald Trump says a lot of crazy things, especially when he's- I agree. I agree. He does say a lot of crazy things. I don't things. buy that. Riley, we can't hear you. Have you been talking? Riley. Riley? Oh, Thank you for the oh, sub. Yeah. Oh damn! Thank you for yeah, the sub, right, Ico. Right, Rules. Right, deeply yeah, appreciate yeah. you. Thanks Have you so been much. talking to us? Uh, Ico, not that much actually. Okay, so I bet much I love to you. Thank okay. you so much. Well, I just need to make sure. Is this the argument that we can't take anything that Trump says seriously because, like, he says quote unquote a lot of crazy shit? Like, is that actually the argument that you're making? Well, right the now? argument is that just because Trump is is saying I, I'm going to put a shill on, <laughs> on the Supreme Court doesn't mean you can actually assume. Hey, He's literally hey, the president of the United States telling people yeah. at a political rally why they should vote for him. How wait, can, like if, yeah, how can you exactly. not take that seriously? Are you but, serious but that wait. we can't take that seriously? That that is somehow excusable from because, being taken seriously. He's also because, the guy. Because, wait, he's also the guy who put the, who, who picks Amy Coney Barrett. What do you mean? Of course we can take him seriously wait, when he I'm says sorry, what. This is, yeah, I'm sorry. This is also the guy who thinks that uh, disavowing and not disavowing white supremacy are the same thing. I'm sorry. You know, and, and so I completely understand your position. <laughs> I, I completely, I, I can see that. True, I go. In your head. I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, sh I shouldn't have been surprised. I hope we'd focus on the federal judiciary. But the last thing, do you have a response to? I mean, the Trump has it's court packing by another name. You know, the the same kind of strategy. What do you mean? The, the, How is it court packing? Mitch, so Mitch McConnell. Court packing and the, is when you add more people to the court to that. Okay, so court. That's one method of court yeah, packing. Yeah, yes, yes. Another There's interpretation. The definition. Another, the new definition another, that well, can't, people came up on. with. Too. Another uh, another interpretation of court packing. Slow down, is, Pisco. I know you're getting excited over there. Okay, do you have something substantially to say, or do you want you just? You heard what I said. No, he's that just was asking you to, substantial. He's just got to go to the mountains, Pisco. Okay, oh, you got to go to the mountains. Okay, so CTV. Another, so I think, flavor of court packing would be something hey, like welcome never to the giving fold, reformed dozens and Happy dozens to have and you dozens here. of federal judges Much even love. hearings Thanks for and being here. waiting until the presidency Republican to just jam them all in. That is court packing by another name. And I, I it's, call it's that, not done I by... I would not call that court packing. Okay, okay. so you, then you have an appreciation. I you think have, you're, just, you're just you trying to confuse okay, people you, by reusing... No, 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 no. You have an attachment? You have an attachment to... Pisco. You have an attachment to formalism? Pisco. Wait, wait, wait. Pisco. I, let me, can I respond Hold on. No, you listen. You ask the man a question, you have to let him answer. That's how respect works, son. No, he just said that I'm confusing and misdirecting. You didn't let him answer because you started getting a little... I heard his response. His response was... His response was this. He, he really does care about the formalism. This is really unwarranted here. Holy shit. He, he really does care about the formalism of passing a congressional yeah, statute. Yeah, absolutely, with, Ico. By I'm going to be streaming for a little bit after this. I always do a bit of a Q&A. So if you want to come on That's after, really important it'll be over in like 45 minutes, I think. Of court packing. But really, all we're talking about here is oh, yeah. shifting the balance. It's a zero-sum game, right? It doesn't matter if there's a hundred. So yeah, Ico, if you want to come on after, I'd love to talk about the, the only thing that matters I don't accept is that, that trying, is a, a party trying to get their favorite judges on the court is court packing. That's just what it's we a can different method. All parties do all the time. Wait, so the, the 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 variable that we care about is the division, right? The quote unquote part. If you want to think about it in these terms, the partisan division yep. of courts. That's the I think variable. It's over in like thirty to forty five. Whether or not it's not the variable not we care sure. about. You, so you, you can care ask about Dylan. The number of Dylan has the for sure end time. Yeah. Wait, so I don't the whole issue for you is not whether or not partisan people are. I think it's about are, forty-five are, minutes. Uh, I'm, we're talking about like the definition of this term, right? The definition no, no. of court packing. Well, why? Yeah, why yeah. is court like, packing bad? Uh, the court packing is bad. We're talking about court packing is an adding more people to the Supreme Court. But why is, is that bad? More people, is I, just to add. Is adding people bad, like by itself? Right. What, uh, is nine really that much better than eleven? 
because well, once it, you violate that norm, you've essentially started a very like. No, uh, th there's a reason why it's bad, right? Very quickly, there's a reason but... why it's bad. Why is the, why yeah, is it hell bad? Yeah, Ico, it's you bad got plenty of partisan time. Partisan reasons, Take right? your time. That's what we're worried about. Yeah. Correct. It, it's bad no? because it starts a conflict, and it's not that. Uh, what kind of conflict? You're literally well, kind of avoiding like the reason why. The other side, court, the other side can pack court. Okay, so it's partisan, correct? Banshee banter. We're caring about his division of of power. It's partisan. Banshee fuck. That's why we don't yeah, want okay. So that is so that's why we're worried about it. Is the so it's not really the number of justices that we're worried about. It's Damn, really the today's division be a busy day. of partisan you all affiliations get in some between primo justices, content correct, today. No? Sure, yeah. Okay. So then oh it's God. this so that's the animating evil behind the court packing evilness. Then that's the same animating evil behind the kind of nefarious non hearings that the Republicans were doing for years. Yes, perhaps, but it's not court packing. So, it doesn't change the well, okay, perhaps. It's, a, it's a simple yes or no. No, it doesn't. Wait, it, wait. What do you mean, though? Okay. It's literally it's just... like we have McConnell admitting to not to not uh, letting justices being able to be seen during the the the, the sure, or during the Obama court presidency. Packing. Hold on a second. That's right. literally preventing court packing. That is, that is specifically disallowing I, Democrats. I, I, from your there. terms, fine. It's not court packing. Let me explain but... it to you, okay? Let me explain it to you. I've been quiet. Oh, you explained it to us. Yeah, someone who isn't in law school, literally explaining to two uh, law yeah, students what this is. Yeah, yeah okay, right. totally. Well, let me explain it to you, right? So Doesn't here's mean he can't have an opinion. Court packing well, yeah, is when you I take mean, a walk in the woods with some something. justices. Yeah, yeah, for real. Yeah, no, when he wants to explain so, something, then I want to hear the credentials. Yeah, if he wants to explain something, he'll just, you know, start over-talking yes. people and being disrespectful. And he'll CTV. Just, you know, kinds of things, because that's what y'all do, right? That's what he's expected to do. I want to hear your opinion. opinion. I'm going to interrupt the yes, totally. Fuck up and listen. Okay, 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 okay. So everybody... And we all need to go for a walk okay. in the... A walk Riley, in the Riley. I'm telling you. Sorry. Riley, when I, when I start talking, everybody shuts down. <laughs> I want that to be. Uh, He's got to be high. Going forward, I'm going to be less kind about that. Going forward, everybody. When I start talking, everybody needs to shut down. Okay. CTV. I agree by and please large. Please, but it was funny. What you were going to say. So here's the point, right? We've had nine justices for a long time. The politicians care about what the affiliations are that they have with these people. We, the people, should not care about that. The things that we should care about is how the Constitution is being what? understood, right? So it's not political, right? It's literally about somebody qualified to do the job. Now, as soon as you decide to break precedent and start uh, adding more and then taking them away, right? That's, that's what we're talking about. Whenever you start adding the number of justices, that's called packing the court, right? Now, what Mitch McConnell He's going to fall asleep during the stream, right, I swear to no God. There was rule broken, right? There wasn't anything shady, right? Maybe it could have been shady, but the reality is, though, is that it was allowed, right? So the re the His blood pressure must be so This is allowed. That, listen, how they were able to hold open all of those seats, right? And then waited for a Republican to get in office so then those seats could be filled. That's just good chess. So, checkmate. This Liz. is yeah, just this good is, chess. This is, yeah, this Wait. is just good chess. Yeah, exactly. Checkmate. Hey! Thank you so much, Coco Barracuda. Okay, just, so then you're I, good I, with I, it. I, I, yeah, yeah, cool, chill. Glad you're glad you're on board with us, CTV. Thank you I didn't so know much, that you were Coco switching Barracuda. sides so, so quickly. You're really amazing. glad that you not came over to us. Sides. I'm only pointing out to you that's the game. Yeah, that's right? the game. Wait, so the court game. packing is the game. Yeah, yeah, court exactly. packing right. is the game. Right. It's also legal. Yeah, it's now allowed. Not, it's literally there's allowed. There's no reason to pack the courts because now you right, now you're arguing against your additional point. The reason why is you didn't have the voices necessary in the House and the Senate to be able to get one. And now you don't have the voices to stop our court packing. Yeah, yeah, now we can do it. Yeah, checkmate. But, but, checkmate. You, right, so what would, what do you expect to happen after you do that? Though. No, I, think I don't it's, know. I think it's, oh, yeah, no, I well, don't know. you don't, don't know, know why you're so sure that it's a good idea. Wait, hold on a second. Oh, I think it's the best idea that we have. That's I just want to hear your whining well, about you breaking precedent. At all. Listen, I just don't want to hear it's whining about idea. precedent no, no, and institutions. No, no. Well, okay, that's what I don't want to hear. No, I want to hear you explain why you think it's a good idea to do this. Why do I think it's a partisan matter or as an institutional yeah. matter? What do you think? What are you? How are you tailoring your question? Whatever you're saying, you're saying you don't okay. know what will happen if you do this. You, so you, you think I think a calculation needs to be strange. made. Okay. So mm -hmm. how much do you? How much value do I put on having good precedent? I don't know. It's really important for me to have. I, I think for the country that we have a capacious view of the interstate commerce clause. I think it's really important for our country that we maintain stare decisis and we maintain court decisions such as Casey versus Planned Parenthood and Roe v. Wade. I think it's really good. I don't know how much value I'd put on that. Probably a lot. 
And in which case, you know, you do the cost benefit analysis, uh, maybe don't add too much. Cause maybe that'll, I don't know. There's some equilibrium, some number that maximizes value for me. And I'm sure that's, you know, two or what, what or, are you, what are you measuring the cost of though? Like if you don't, if you don't even know the, what's the, going to the happen, potential kind of threat of, of the other ratchet, right? That's the threat, which yeah. I acknowledge exists, but that threat exists now that threat exists. It's, it still exists. It's been existing. Do you, don't you think that threat is a bigger a threat don't once, you worry. once you you've taken the initial, like, done the initial course? They already hold I've the already course. Done that. Yeah, that's yeah. literally already happened. No, They're they haven't. About Yes, they do. What do you mean oh they don't? Are you fucking serious? There's still They're nine over... people on the court. No, no, no. We're talking about the entirety of the court. Today. Federal judiciary. So, so the federal judiciary is more than Supreme Court. Supreme Court will, sees what? 80 cases a year, if that. They get thousands of cert petitions every year. And the, the courts of appeals make tons of law and appellate law. The district courts make tons of trial court and substantive rulings on the merits. And so this myopic view of the federal courts as the Supreme Court is blasphemous. The, the, the Supreme Court will only see often see cases if there's a circuit split. So, so please, there, there are issues of constitutional law that we've known about for a century that haven't been resolved by the Supreme Court. So keep that in mind. It's the federal judiciary as a whole that we're worried about. And, and you think that what's been done already is all, has already escalated this conflict to the point where... Uh, Absolutely. Absolutely. Are you yeah, serious? Unequivocally. Like almost well, objectively. I'll ask you, if that's true, what do you think... So I guess in that case, you, you want to be looking at how do, we, how do you resolve this conflict? Because that's by, not what the Republicans it's, it's are going to do. It's not by think being the bigger court. person. It's not by being the bigger person. And first of all, well, the, what is it then? What do you? I can tell you why. Like, I can tell okay. how you do it. The way that we do this is by first, we pack the shit out of the courts so that we have an actual equal system where that we undo the damage that was done by the Republicans, and then we anybody anybody who opposes this kind of shit happening happening again should oppose the Republican Party. The Republican Party should not be electorally viable in this country at all as a sitting president donald trump is like and this is just this is no, just talking is, about donald trump no 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 no, happen, no. Right? this is important because i think it actually i think we might actually be getting to that juncture but the republicans should not be made politically viable in this country we should show them for what they've done That's that they terrible. put they put no they shouldn't be the republicans should no longer be a party in this but country. they are and they and they will and be. yes and guess what and then we should fight you know, them using them any political viable. outcome that we possibly okay, can but it's not because as it stands so you're not, right you're now you're not talking about what no, you want to happen you're not talking about what is the actual consequence you actually we, you actually asked you don't know what the consequence wait you don't know what the consequences will be you don't know i, I mean, can I'm tell sure you what the consequences I are i don't i can tell you what the consequences have been for myself that because uncertainty is I, enough for me to say right, i think they're gonna, gonna be, be good you, you yeah, think they're okay, not gonna okay. be good i think yeah, they're gonna okay. be good okay, what, what, so what generally if you don't know what the consequences of something are gonna be you don't do it thanks for the follow really republicans are really appreciate it by the way riley doing it right now Let's make a radical change to the structure of the government. We don't How know radical what the is it? Yeah, be, yeah. But they you know be good. Know, so wait, 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 wait. Listen, I've been trying to get in here for a while. You know what okay. is a radical change to the government? Stepping in and making it impossible for us to refill the empty seats that previously existed. That's a radical change to the way that our country works. So radical, it's even more than anything we're even talking about at this very moment. That's an unbelievably radical change. It's and, really not. Uh, and, and, no, actually, actually, actually it really, really is. is. It really, really is. It's not radical. And here's the other thing. The other thing is is that I, I can tell you, I know what's going to happen going forward. Because um, unlike some people who like like will bury their heads in the sand and say, oh, maybe they won't do this. We're going to lose Roe v. Wade, which is going to hurt a lot of women. Two, I'm probably going to lose the right to marry my wife. Because um, as it turns out right now, there are a lot of people on the Republican stacked court who, who don't, who have a, a vested interest. And in fact, it's the Republican Party's platform right now weird how that works out um that they don't want they want to uphold traditional marriage which means i won't be able to get married to my wife so that's the future that i'm looking at so when i say that i want the republican party to become a, a, a political anathema in this country i would love it if every american looked back in history on the republican party as one of the most embarrassing failures in the history of democ democratic society which they are ob almost objectively Hey, How do you know you're I not making the Republican moment. Party more I'll powerful by moment. packing the court? I mean, that would it would be a great political talking point for them, right? Okay, yes, we're going, we're going to give them more power by by taking away power from them. Yes, two hundred one that one thousand IQ take, amazing. They're just going to. I mean, if the Democrats do that, oh, the Republicans are just going to be like they that's conjecture. The Constitution, they They're literally the doing that right now. They will the invent country. any reason to rile up their supporters. Yep. It's a zero sum game. Like, you're yeah. gonna, they'll have a much better case, a much well, more case. Well, the wait, they're already it's doing it anyway. They don't even need a case. They don't give a shit. They're doing it. They yeah, have, they here's the thing, wait, 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 over the last like 15 years, holy fuck. yeah, over the last 15 years, more. Democrats have played nice 
and Republicans have played vicious pure politics. Well, guess what? This is the act. This is the funny thing. You keep asking us, oh, what will happen? You should be asking your your right wing comrades what the fuck is actually going to be happening to them because this is the moment where people are starting to realize that they've been duped for 15 years while the Democrats played nice and played by the rules. The Republicans found the worst possible ways to interpret the law to give themselves personal power. And now the pendulum is swinging back. And that's, and it's funny that you say, oh, well, what will happen? Won't it give Republicans more power? No, this is removing their power. We're trying to do to, to get them out of a position where not only do they win by completely ignoring like the, the, the popular vote, but right now, Donald Trump and his advisors have talked about how they hope to use the Supreme Court to win the election without winning the per popular vote, without winning the electoral college. So, say nothing of Obergefell, yeah. say nothing of Roe v. Wade, say nothing of the Affordable Care Act and the case go pending right now. The Republican Party, I, I wish, if I could have my wish, like, like, if like, I could have my wish, I know I know you like, want to oh, jump in with your whatever milk toast events you have. Really you're nasty you're thing. burying we'll your head in the sand, and whatever. And retaliate because we're amazing. Like, it's, you just, no, no, no. It's because it's because right now, wait, imagine this. Imagine if, if the Republican Party took, took power legally using the Constitution somehow, and then they installed a king. And then everybody said, what the absolute fuck? We need to do something. We need to depose this king. And you go, depose the king? Oh, yeah, you no. Would be, you would be, you guys would be the total plausible deniability for this administration. You would take orders. You would be the docile forces for this oppressive state control. Pisco, of Pisco. Not, to not to interrupt. Pisco, not to interrupt. There's a great term Who's here. You and There's a great doing? term that the left loves to use for this. And um, okay. it's called bootlicking. And it's what okay. you're doing right now. <laughs> okay. 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 Are you okay. suggesting okay. that I love the Republicans okay. Okay. or something? Okay. Okay. Yeah, okay. you do. Okay. Clearly. Okay. 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 I want to give CTV and Madman uh, a period to speak since they haven't gotten to speak in a little bit. Okay. I'm going to start yeah. with CTV and Madman. Let's do right it. <clears throat> All right. Are you um, not entertained? Dab. Free dab. Man. Dab. I hate it whenever it's like that. Okay, dab. so. <laughs> let her go first, please. Just... Yeah, let Madman go first. Um, I think those, those bars that, kicking in. The Zanny's kicking in. Unfortunately, um, Demon Mama has been listening to perhaps to some of the um loudest voices on the republican side and not what the general population actually feels um unfortunately i'm not the best representation i think of what the general population feels because i i am like a, a person who likes traditional marriage and and all that stuff so i'm i'm not a good representation of that but however <laughs> The general population is a huge umbrella of people that don't want to take people's rights away or any of that. In fact, the idea of conservative values is not to have the government involved in peace, people's personal preferences. And as time went on, um, the Republican Party, I think, changed. Um I think when social tensions started rising, this is storytelling hour. Um, we might have seen more extremists, and that was it's part okay, of worry, like the louder voices you. that you heard. And like, I think everyone is 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 guilty of of that. Is like only listening to the the few loud voices and not actually like listening to what. The majority of people actually think but it's this is not an argument i mean you're making appeals to some platitude about how the history of conservatism and about I'm you know talking, the appeal I'm to the majority to I i'm talking to i'm i mean actually, i can like, respond what's the argument yeah, yeah i can i can respond yeah, not, you're not making an not, argument not, you're making it's, this it's, kind of vague no, platitude it's, it's um not, that it's, just it's goes not, to it wasn't wait wait, wait, wait you're gonna let me respond or not are you gonna let me respond or not wait no 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 i i'm not i i'm trying to defend myself and then i want her to to I want to, I want to, I want to defend myself. And then I want, and then I want demon mama to respond. It, sure. it wasn't meant to be an argument D Dylan Burns asked me to jump in. So I just wanted to put my hand out to demon mama. That sure. was kind of, kind of shitting on some people you're, on my side about you're actually insulting her. that 
You're insulting didn't her. Want, didn't want her wife to get married. And I don't think that people are like that in, in general over here. So I just wanted to right. send out a little so, olive branch over on that side. That was all. So now I'd like her to respond if that's cool. Um, Yeah, I, I wish that I could believe you on that, but I think you're dead wrong. Um, and I think every single metric that we can possibly draw from um, shows that. Uh, what you are um, motioning at is uh, fantasy. And it's this sort of idea that, oh, yeah, when you're sitting in front of, a, a, you know, when you're sitting in front of a gay queer woman, you'll say these sort of things. But in the truth, in truth, the GOP's platform right now is against is for traditional marriage. They are the ones who make the calls for the party. The party itself is. Donald Trump has never shown any love to the LGBT community, except for that time when he held up that dingy flag and went, I love my gays. I sure do love him. But no, what he's done is he's banned trans people from the military. He's pushed a memo. His government pushed a memo out that literally targeted trans people. Here's how you can spot a trans person, which is horrifically dangerous for a whole number of reasons. So yeah, sorry, bullshit. I'm going to call that a, a, a complete fantasy. And I think it's not me who's been listening to the loudest voice voices but perhaps it's your desire to present your party as less morally reprehensible as it is than it actually is because it is morally reprehensible and also politically reprehensible the republican party is one of the most viciously bad institutions i can even think of in the modern day like barring like literal terrorist groups on it's like some war-torn country i can't think of many political parties that are more vicious um and and anti-democratic and anti-personal uh personal freedom than the Republican Party. Are you kidding me? This is the party that backs dumping tons and tons of money into um, into into bigger police forces. You sure don't care about small government when it comes time to give it to the military or the police, when it comes time to signal about how you want to um, bring law and order, how you, uh, you know, Donald Trump, the leader of the party, the representative y'all are voting for, are gonna uh, is going to go, oh yeah, you know, the federal marshals, they went in, they didn't want to arrest him. They just gunned him down. They just, 15 minutes and it was over. Yeah, sorry. I don't buy any of the fucking fake bullshit about how this is a, uh, you know, a nice party and there's lots of nice people. No, they're not libertarians. At least Trump isn't. He's a no, they're definitely not executive power. That you're, calling, that you're calling a Canadian anarchist, a Republican <laughs> bootlicker. Just for I didn't call you that. It, I, I know. I, 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 went, I went off the handle. I, I'm sorry. And I, the fact that she's calling me that uh, just for suggesting that uh, packing the Supreme Court might be uh too extreme a, a measure that might cause more harm than good especially if you can't explain to me what you think what you expect yeah. oh i mean just just, just, just to be clear just to defend myself just a little bit, little bit. that shows just, me just that you're myself. not really thinking very clearly no no no, no, no. listen this, I, I, I understand where you're going I would like to hear the end of last username statement sure. because he'd get 80 percent into his statement and then it'd be cut off i'd like to hear the end of it I'm just saying that the fact that you're that's your response to me making a perfectly reasonable suggestion uh, shows that you you don't seem to be thinking very clearly about that and that your that your opinions are coming from I don't know like, like that you that uh, you're just pissed off at the Republican Party and that's what this is about for you not about thinking about the consequences of of the decision of the actions you're going to take and whether they're going to have a good effect. Um, well, that's just a, yeah, just okay. to clarify, just to clarify what, what was said there. No, uh, the reason that I call you a, a Republican bootlicker, which I do think oh, you're a Republican Jesus. bootlicker. The reason why I call you a Republican bootlicker is not just because of your opinion on this. It's because your opinions just seem to always fall in favor of the Republican Party. Oh, Anybody can call not. themselves whatever. Definitely I could not. call myself the an anarcho-martian -mar if I wanted to. You can call yourself whatever the hell you want. I mean, fuck, the Tea Party called well, themselves Trump libertarian, which is an insult. Those, Excuse those me, critically thinking veteran, I know. What are the opinions? that I have CTV, right? CTV, that CTV, are not consistent with calling myself an anarchist. I, now why don't we go back I think and some of your views team. are. Who is yeah, like what? Yeah, like what? CTV and Hold CTV. on. Okay, okay, okay. We're shutting it down. We're shutting it down. CTV. And when that happens, I do my best to stop them and pass it over to you. 80% of the time, it's me trying to pass it over to you. And you know that. Well, I get it, man. And then, like, I get it's adequate, complete thought. Like, I have the thought, and I'm sitting here holding on to it for 10 fucking minutes. Listening. I know. Well, and I passed it and to you earlier, and then you told me to pass it to Madman. So true. I passed it to Madman. No, so now it's, it's true. It's, it's all right true, right? right? But then who's mean. over here? And then they want to cover, like, all they want to, you know, call names. And then now we're talking about that. We're not even talking about the issue. I will at definitely hand. call so names. That's true. I will. Problem when it comes to staying on topic. Well, right. I will say I will say that I name thought... calling usually is not the the best thing for productive dialogue. But I probably will not ne necessitate like tell people, well, everybody, no name calling, and we got to be nice. 
Uh, if some, but if someone's called a name, it's like, what am I gonna do? You gotta take it. We can't, we can't talk about you being called a name. We kind of have to take a divert. It is, it does divert the conversation. But I do want people to be able to defend themselves. So I do want to get back on topic. You do have a point there, but I do want them to finish this engagement, uh, and and hopefully I can bring the conversation back around. Okay. So Demon Mama and uh, last username. Who's the last one I was talking? I I legitimately forgot. I would like to say something about last username. That's okay. And then I, I know Riley's waiting as well. Yeah, okay. I decided like if we if we're caring a lot about like making sure that we're being very formal and everything, I have responses for Madman CTV and last username. I'll wait until you give me that platform. Okay, for that. okay. It's it's there's also a problem of your camera keeps freezing and it's kind of hard to see if you're raising your hand or not. Yeah. Uh, oh, mine does. Yes, yeah, yes. a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's not a problem. I don't know. I'm I'm not getting that problem on my end. I don't know. Okay. Um, I'm going to um, uh, um Demon Mama, did you were you finishing a statement? I, I was in the middle okay. when CTV interrupted okay. me. Yeah. Okay, Demon um, Mama, you can finish that. Listen, uh, uh, last username. Um, yeah, uh, just I, I don't think that you're not uh, that you don't have some anarchist principles. I just think that um, sometimes you grant a lot, a lot of credibility to these right wing types um, who really don't stand for any of your values. And I guess, I guess, listen, like, we're, we're, listen, listen. Like, I mean, for example, like um, granting a lot of credence to the court to the uh, court tampering when Republicans do it, being really, really um, partial yeah, to Amy Coney Barrett, which I you've done in this conversation. I just it wasn't severe enough to justify the Yeah, I mean, I, you, you, can, you can come up with all kinds of ways to wiggle out of it. The point of, listen, I, it was, I'm just no, making my statement. I'm, I'm just wiggling. making my statement, you know. I mean, listen, I just think that at the end of the day, if if you really are an anarchist, and by the way, I mean, I don't know. I, I don't really buy the whole ANCAPs or anarchist thing. But listen, if you're really an anarchist, I think you should look very hard at the, the structure of the Republican Party uh, before you do as much apologetics as you do on every stream for the Republican Party. Because they I, do, I do zero apologetics for the Republican Party. Uh, yeah, maybe. Topic we're right, talking maybe. About, it's kind of hard to avoid talking about the Republican Party. Like, Elio, can I, I, I apologize for implying that you're um beholden to trump or those parties I, all i want to say is this so we've sort of discussed and established that the animated evil behind so-called court packing is i got y'all you know We're i got worried about you know I got one party backs. putting forth all their judges and somehow tainting well, i don't know what you mean by the That's... animated evil I, i'm saying you could i could potentially imagine uh, uh a scenario where the supreme court gets expanded in a way that doesn't escalate tensions between the party if that's what correct you first so the mere fact that you give that as a possibility says that we're not really worried about the number of seats what we're worried about is the partisan yes. nature of it correct and that's what we're really partisan worried about. the court is partisan um, right you, now. You, you acknowledge that you know 11 seats and nine seats what's the difference so yeah, yeah the think, issue uh, is that one party clearly correct. doesn't want to do that okay. and one party does that's the animated evil behind the court packing in the failure to give hearings of the republican side of norm breaking it was also clearly have, a partisan thing that was clearly that a partisan was thing, and we probably not that great. What, like I'm not. What does it? Wait, was, but what does it matter whether whether it's made by a statute, whether we call it court packing, if it's effectively doing the same thing and affecting the balance you. of power? I, I don't think it's that's the same, doing thing, the same thing, right? How is I, it I not? I really don't think it is. I think this packing the Supreme Court seems like a far more severe move. Why does it seem more? Attack. Why does it seem it, more it, severe? You, you're saying it seems more severe. Why? So you don't think it's more severe? I think it's the same thing, right? If you're affecting the balance, because the thing, of, what they did is something they could have accomplished anyway. Even not something you, could have accomplished. It's in the rules. You could like do it. could have had hearings for those those uh, nominees, and you can pass the law. Wait, wait, no, but but okay, but and that I, would have been completely. I, I said to, to you that would be different, and I explained to you it why would be that different. would be different. And, but the difference and, doesn't doesn't seem to amount to something as severe. why not? You're saying it's not as severe. Why? You're just why? Kind of arguing, you're granting. Just arguing from it's your conclusory. Feelings, it's conclusory because uh, it, it seems affects to me that the balance in the same the way. Supreme, first of all, the Supreme Court. I was Court right. Was more I was than right. What did I tell um, you? And you're talking about something. Yeah, that's, wait, 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 we have Merrick Garland. That's an example of who's never given a hearing. So it affects the Supreme what Court. What did I say? And also the judiciary. We know why. So uh, we any know distinguishing why factor, I'm, I'm begging right. you to give it something that distinguishes it. On but again, we all know why. They have the authority to turn down Merrick Garland if they want. An authority, and the Congress has an authority to pass a court packing law. It's not a distinguishing factor. Sure, but okay. So what so is it? Out, and what's the beer? It, it's clear that oh, there needs to be nervous. some sort of norm that that says CTV how many is literally be on the fucking court. tripping balls. Because if there right isn't, now. then uh, I mean, then why tripping why should there be a norm, balls a stronger right norm right now? Look at his eyeballs. There's no, there's no other thing I've that never says seen how more big glazed over eyes in my entire life. It seems like there needs to be some 
you know, some sort of policy or something that, that says that. Number nine. And okay. number why there has been number for nine. like, I don't know, a century or something, not almost a century. The norm is also uh, to give there's, hearings. There's judges. nine people on the court, right? The norm is also to give hearings for judges. I think he's it's drunk. also to give probably. hearings. So I don't understand he, he why hold one up norm that affects the same animated evil making. should be stronger or less strong than Dude the other. Dude is gone. Other. Why? Why is it that you care more about the number of seats because I don't see the difference never between seen giving a, a hearing and rejecting a candidate or not giving or just That's not giving not a hearing in the first right. place so, so, as, as a so severe enough thing. You're, you're talking about the distinction between giving a hearing and then rejecting and give, and not giving a hearing. I'm not talking about the distinguishing between those two things. I'm giving the, the I'm trying to distinguish between not giving a hearing and adding seats. So those are the two different things that we're analyzing. One is spiritual. You want to analyze the difference between giving a hearing and rejecting nah, no need to call versus him out for it. it's funny not giving a hearing. I want to give more the funny to just let him do it. Not giving a hearing and adding more seats. That's the difference I'm looking for. Yeah. Well, no, There's that's the difference. The difference that you're talking about is risky. Rim, the, like how bad is it? A violation of norms to not give a hearing instead of giving a hearing and then saying no to all the candidates versus what, what is that how bad matter? is it to, to add seats to the court, right? That's what, what we're yeah. comparing. No, no. The, the dip, why is it? Why is not giving a hearing better? Affecting What's bad the about not giving power? a hearing because we 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 agree, as I understand, that giving Blood. a hearing and then just voting voting to. I told you this. I told you all this panel was going to be good, norms. didn't I? You agree on that? Did I not? Are you not it entertained? Would, it will depend. I can't give you as a as a as a batter. What if not you generally all, speaking? So if if it's all pro forma, I, I, you'd have to give me the specifics. But I don't know why that comparison is necessary when what we're actually comparing is the actual. I thing think you just ate another standing. That's, what, well, that, that's, nah. what, that's the alternative. That's what you're saying they should have done instead of not. No, giving. they should have given a fair hearing, right? Yeah, Lots of people do. A fair hearing and, 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 no. and, and ruled on the merits and not just giving a pro forma hearing. I should, I'll give yeah, a real well, hearing. I mean, I mean, and presumably they could have come up with some reason that these these uh, justice yeah, it not has to be a good justice. hearing. Yeah, it has to be a good and convincing hearing because otherwise, yeah, then there would be a lot more compelling reason for people to be able to vote them out if they're not actually being honest. Like, that's well, the whole point of having a hearing. Like, yeah, well, they could have invented some arbitrary know, but a lot reason. more reason. Well, let's see, what do you think of a hearing that would have been like, all right, Elena Kagan, you're uh, two, you're not six foot, so we're going to reject you. He's that would back be to a reality. Oh, the okay, ghost gravity. So what I'm talking about is to give like a hearing, like a real hearing. Right. Yeah. Not, not um, some pro. Not let me tell you what's going on right now. Pro Last forma. username is running hearing. down the clock. Okay? The comparison is between. He knows first he's. All, that he knows he's got. Matter. He's running the down the clock. Comparison matters is between the. He's playing keep all away right now. That it was norm breaking not to have hearings, so we don't have to worry about whether it would be norm breaking to have just a, a bad hearing. I so think. I think Zadie fell that, asleep. Actually, that's important because that tells you how severe the breaking of norms Why? is, right? Because Why? Why? that would be. It's that's the difference good, between the that's thing that broke the norms and something that wouldn't break the norms that would have happened otherwise. That's how severe, that's the severity, right? How do so you measure the gap between, eh, it's okay. so so somehow because just having- well, Regardless of how we measure the gap, that's the gap we're talking about. It, it's not, it's, it's, it, I have to what tell you- What is it? I don't understand. That, he, he lost the, it already. The answer though. is it yeah. doesn't. There is no distinguishing. The, the, the How big the norm break is, is the question. And all you've said is it feels yeah bigger to have a norm break of the Supreme Court adding seats as opposed to the norm <laughs> break of not even having hearings feelings. for judges. We Why? Don't. Yes, be well, because the difference is you would have ended up with the same judges potentially. I mean, but, there's no reason you wouldn't what? have if they Why? didn't like those judges. The only consequence for them would have been that it would have hey, been more, you know, more high profile. They would have had to- uh, Again, have, you know, what, what, the, the entire point of politics. Wait, That's wait, the whole wait. point of accountability. That's I mean, the entire point of this. If I might offer, uh, not if entirely, I might offer, no, because if I might offer, listen, I know calling names isn't always frowned is like frowned upon and stuff like that. But let's be real. What what your questioning has revealed is exactly what I said. The reason why he feels like it's a bigger deal, we all know, is because he has a slant in that political direction. Okay. okay. You know, let's well, just be well, real. Let's blah, let's blah, end blah, this. Blah, I'm, blah. I'm ending the conversation here. Uh, it's no longer productive. I'm going to go into the next topic. Well, it was productive until Demon Mama spoke. Can, up. Can, I ask one, can I ask one last question? Get... Yeah, it can be your final <laughs> statement. Uh, we're going to start with final statements, and so we're going to start with Demon Mama. Yeah. Um, uh, however you want to call it, um, uh, packing the courts, whether holding out judges, regardless, the Republican Party has blatantly and obviously um, tampered with the courts to attempt to in inject uh, partisan bias into the rulings. This is very clear. Um, their their policies do not sell to the general populace of America. They only get through um, using technicalities um, hidden in, in various types of law that they can push through. I would argue in order to counter that type of power grab, 
we have to be willing anybody has to be willing to counter that with their a power grab of their own if the De if the republicans are not going to play nice why should the dems play, play nice simple as that until we're able to build a system that's more uh enforced and the reason why we look at our systems and have critiques for our systems is so that we can build ones that aren't as subject to this type of political bias but the fact of the matter is the courts are biased right now and they're biased far to the right and the way we fix that is by offering up solutions to that political solutions which could be packing the courts so yeah go for it whatever solution they find that grants the democratic party an equal footing so that we can actually have representation in this country i am for that absolutely especially given all of the other things i talked about about how the republican party has been engaging in politics over the last two decades or so in america okay next we're going to pass it over to the last username um oh thanks look, Void. i mean I'm with the veterans. This is really a straightforward thing, and it's uh, not at all controversial. You can hear, find lots and lots of other people saying that packing the Supreme Court would be a very severe overreaction and would probably lead to retaliation that would be highly dangerous and destructive to uh, the Supreme Court as an institution. Yeah. I don't think yeah. this is uh, a wildly yeah. controversial <laughs> opinion. I don't think it's... Thanks for the follow, and, Arps. You know, the people saying that I'm... If you can't hear me say that without thinking that I'm a Republican shill, then, I mean, get your head out of your ass uh, for your own sake. Because yeah. you, you just... You can't have a... Um, you, you can't Lots have an people. objective conversation about this. Star, trust me, bro. To resort to. Um, Much the, love, The Roy. reason it's a more severe violation... Uh, a lot of my family are vets. I stand with ...versus vets. just not having hearings is because ultimately it's not having hearings doesn't they still had the power to reject those candidates they still have the power to prevent those people and from going we have on the power from, to add from numbers being appointed to, the court. to those courts they just oh, um, a did a, a, used a really uh, cheapo uh, scummy way to to accomplish it but it didn't ultimately change the power that they had right they had the power to do that anyway without violating norms um in this case you're violating a norm that um, I just call it like I see it. Uh, does, Listen, that allows, allows you bullshit. to appoint Let's judges that otherwise you could not appoint. That's what the Democrats are talking about, right? And because of that, I think it is a far more uh, aggressive action. Don't, don't violate and, the norms, and, and says the anarchist. The fact that you guys, that, uh, you know, Pisco, you can't tell me what you think the consequences will be indicates that, okay? If if it wasn't so severe, then you should be able to predict that there, the consequences, that the consequences won't be severe. The reason you can't is because... It's a pretty big deal. I know this um, is so silly. This I'm argument is, is circular. You should at least understand what those consequences are before you say, "I think this is a good idea." It just seems to His me like this is broke. way like this is coming from. They're not. Uh, you know, they're this fake. Is a poorly thought out. Measure, and cops and are fake I, anarchists. It's not going to work out well. They stole you. the term from anarcho-socialists, from libertarian and, socialists. Uh, I next, say. I'm going to throw it over to CTV. Here we go. Here we go. If any of y'all are wondering, I wear the shades because I get migraines when I look at these screens too long. That being said, uh, yeah, the whole idea for me here is reduction in the size of government. So to what Demon Mom said earlier about her concern about being able to you know, stay married to her wife or get married to, etc., I think that there's a new brand of conservatism that's coming around, and the whole idea of that is to get the government out of it. Because for me, nope, I don't know Not why the government... Data or why anybody should have to go ask permission from the government to get married to somebody that's just be a decision the two free people make among themselves and they don't need the government to check so that's ultimately i think where the conservative view is going is literally getting the government out of a oh, lot of definitely. these issues and reducing the size of the government yeah we believe right? that right chad so the idea of packing the courts because you want to you know continue we believe to, that to try to push for more government supremacy over the people is exactly what last username is talking about where he says there's going to be a pushback of some kind because the people are not going to continue to stand for government supremacy right they want their freedom so that is exactly where i'm at when it comes to packing the courts we should not be considering that at all and uh i am all for oh you don't want to ask him that boycott continues to remove the government out of the individual's lives uh, as much as humanly possible. Thank you. Sorry, I, I don't know why he was talking so softly. Okay, there, next but... I'm going to be passing it over to RGR. Oh, thank you. Uh, yeah, I had a lot more to say earlier on. I unfortunately had some questions from MNC TV and last username, but I'll try and summarize here. Uh, on the first one about the Republican Party, we're responding to Madman and CTV. Uh, so... 
first, as a formal matter, literally just recently, uh, Justices Thomas and Alito have come out and said that they would overturn a Ber- a v. Hodges if they were given the opportunity to. So let's be clear, like, yeah, the Republican Party is 100% behind overturning gay marriage. And also, like, to the broader policy question of, like, okay, so should we have as minimal amount of government in society as possible? Um, the reason why this is bad logic is because it does not account for any— uh, any accounting of positive and negative liberties, right? Damn. Um, I believe in a society where we are able to maximize the amount of liberties for everyone, and that naturally requires the limitation of certain liberties of other people, namely the liberty to be able to do negative things to other people. And I would say that the cost of taking away the ability for people to discriminate against other people, against allowing them to have gay marriage, is worth the liberty of allowing people who otherwise are probably oppressed by a larger society to be able to engage in the same kind of things as everyone else does. True. Moving on. Um, Actually, last username. Oh, last username isn't here. Um, oh, he's coming back. Uh, I kind of want to wait for him to get here because I want to specifically, like, I do want to take his question. I think that there's like a good faith construction of his criticism. Um, so we'll see. you can like hear it. Oh, you can hear me. Okay, cool. So yeah, um, no, I'm gonna try and respond to you in good faith. All right, like, uh, what what would be the uh, consequences and all of that? What's what's the uh, what's the calculus there? Um, I agree that packing the court is bad in a pure vacuum. I think it is. I, th- I think that taken to be long term, it would lead to bad outcomes. The problem is that, like, in order to not do it, that would assume that the system is functioning as it should. And hey, it doesn't thanks right for now. the follow, Rap We have Happy. people who take advantage of the system Happy and have partisan the point, um, especially Republicans who have done it. Uh, you know, we've talked about it at hominem, the, the blocking of uh, nausea, appoint ne- appointees during Obama, appointing Amy Coney Barrett, even though they had previ- the Republican Party had previously said that it, they would not want to appoint someone during the last term of presidency. You know, like there's plenty of instances of them taking advantage of the goodwill of the Democratic Thankfully, Party to I, be able to uh, further their work, own appointing purposes. Thankfully, right? I live in a good so the state, idea that so the I system do have is functioning as it should, namely that we shouldn't partisan appoint, is just not being true. And to the extent that it's not true and we do not currently have an alternative, I would say that core packing is necessary in order in to case. make sure that we don't have a complete usurping of one side or the other. Because I do want to have a nonpartisan Supreme Court. I do want to have a nonpartisan court system but unfortunately right now we don't have objective means so until until we get to the point we're able to impl like get into like having objective means some possibilities i've talked to other lawyers about include or other lawyers i'm not a lawyer some possibilities i've talked to None. like bar certified not lawyers one, about Wendell include B. like having rotating circuit court nominees right like having a rotating Supreme court wrecked. that's based on like the uh, the federal circuit courts having people from those courts going on so it's like proportional in partisanship to whoever is appointed on circuit courts, yeah. not a perfect solution, but a better one. Um, or having like something like limiting of, uh, oh, limiting like basically the uh, limiting of di- of uh, district courts to be able to take on certain issues. Um, because like there are rules that like technically the con like Congress is able to pass laws which limit the ability for district courts to be able to take on certain issues, which is another possibility. Um, but until we actually employ one of those possibilities, I think that court packing is necessary because like, yeah, in a vacuum, I don't think that court packing is a good thing to do, but that also like operates with the understanding that we have a current, like otherwise immediate and viable alternative and we just don't. Um, so until we get that, sure. yeah. Okay. okay. We're gonna there we go. this over next to Pisco and Pisco, uh, could, uh, pass it over to Madman right after. Oh, yeah. I need to get a glass sure. of water, so I will be right back. I'll be happy to. So I, I, I do want to apologize last year's name if things got a little heated. Um, you have that effect on me. I just sort of wanted to go through the merits of I don't. why we're concerned about I'm a court bitch. packing. Let's be real. The reason we're concerned about court packing is its partisan implications. Yeah, good time to and grab some water. That is all we're worried about here. There is some argument, right, that if we have one Supreme Court justice, that's a problem. Because of caseload, because it's, you know, if he gets um, yeah, incapacitated, so. that's a problem. There's also so, a problem on the other side, right? If there's a thousand I'm having justices, a short conversation with Ico afterwards. Of, so, be well, sure how to do we around. even manage a court this We're size? Talk about the stuff um, that's been here. What do oral arguments look like? So, there are legitimate arguments about the numbers, what they should be. But that's not what we're concerned about here with court packing. What we're fundamentally concerned about here is a partisan water balance. gang. That's it. That's I all that's weed. animating our concern I love weed. for um, court packing. In this respect, there is no fundamental difference between a breakage of norms with respect to using a, a, a federal statute. That's true. It's under my kilt. The failure or to give a discretionary um, hearing to a, a judge who's up for nomination. If it's a breakage of norms, it's a breakage of norms. And you have to explain why one breakage of norms no politician is, is more potent or the magnitude is greater for one than another. True. Otherwise, if they're affecting the partisan balance, 
um, and they're both breakage of norms, they're, I have to assume they're equivalent. Now, I happen to think it's just as bad, if not worse, not even to give a hearing to judges that are being nominated by the president. Why? At least when you're packing the court, all. everyone knows what you're doing. It's a more open act. It's, it's open to the air. When you, what, what Mitch McConnell did here, I think, is in many ways more nefarious than that. Um, you're distinguishing factors True. that He's because they still have the power to have appointed the same judges or they ultimately didn't change the level of power those lyrics are, are totally pog, gay fetish. I don't know what those have to do with the breakage of norms or why those factors are at all important. I, I listed a factor that at least being open is a better breakage of norms than being shy and close about it. So we'd have to talk more, it I think, about why your distinguishing factor is way more than my God. distinguishing factor. Ultimately, I am I am worried about the outcome of this. And I'm worried that this would be a bad political move uh, for Democrats. I'm worried about the independence of the federal judiciary, uh, its perceived independence. That doesn't mean that it should be completely unconnected to politics. I don't want a, just a group of philosopher kings. I'm sure I disagree with a lot of Riley's ideas of her friends that she talked about with respect to rotating circuits or with respect to um, sort of cementing or institutionalizing partisan divides. I'm sure I would have problems with that as well. Um, but that being the case, I think there's been a huge aberration and breakage of norms Thanks, for Gina. the past Good decade, um, or at least since Obama's second term, maybe overstated. And that needs to be corrected. And a reasonable way it could be corrected, provided that the partisan outcomes aren't severe, would be adding a couple associate justice seats. And with that, I'll end my Yeah, obviously. Talk. Obviously the same person. Hey, and next I'm going to throw it over to Madman. Um, even though I understand uh, pretty much the um, opposing oh, okay. ideals as to why you want to Functionally the same. Uh, pack the court as sort of like a, a short-term solution to bring uh, balance, oh, okay. I think, to like I what said, you're saying is a, a partisan court. Listen, you both have the same um, names. Come on. It's a little bit of a bias. With, without restrictions. We can talk after. Don't worry. As, as Always to, do Q&A after the panel. Uh, why you're doing it to come up with a... A, a a balanced uh, uh, a balanced outcome. You're you're going to end up with with rules that could very well possibly lead to solutions that you're not going to be very happy with. So I don't think changing the rules. Um, I don't know. Only Mad when they are about. going to be like suited to to your needs is 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 very good strategy. Um, when the ball is in, you know, your your enemy's court. You I don't think she was expecting me to be as spicy as I am. And so that's all I have to say. That's okay. It. Voice is one thing. Separate the voice from the voicey. Okay. We're going to go on to the final topic Ooh, of the night. Final topic. Which has to do about the Electoral College and should we get rid of it. So I will state the statement right off the bat. Should we get rid of the Electoral College? Pisco, you're not supposed to be that True. happy. Okay, you're the replacement. Uh, I will pass it around the room. <laughs> I'm going to start this time uh, on the bottom right-hand corner with Madman. Oh, this is awesome. Um, I love the Electoral College. Um, hmm. I think it gives the little guy more representation, and I think it's really important to um, the way that our government works. You would, wouldn't you? Our election process. So, no. Yeah, it's I, funny it doesn't do that. I don't think that we should get rid of it. Yeah, CTV did. He just didn't say okay. anything. Uh, next is P R G R. You are next. Um, I don't know. It's not a perfect system, but I also don't want to say too much because I don't have a perfect proposed alternative because I'm probably not in favor of de of a direct democracy. Um, I think that what we have is a system which makes it so that basically a handful of people from a handful number of states decide basically every major election. And that's not good. That's a bad thing. We shouldn't have that because if you want a true democracy, mm. that's not a true democracy. But I don't know. I also don't have a great alternative, so I'm not going to say too much more about it, right? Um, yeah, I don't know. That's that's basically that's basically going to be my take. It's not a great system, and it leads to a disproportionate like in like yeah, importance of certain you, votes over others, which today. I think is undemocratic. Killing it. Uh, but I also don't have a great alternative to propose. So that's my opening statement. Okay, next I'm going to throw it over to uh, last username. So I don't have super strong feelings about this. Um, I, I see democracy as a largely sort of uh, 
arbitrary yeah, and unprincipled that's what I was gonna suggest. mechanism anyway. So a particular aspect of it being itself um, arbitrary and unfair is kind of lost in the in the mess to me. Um, I, I suppose in in some sense uh, the you know electoral college is undemocratic. It should be some mods um, in here. But I don't really care here, if it's undemocratic. We I care about if it have if it has a good effect. Cosmic on Sean things. whisper gay fashion. Um, and uh, it doesn't. Whether it does or not, I, I don't know. It's probably probably trying to change it would have would have I don't know a negative effect. But I mean, if the effect is to sort of uh, um, spread you know spread power out geographically, um, I don't know. It probably ends up working working out for the best. Um, uh, but uh, like I say, it's I don't really care about the ideal of democracy itself anyway. So principled arguments about the electoral hey, college Redcon, don't happy have to have you here. me. I really just Good care about, you. you know, what, what would what would be the actual effects of, of keeping it versus getting rid of it. So I, I'm willing to hear out uh, what you guys have to say about that. Okay. Next, I'm going to throw it over to Demon Mama. Yeah, um, I support us moving away from the Electoral College. Um, I think that we could have a... There's a couple of systems that could work better. Uh, we could move to a parliamentary-style system. We could move to uh, ranked-choice vo voting with uh, proportional representation. Um, I, both of these systems would accomplish what um, Madman um, states is the best benefit of the... Um, electoral college or the seeming benefit the electoral college does not actually do that um and i would really urge anyone there's a really fantastic video about this um done by a really cool youtuber called cgp gray one of the best videos i've ever seen on it called um it's i think it's literally just called the electoral college and it talks about how the electoral college actually almost guarantees that smaller states get no attention um some states um due to a number of really complicated math as far as how it goes are literally their citizens are worth more in votes than other states um and this also leads to a problem where um the only states that get any um attention on a on a federal um election level are the swing states um states that are at risk otherwise i mean um the big blue states, you know, the big red states don't get any attention from their candidates because of the way that it's um, that it's uh, slanted. It also um, uh, disproportionately uh, punishes urban areas where the most people live. Um, so we have some issues with the electoral college um, that fly in the face of what people say its benefit is supposed to be. To be in truth, what the electoral college does right now is um, it slants in the favor of huh, once again. The Republican Party, um, almost exclusively. Um, and that's because it was built on uh, principles of land ownership. And um, as it turns out, it's people that make up a country, not just land. So we don't live in a system that's predicated around land ownership. Thank God. I'm glad we don't live in an age of slavery and, and uh, you know, landholders being the only ones who have rights. Um, so we should move away from a system that is built to do that. And, uh, you know... Again, I don't have much contention. I understand why people um, like or think they like the the Electoral College. But I assure you, the Electoral College does not do um, what you claim it does. It does not benefit small states. It only benefits the Republican Party. And that won't change even if small states are no longer courted by the Republican Party. Okay. Now I'm going to throw it over to CTV. Uh, no, the Electoral College should not be abolished we should definitely have it i'm very glad that we do i believe that it gets the representation needed out from uh, from more rural parts of the country versus the more densely populated cities uh, and i think that all of the cares and concerns of all of the people across our great land uh, need to be heard yeah too bad that objectively that's not what happens okay next i'm going to throw it over to do, do, do. I think that's everybody. Uh, yeah, I don't think. Oh, wait. Oh, I forgot. Uh, the oh, lawyer boy. Uh, Come on, Elsom. Sorry to okay. bother you, but would you be able to drop that? Electoral in Dylan College Burns is chat as unjustifiable well? and should be abolished. Um, for one, the system doesn't do what people think it does. And I think Demon Mama made that clear, which is it doesn't favor types of voters, it favors states, certain states. So there are plenty of rural voters in california tons of rural yep. voters in california yep. tons of rural voters in texas as well yep. but those states aren't favored 
in the electoral college because because they the, the favoring is for states. Um, I think that there's plenty of state sovereignty in our country without an electoral college. I agree. Most of what you do Peace and, and you Peace operate state. your life on is governed by state law for the Thank most part. Thank with you, some I'm sorry to ask that of you. I just, it's hard um, but how you sort of it. live your day to day is largely governed by state law. That doesn't go away hey, Zanzi, good to if see you. all of a sudden there's an, uh, a direct electoral vote for the president. Um, yeah, I don't uh, see the argument Con, he's how it be theoretically possible he's to win fuck. the electoral college with something below 30% of the popular vote. That doesn't seem to be justifiable. That doesn't even, that's, but that is even theoretically possible. So really oh, the argument sick. needs to be made. Why should smaller states be favored over bigger states in, in that system? I don't think there's a good answer. I think stretched to the limits, we would be shocked if a state that said, you know, let's say that the state had 10 people as opposed to another state which had yeah, peace goes pretty good. 300 million. I'm more left than that he somehow is, those two still states really should have and I like equal talking say with him. in what's He's going a good on debater. in the country. I think we would be shocked rightly so uh, because we we know that what really matters is uh, a mandate from the masses, not a mandate from these individual sovereigns which can keep on to their powers if they so choose. Now, this isn't going to appeal to someone like last year's name who doesn't neolib. care about democracy as a sort of, um, I don't know, philosophical end in and of itself, yeah, peace which in some really sense I can be sympathetic clear. to. But I think that also having a direct popular vote is better as a utilitarian end. One is, I think, mm -hmm. um, the elections in which it has been decided on an electoral college victory as opposed to popular vote victory, we would have been better off had they been decided the other way. So that's a history. It doesn't necessarily prove that in the future it's going to be like that. But I think um, the fact that um, we would at least have a reliable um, sort of something to hang your hat on, which is the popular vote, and that if situations change such that distribution of electoral college is much, much more unequal than it is even now, we could uh, rely on sort of the dictates of majority of the people guiding us, not leading us astray. So for those reasons and others, I think the system should be abolished and we should have a direct popular vote. Okay. Uh, RGR and uh, Pisco, could you both disconnect and reconnect to the whereby? You're, you've both begun freezing sure. uh, a little bit. So okay. I would just want to try to get better video quality. Uh, but the general conversation is now open. You may engage. Yeah. Um. Okay. I, I think um, Pisco had said something about like if, if a state had, I think he said literally like 10 people and then a, a state had 30, 30 million. Did I hear you correct? That so, they would have equal representation? I'm, so this is a hypothetical to test the, the limits of your, Yay. of why states should matter. I'll be matter. done in like an hour. Um, and so yeah. imagine a country with 10 people or sorry, a state with Let's, let's make it up so it's a little bit more believable. Let's say it's a thousand people in that state. Everybody moves out of Wyoming. Let's say that there's like a vol volcano that happens, or and people are forced to move out except for like the scientists. It's a working. Friday. Um, and then the rest of the states Yay. all be come into like one state or something. Should that state of a thousand people have the same vote as the rest of, you know, Greater California, whatever you want to call it? But that's not how it works. They get. I know, you know not, that they get the the electors get divided out. I know. It's, I mean, so they would have way more. I understand that it's not the principle is the same though, right? That you would be having disproportionately more say. At least, for instance, in the Senate, you would have the same say as that other state, and that informs mm -hmm. how the electoral college is is divided. Is what I'm saying. Sure, sure, but the 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 lifestyle and the I mean everything could be very different between the people that live in wyoming versus how people are living in so what would you say to someone who says that like you know california has rural voters california has more rural voters in california than the rural voters out in uh i don't know wyoming why mm -hmm. should they be they're not counted by wyoming's rural voters mm -hmm. so so why aren't their votes first of all i i don't know as a normative matter that we should value rural voters over urban voters that hasn't been made clear to me. But even if we should, why then is the line between uh, states? Well, not... Right. It's about equal representation. 
Well, it's not equal. It's purposely unequal. Yeah, it is literally objectively unequal. Like, I mean, a, no, somebody who lives in L.A., their vote is objectively just across the land, right? I mean, unless you want us to, you know, come into the cities and bring the fucking okay. cows in on the streets so that you can clean up the shit. This is not an argument. Everybody's got to eat, right? No so there are people that have to, to, to take care of certain things, i.e. farming and, you know. Their business, you know, in different parts. What does of this the have to do with anything for those people that are not a part of those major? Why major should that matter more than the these dumb as shit? Densities of population, you have to figure out how to have an equal amount of voices across the land. But it's unequal, right? Like so, a college accomplishes that. Listen, no, it doesn't. Farmers you're valuing you're... certain lives more than others in the electoral yeah. process. That's what That's you're right. doing. You are valuing some lives more than others just by just based purely on where they're located. Correct. Yeah, as it stands you know? right now, as it stands right yes, now. Yes, you are. You are signing you less electoral power to certain no, people by virtue of the fact that. that. No, you're, you're, you're literally it. doing it. You're saying that by you're, virtue of living in the city, that, you are, that your vote has less power than people who don't live in the city. That's what you're saying. That's literally the argument. No, what I'm saying is, is that you need a consensus across the entire land. You're, just, you're not I, even addressing the point. Oh, my God. You're literally not even addressing the point. Holy shit, dude. Holy fuck. So I think <laughs> the typical kind of argument for the Electoral College, I understand, is that it forces you to have um, to appeal to Never gonna uh, say voting blocks that, that uh, cut across um, that, right? states, right? Sorry? But it doesn't do that because, as was, I think, greatly explained by Demon Mama, it doesn't force you to have a broad consensus across different places. Correct. It forces you to go well, to the, where there's not consensus, a but it, it resists things like having like having a candidate who only appeals to urban voters or a candidate who only appeals to rural voters. Wait, wait, hold on a second. This is a really state. important thing, real yeah, quick. That I want, want to draw. Oh, sorry, sorry, I didn't mean to talk over you. Um, do you no, good. I find it. Oh, okay. Um, I was just gonna say it's really important as it stands right now. The way the electoral college works is urban voters are literally worth less per vote your vote if you live in a city if you happen to live in a city you are worth That's less one of the effect yeah happens. yeah then you, i think it's like i can't remember the exact state right off the top of my head um but like i think it's i want to say it's wyoming or or wisconsin is worth like three votes to a vote of, of somebody who lives in la which is like nine point yeah, nine okay. eight so here's the point right so you live in the city Right. Your voice means less there because that's where that fucking land is. Right. So if you want your voice to mean more, move out to the rural parts where there's less people in this big ass fucking land that we got. Oh, right. Our so Wait, Laura, yeah, that's a great idea. Just, just move five head. head. Just move. Just move five head. head. And that's exactly how you do that. Right. So if you don't want to really engage with how the actual structure of the land is. Right. This is not an argument. Do you understand? No. Wait, wait, yeah, CTV, a genuine question. Genuine question. CTV. Do you, genuine question. Oh, genuine okay. question. Let me, hear, let me hear the question. Okay. Genuine question. Ready? Do you believe that there is a difference between a person and land? Did you, is that a real question? Yes, that's a real question. Because right now, the argument you're making d does, does not seem to care. Flat or round? Did you think that was a dunk or something? I guess you can't answer the question. I mean, here's the thing. Land isn't what matters. It's people that matter. And also the argument that you can just get up and move when um, like people need. It's not an argument. No. Yeah, it's not an argument. Not people really. need jobs. Like there's more than just like you can't just up and disappear yeah, into, into the rural area. Like, they need to be filled in more and also areas. wait wait hold on there's another problem though wait there's another problem i know you're really jumping at it but... different situations that we can go through and all this and then be able to play it all out but at the end of the day right what you need as far as a voting block is right or how you're getting the votes collected right you need to make sure that you have equal representation based off of a myriad of things that would need to be considered and the electoral college does that while also giving us a good consensus across the entire nation. It doesn't do that. Though. It doesn't and do you know that. What? And there's yeah, another, problem. Wait, there's another problem. wait, there's another problem. There's another problem. There's another problem. Wait, wait, wait come on now. Come on. I would like to, would like to hear the election. end of his... You can do it. Okay. When, when President Trump won the election, right, but he didn't win the popular vote. And that's not even the first time in history that that's happened. And that's why exactly it's argument. important for you to have a representation across the land rather than in population densities and cities. 
Um, it's really Trump funny. Trump won, so the system works. I'm not sure if that's the argument that you think that it is. I'm yeah. not sure if that's the sinker that you think it is. I'm sorry. I'm not sure if Trump won, so the system works, is the way that you want to take this. Like, yeah. I'm not sure... Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's really I'm funny. Not sure, I mean, yeah. not to, not to, I'm lame. about you. All I did was point out that that is not the first time in history that that That's has happened. Doesn't matter, right? It's like, it's a clear example that's recent, so that you could understand what it was that I was talking about. Yeah, yeah, whether or not it's that it doesn't work. That's kind of the point. Whether or not it's happened in recent history isn't an argument addressing whether or not yep. the electoral college by its terms uh, allows for a wide spectrum of representation the majority of the country wants trump as president and that's why he got elected but that didn't happen the majority, but the majority did not across the majority of the states which constitute the land see here here now now if i can have a second to respond to, to all this stuff that uh, that ctv has been saying it's really funny because um I, I feel like i uh like i jumped forward in time when i was giving my opening statement where i talked about how the electoral college only exists yeah, to serve yeah. the republic party and you demonstrated that by saying that donald trump won even though he didn't win the popular vote by a large margin so by definition donald trump being president right now means that the majority of people in this country were not given the representative right now keep in mind all of this again um all of this is, is is talking about the electoral college the electoral college only affects the presidency and what the presidency can then affect so there are other ways for us to do representation i also support mind you getting rid of the senate um because i think the senate has the same problems that the um that the electoral college does which is that certain states are given an advantage when they shouldn't be and um, or start yeah. And then a third thing, which is that you're in response again to your ridiculous just move five head um, uh, response. Uh, it's really funny because if everybody moved out to the to that rural area, that rural area would become worth less because of the Electoral yeah. College. So you're shooting yourself in the foot. The system just sucks. You only defend it because it wins. It wins the Republican Party. Right. It would be working perfectly. So like I said, no, right. Do you know you gotta let him respond to that. That was like right. a three point one two three at him. You can't just jump right. in and like really do five, four, five, six. You gotta okay. let him, you know, counter. You, you, you can continue, CTV. Sorry. Right. So the point is, is that it, it, you know, the more that the people move to different places, the electoral college would account for that. It no, just it would. would. It would Wouldn't. because there's a process that decides how many elect, you know, votes that the electorals get. Because right? actually, Demon Mama was slightly wrong because she was assuming there, or maybe she, she said, uh, as, as city urban people go out to the rural parts, that they'll their vote will count more and it'll be balancing. But it's no, actually, no, no, no. remember, it's not that, it's states. It's yeah. states. So it's Fair. not types of voters, it's states. So I think she she's reading into it, moving to another more rural state. That's fair. Um, but keep in mind, you going from a city out to the rural areas they're not going to change anything with if you're in a, an arbitrary state line that we've just decided that the rural voters in wyoming matter more than the rural voters in california misspeak so, on my uh, part yes yeah so i i just, I just want to be clear why should states matter? yeah but the fact that california or new york they have x amount of and i think it's 29 for or maybe 35 for california uh, 21 for New York, I think. I'm not sure, so don't oh, quote me. Right? But it's because of a lot of the population densities that that takes into account for the number of electoral votes they that have they less, get. Right? They have less than they should, right? If it was pure... Less than they should. If it was pure represent... I'm, I'm not saying that we should have a higher number than... How many... You know, so like 270 is the breaker because they figure that out. I mean, so you're you're... Saying you that the electoral college needs to account for population and electoral votes yes. in a different way? Yeah, that's that's my. I think we should abolish. I want to let Riley talk because I, uh, Riley, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm not sure if I have too much to add, actually. Okay. Okay. Um. Yeah. You're good. Okay. Um. So CTV, if if it's the case, as it is the case, that the electoral college doesn't favor types of voters, it favors states. This is a fact. Why this should that fact. be the case? Why should you favor certain types of rural voters over other types of rural voters who live out in big states? Well, that doesn't make sense, right? The, the interests of the rural farmers in California aren't the interests of the rural farmers in the Midwest necessarily. Mm -hmm. One maybe right. is more about well, water. Let's make, sure, let's make sure we keep it in the yeah. framework, right? So I, you're still saying there needs to be some He's type struggling of to follow. college process. No, I don't. I want to get rid of it, but I'm, I'm challenging your view of why the electoral college. Well, so, is, then, so then you don't think that there should be some type of representation across the population. Right, right. Also killing the planet. Right. I'm saying... Right. It, 
the system that you would prefer would be something like, okay, we're going to assign electoral votes. And we're going to, if, if you say on the census that you're a rural voter, you get two votes. And if you say, what I mean to say is like, we'd have to like, if you really wanted what you wanted, you would be okay saying, if you identify as a rural voter and we can oh, prove you're know, a rural Coco. voter, been going your votes just chat. matter more. That should be what you're saying. It's not. That's not how it works, though. It's not how it works. It's and, not and, how electoral college works, right? I, I understand. That's not how it works. I'm saying if you right. really so cared about it. So then let's do this, right? Because you love hearing yourself talk. So why don't you explain to me how the electoral college <laughs> works, man? Explain yeah. to me how it decides the number of votes that it's going to get, yeah. right? Why California has 35 or whatever the case is. And every, how do they come up with that when it comes to the population densities across okay. the land inside that state? So Every it, state gets electoral college strong. votes equal to the number of representatives they have plus the number of senators they have. In addition, D.C. gets a certain number of, I forget, electoral votes as well. So that is how that's uh, broken down. As you know, CTV, Senate's, the Senate, uh, every state has two senators, Right. So by virtue of, regardless of your size, by virtue of the fact that you have an equal number of senators, regardless of size, I think might and be that's less. factored into your number of electoral votes, that necessarily means that smaller states have more representation than bigger states. You understand that, right? Okay. So what's being favored here is states, states with small population. Why? If what we care about is a cross-sectional group of different- well, there's that. Entities, there's also like, the effect of like that. That I mean, all that uh, you get all or nothing essentially with with each state, right? Um, like, so you need if you get fifty one percent of the that's, votes in the state, th that's not necessary, right? States, so that's, it's not necessary, that's how, but that's how all yeah. the states do it right now, I think, right? Yeah, um, except for Nebraska and Maine. Right. So what you're saying is, is that perhaps maybe a different way to do it would be to have, you know, maybe a greater percentage of the votes need to go before, uh, like say sixty six percent of the votes need to go one way or the other. Uh, no, the electoral not, should be split into, you know, you're not hearing me. So what I'm saying is the argument for that last year's name put that, that is commonly put, he, he was just presenting the argument that's often given is that the electoral college forces you really to get a, a cross section of America. You have to appeal to He's urban so heights. You have to appeal to rural He's people. You have to appeal to the suburb suburbs. Tell. And my contention is it doesn't by its terms, because all it favors statehood. It doesn't favor any particular well, arrangement. Are you saying that it, it doesn't it, it doesn't do you encourage that more than the alternative of not having an electoral college? You it have more of a cross have section a, with it than without. It doesn't it. have an opinion on it. It's all it's it's um, officially neutral on it. It's an accident of history that the small states um, are what they are and have the proportions they have. And were it some other way, were history some other way, were geography some other way you would see a different cross section that's being favored by the electoral college it's or maybe a more uniform one maybe maybe winning the electoral college well it would... just so happens that each state tends tends to have a mixture of urban and rural voters mm. and various other uh, you know distinctions among voters so if you force um, if you, if you force uh, politicians to campaign in, in you know across states then you're also forcing them to campaign across uh, these different you would have to do that if it was to some vote extent in. It's not perfect, it's, obviously. But they, they don't, don't even popular. do that, though. They don't even they don't do even that. Do that. Yeah. Like, uh, imagine. So think about the, the three decisive states in the last electoral election was Michigan, Wisconsin, uh, Pennsylvania, right? So those states are often referred to the, the kind of voter base in like one term, right? The Midwestern, rural, whatever, white voter, or, or, or I don't know how you yeah. spell voter, right? If if you're okay with that term being labeled around and you're okay with political analysis that talks about these states in those terms, then it looks like what was decisive was one section of voters. Essentially one group of voters decided the outcome of the election because the other ones were baked in. That's, I think, the argument why the Electoral College doesn't, by its terms, require you to have a, a nice cross-section. Now, it just so happens the winner of the Electoral College in the recent years has come from a diverse set of states. Like, yeah. But like, it's just an accident. There's right? another angle too of looking at this, which is um, that like, even in states, um, even in states with like, um, uh, you know, that are, that are safe states, so to say, um, candidates tend to go to the urban centers because they, they, that's cheaper. And what they're trying to do is 
go to the swing states, spend all their money in the swing states that, that you know, matter because of this ridiculously outdated uh, system. They'll go to those handful of swing states, ignore everywhere else, and ignore rural areas in states that, that are, like, safe. Like, for example, in California, you'll see, like, a hundred stops, a hundred presidential stops in L.A., a hundred presidential stops in San Francisco, and, like, one in, like, I don't know, like, uh, fuck, like... They don't go there. Yeah, I like, like, thinking, like, what, like, fucking... I don't even know the, the towns I'm trying to think of without like telling where I used to and, live. But the reason swing states are swing states is because they're so closely divided, right? If you didn't have this, now, if you didn't have the aspect where it's an all or nothing for each state, then wouldn't you have more uh, candidates saying, well, why, why am I going to bother with these swing Damn, states when I can just get more votes from, from some state that's already really friendly to me? And they've that would also be a huge improvement. States. That would be, Do you think that would be, be an improvement? That would be essentially Wouldn't a that vote. just be more divisive though? I mean, no, no, no. That would be essentially a popular vote, right? If if all states are proportional and but it would you can't be more, wouldn't it lead to more regional campaigning? Wait. What's that? Because right now, like if you you can only get if you get fifty one percent of the votes in California, you get one hundred percent of the electoral right. from California. If yeah. that if it was if it was uh, by population, then you could there would be you could get potentially twice as many votes from California by pushing it above that fifty one percent. Correct. So wouldn't that tend to? So wouldn't that system tend to encourage more regional voting? Like let's just get even more votes in the places we're already popular, rather than trying to look so at places that what? are that are more divided. So what? I, I mean, good. so I, I see something in the chat like it is saying if you don't live in California, New York, fuck you, basically. New York and California, I'm, I, I hate to break it to you, don't make up half the population of the country. I don't know who thinks they do. They don't. And you wouldn't. You wouldn't. Uh, Yes, it would encourage you to, to get turnout from, from big, heavy states, maybe. But why shouldn't it? And these candidates don't care about Rhode I guess Island it anyway. It depends on what, what your goals are, right? They're not going to Rhode Island anyway. They're not going to small states anyway, as we said. What they have more well, well, here's the thing, though. The difference, though is that, the difference, though, is that it would incentivize politicians to seek votes and not uh, to seek ringing the bells right in this like outdated electoral system. What they're incentivized to do is to do this little funny dance where they touch certain states and ignore completely other states. Whereas if it's a, if it's a popular vote system or something like ranked choice— you know, with, um, with, uh, what the fuck? I can't even think of the word. Proportional, okay. proportional representation or okay. parliamentary system or any of those other systems would encourage them to seek the votes, the actual people. So there would be a benefit for say like, Hey, what if, I don't know, like pick a random candidate, Joe Biden or whatever decides to do a drive through rural America and, and go visit all these places and win, win over the hearts of all these people. Those votes now matter. Those votes actually matter because those are the votes that will decide it. Yeah, sure. It's still going to be – you're still going to have a lot of incentivization to go to large urban centers because there's a lot of people there. There's a lot of people there. So, yeah, it's always going to be important. This makes it more valuable to to uh, seek the votes. It builds an incentive system that encourages presidential candidates to listen to all the people in the country. The way that it is right now, they don't do that. They do the little dance. They ring the right bells, and then maybe it happens. I don't think it, I think they're more inclined to listen to more, a greater variety of people under the current system than why? They are. Because, why? Why? because a popular a popular vote system gives you more flexibility mm. in choosing where to get your votes from. So it allows you it gives you more options to appeal to specific interest groups to get your votes. So if I want to be a party that just appeals to these specific people, I can do that because every vote that 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 I get from that interest group counts no matter where in the country it is. You, right? but, but, Through the system, but, we just appeal to people from a handful number of states, right? Like only people from like a handful number of states, regardless of yeah, their particular like whatever, happened. whatever, whatever. Like that already happens. Like that's a that's, that's a criticism that currently exists. And it's way, but way, way. The far. only reason you have to appeal to the states where people are divided, right? Why should you have to do that? But that under the current system. Yeah, but there are people well. divided across the entirety of the country, Correct. right? And there are people more like that, just to appeal to any states you want, yeah, right? Having appeal lived in some rural states California, doesn't make any difference. Yeah, you have to under like. Now, mind you, I'm not sure if I am in favor of like a direct democracy, but that would at least solve the problem of people having to actually care about people from across the entirety of the country as opposed to just in a handful number of states. Riley, uh, respectfully, it no, wouldn't, it be, a, it has it wouldn't be a direct effect. democracy. It would, it would still be a representative government. It would still be federalism, right? You'd still have state governments okay. who opine on state law. So I don't think it would crush the federal government under the boot of small states. Um, and it, I, I think about it right now. Someone needs to answer this question. Rhode Island isn't taken account of at all in the election. Neither is uh, Montana, right? So if, if the argument is, well, smaller states should have 
more representation because they'll be catered to more. How can you think that? I have to wonder. Does anyone have an answer for that? Who is in favor of electoral college? Right. So they get a number of electoral votes based on the amount of land that the state holds versus the population. Right? All amount of land, right? Nothing to do with land. It's all population. Well, clearly it has something to do with land. It has nothing to right? do with because land. Because the electoral college votes are split up between what? The states. So, so clearly population does matter, right? No, because Rhode Island has is a very small land, but proportionally mm-hmm. has more representation than uh, a bigger land state. Right. So, th- so like there's a population, right? And then the smaller the state, the bigger the influence. And then there's a bigger state in the smaller Right. No, no, but but then well, a, huge like state, is, a huge state like Alaska. Oh, no, a huge state like Alaska to be able to account for these things. No, no, Alaska is physically, I think, the biggest state. Am I wrong about that? I think Alaska is physically the biggest state in the union, and it has. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's large. yeah. So population wise, I think it's all population. Well, no, he's he said land, so I just want to. It's nothing to do with land. It's all it's state boundaries, and it doesn't matter how much land is in there. It matters how much people is in there. Right, CTV. What am I saying that you don't like? I just don't think you're understanding. I think that you're just arguing to be arguing. I, you said I land. He literally wait, wait, just CTV. Are you drunk? What? No, not yet. Are you sure? You've been drinking. I'm I mean, I, I don't know. Yeah, I guess one shot. I mean, you know. <laughs> I mean, like you're literally telling someone who studies the law that they don't know what they're talking about when you don't have any experience, and when they're literally just describing what the electoral college is. Like this isn't anything disputable. That like, one this was is for you, like, man. It's set up. Never forget it. Like it's based yeah. on population. Like that's that's how it is. It's set up to get representation across the land based off of population. You didn't use land that way, but yeah, I'll yeah. let you slide. You didn't use mm-hmm. it as the land to get across sectional. You're saying the electoral college depends on land. We can run it back, but I won't do that. This now. was the right moment. Um, not before Look, it's one this of those was where if you want to try to you know just dissect and you know but you i'm hearing you i'm responding to you that's all i want you to do is okay. i want you to hear me and not get hung up on the language right otherwise we could just sit here and argue language all fucking day i need right? to know what you mean and i need to know that you're not and making a I huge i want to just just be clear then it's just a good a great job of representing the voices of the people inside the states which constitute the land Right. So where the population is across the land inside the states, they get votes based off of that. Right. So you get votes based on your hey. population and the Thanks fact for the that gifted you're a state. Sub Ace or man. Thank you so very so much. The fact that you're a state deeply appreciate gives your support. You two electoral votes. Much already. love. And the rest are decided based on your house of represent- uh, re- representative. <laughs> Send so, that to gay nope. fish. Fa- you, gay you, fish. The, the question is, why should for the, states out of, uh, the out of context have an inherent um, value added over and above the people living in the state? And remember, it's a zero sum game. Any votes you give to someone are votes you take away from someone else. If you're not doing right, do you understand that CTV? Right. And do you understand yeah. that states constitute different amounts of land? <laughs> Oh my god, we're going to the other puzzle this guy. He literally can't fucking understand how the electoral college works. Holy fuck. So here's a question. Why shouldn't states have this uh, default? I'll number? tell you. Okay. okay. Because states already have their sovereignty. They're assumed sovereign. They're already taken care of, right? He's and drunk as fuck. They're double counting people. This is by wild as fuck. What a great Emphasizing day. their states above and beyond the people in them. So I don't I know worried about the Christian, states. by the way. Be fine, mm-hmm. right? But you're assuming the job of the president is to represent the people rather than the states. But that's why is that exactly? So the president, I think, has the job to represent. It, it's we the – listen, I think the, the, the basis of sovereignty in the United States Constitution is people. And in our national system, especially after the Civil War, the president is answer, answerable to the people. As a matter of public policy, the president should be more worried about people's uh, well-being than so states' good. well-being. Today's if there's a so state, I, I, I'd, I'd rather care about you know 20 million people dying in one state as opposed to 1 million people dying in another state. I wouldn't care about the state divide there and say these are equally bad, right? I, so I, I have a bias, I must say, a substantive bias towards people. That's why I Welcome think. Welcome to the fold, Drovdar. Happy to have you. I, I mean, it doesn't uh, say helpful? specifically why the president's role should be should be that should be to represent because that's like enshrined in our constitution, and it leads to the best outcomes. I think. 
Well, I mean, no. What's enshrined in the Constitution no. is the the electoral the way it works now. Status well, quo. No, 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 no. The role of the president is different than the enshrinement of the of the. You, you asked why should the president focus on representing the people, um, and I think it's different to say that his his role as chief executive, um, I, I think, is of that of all the people. I don't think he, he's he interacts with the states on the same level as he does with the people. He only mm -hmm. interacts with states insofar as he's sort of hedged in by he's already what i want to say is he's already hedged in by the states by the mere fact that legislation has to pass by camera presentment and pre so he he already has the the sort of limitation of the Peace senate keep and now that's to keep being double together. counted on his own election so the influence of the I'm gonna, states i'm gonna dm peace double, go after this this was so funny my argument is and i think that influences i think he's just vaping but the dude does that make it. sense I, so he's I, I understand what you're saying yeah. enjoy your smoke okay. recon so i why should we, again, I present you the hypothetical, which we are essentially living in, where a state of a very small number of people compared to a state of a very, very large people, there's a reason why we care about the state with a lot of amount of, uh, with a large population, I think. And I think there's good reasons. Let me retweet this, this real quick. Okay, I don't want to uh, just throw it in there uh, at a point that was super chaotic. Now let's calm down a little bit. We are getting near to the 1130 mark. So it looks like we're going to start doing outros. So uh, you can not only give your ending position on this, you can also shout yourself out. So I'm going to start with Operation Mad Men. Okay. Um, I think the Electoral College is important. Like I said, it's to represent the, 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 represent the small guy. Um, NPC. Uh, I'm sorry. Boo. I'm extremely tired at this point of the night. Um the the founding fathers built um, the electoral college um, because they knew that democracies were were dangerous. Um, I think they they had described it democracy as democracy is uh, dangerous. Wolves and and a lamb deciding uh, what to eat for dinner, uh, or deciding what to eat for dinner. I think it was not so many words. You heard it here, folks. How they described the founding a, a, fathers a hated democracy. democracy, so that's why they set up the electoral college. It's a great system. I would hate Guess to see what? it abolished. Here's the secret. Um, they set it up be to benefit landowners. Some political streams. Um, play guitar sometimes. Same reason some that we had the three fifths Russian compromise. Streams. Recently, sometimes we doodle and just hang yes. out. Yes. So no, and Fen. That's what out. happened. That she has a Crowder mug. If you want to post your link in chat, you are perfectly allowed to. I'm going to throw it out over to last username. Okay, so like I said at the beginning, I don't have super strong uh, feelings about the Electoral College. I mostly just wanted to see, um, you know, what, what you guys had to say about it. Um, at, but currently, I tend to sort of lean towards, uh, like, being okay with it. There's there's different aspects to it that have different effects. Um, the, the first past the post aspect, the aspect that you, you know, either get all of the electors in the state or none, means that it, you... You know, once you get 51% of the votes effectively in a state, um, it, it there's no more benefit to uh, to trying to get any more votes in that state. Remember to stick around after. Way, We're going to talk with Ico them. and have some Q&A. Um, and that seems to be, it seems to me, that would have the effect of forcing you to, forcing candidates to to appeal more broadly to states since they uh, there's less benefit to concentrating on specific states. Um, that aspect... I see as a good thing. Of course, that's going to be dependent on the kind of Crypto. government that I like. The reason as a libertarian, for that is I like a government capitalism that is always becomes very cronyism. stable and predictable always. and very limited in what it does. Not a government that is, uh, you know, that is can appeal to very special interest groups um, to get power and 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 act on on those special interests. So, I, you know, that's probably where we're going to we're going to have differences. Um, yeah. So, I, like, while you know, the electoral college doesn't make sense if you if you. I understand if you believe in the principles of democracy, electoral college seems pretty bizarre and arbitrary, but I don't. And on balance, it seems like like it probably does more good than harm. I think fascism. based on on the Boy, what I understand Israel, that's of it. The answer. Fascism. So, there you go. Hey, thanks for the follow, okay. Ziggy Diggy. Happy uh, to have I'm you. Now I'm going to throw it over to Pisco. Thank you. Uh, to address next, last username. Well, first of all, thank you, Dylan, so much for hosting this and for inviting me on last minute. This is a lot of fun. And I felt like I got very fiery. I just hey, wanted thanks, to um, say to all the panelists here, thank you for coming on and engaging with us. I had a lot of fun. A lot. 
um, on the merits, I am also against the first past the post nature of our electoral system. Last username, I think Demon Mama was right on the money when there needs to be some sort of ranked choice voting or some kind of runoff election system. Hell Not yeah. only would that get us away Perfect timing from on this dangerous and ultimately futile two party system, I think it would also um, allow new voices and ideas to be heard and um, take away some of the more. I think Probably not so great aspects of party politics that. in this country. Electoral college, I think, as it, as it currently stands, doesn't do what its purported benefits are, which is to give a good cross-sectional analysis. I understand that this reasoning about the electoral college is totally post hoc. The real reason why we have the electoral college is to get the small states to sign on board the original constitution, as well as to make sure that states the the founders knew we were going to have new states True, out in the Shemeke west Ellen. and they wanted reasons for Stop keeping them in the fold and not hey, having thanks, schisms in their their confederacy the confederacy Welcome small state confederacy, have you. Uh, the union essentially um so well, that's the real time reason to learn because we wanted we the small states to sign on board and we wanted to have can. buy-in from future states of our country which would have a small population i would posit to the panel and to the the viewers that those incentives aren't really there anymore we see ourselves more as a national government. And just ask yourselves, compared to local elections and national elections, how what kind of elections animate people to go vote? They're much more engaged in national politics than they are in local politics, I think, from my cursory viewing. And that being the case, I think our federal government should reflect that oh, change in Bosch preference is great. and um, seen I as a lot of my inspiration the Electoral Bosch, College and I came incentivizes from things that are bad. Namely, Hell focusing yeah. on swing nah, states good. and doesn't have any other corollary benefits that Just I can true, see, I I like namely Bosch. reaching out to a, a nice cross section of the country. I think it should be abolished hey, permanently and replaced with Bosch, a rad. direct popular vote. True. Thank you. Okay. And oh, uh, let's go 95, twitch.tv, whatever. Yep. You can follow. Twitch.tv slash Bastiat. I'm going to throw it over to Demon Mama. Thank you. Um, yeah, uh, the Electoral College, again, um, we went back and forth on a lot of things, but the main point remains that the the Electoral College does not achieve what people want it to. Um, it has been sold by the Republican Party as this sort of thing that represents uh, states' rights or something. It doesn't do that. Um, what it does is actually ensures that rural uh, voters in big states get ignored and that, in fact, lots of voters get ignored. And it does guarantee that the Republican Party um, can sort of cheese their way into power again and again and again. Um, and they've done that a whole lot, it seems. It's almost like they just can't win a fair election. And that's what I would like you all to think about, is recognize that the electoral um, college system is not giving you the representation that you deserve, especially if you happen to live in one of the states that's currently objectively underrepresented. Um, I oppose the Electoral College. It is a, a an elitist institution um, that doesn't care for the people of the United States of America. It only benefits one group, the Republican Party. Um, yeah, my name is uh, is Demon Mama. Demon Mama live here on Twitch. I'm going to drop my links um, in the uh, in the chat here in just a second. It's been wonderful um, being here with you all tonight. Um, and afterwards, I always do a and a So if you're looking for something to watch afterwards, come on and hop over. We're going to be talking with Ico a little bit, if any of you know Ico. So, um, yeah, feel free to come chill in my chat afterwards and shoot me a follow. Uh, much love and uh, thank you. Demon Mama, are you suggesting that people should not be in my offline chat just seething at the opportunity for me to go live again this Monday? I mean, I'm not saying that, but if they want something to do in the meantime, you know. So maybe maybe in another tab slightly on while they just stare at my offline chat, shaking eyes, bulging, just waiting. Right? Okay, good. Okay, we're going to throw it over to RGR next. I will be right back. I'm just going to go pee. Um, One minute. Yeah, I don't know. I thought the Demon Llama, don't go anywhere. Demon Mama and Pisco, Pisco, um, made some really good arguments, and I sent them to basically most of them. I don't know. I found them very convincing. Uh, overall, yeah. Uh, I think that the Electoral College does not accurately or like fairly represent the small guy. Um, especially like just because it does represent small things. It re represents small states in particular. Um, but like people who live out in the country or who are underrepresented in, in states where, for example, their votes would not matter. Um, the Electoral College doesn't care about them at all, right? Um, another flaw of the system is that practically, since states are all or nothing, um, it means that only a handful of states actually decide any national election. And I feel like that only further adds to like the undemocratic nature of it. And if people are able to just like game those few particular states and not have to focus on others, 
um, then it tends to lead to unfair outcomes. So I don't know what the alternative is, which is the reason why I wasn't too invested in this particular subject. But I think that you're able to criticize a system and recognize that there are flaws with it without necessarily having an alternative or being able to talk with other people so as if those are two separate issues. Um, I think that one is pretty open and shut to my end, but I don't know. I'm probably going to be talking with other people more about like what a good alternative is. So yeah, it's my bit. Oh, and my name is Riley Grace Roshong, RGR. You can find, just Google me. I'm on Twitch, Twitter, YouTube, all that good stuff. I do politics and memes and, and, and law stuffs. Yeah, it's, it's a good time. Uh, so yeah, thank you for having me on, Dylan. It was a good time. No problem. Oh, I also know you sent me a DM talking about maybe us just doing a Maryland politics stream since we're both Maryland natives uh, active locally. And uh, that sounds like a blast. I'd love to do that. Oh, um, yeah, 100%. Oh, yeah, so let's you, talk more about it. I'll send you a thing about some of the stuff I've done. Uh, it was actually recently. Actually, I haven't given the shout out. There was a guy called Splinters on Twitch who actually did a mini documentary on me and the stuff I've done in Maryland politics oh, yeah. um, for the Microvel campaign, for the congressional campaigns and all that. This is uh, really so good. Yeah. Wait, you've seen it, Madman? Mm -hmm. Oh, well, thank you very much. Uh, so I got to give my boy Splinters a shout out. Uh, uh, if, if anybody wants to check him out, I'm, I'll am i probably uh, I'll, I'll post this thing in chat before I give CTV a little bit of time to uh, give his outro, say his position and, uh, you know, uh, save this panel uh, with with his amazing takes. Well, I'm back. I, uh... Thanks for all I'll staying here, not running away. A critically thinking veteran. I, uh, I'm on Twitter at original underscore CTV if you want to argue with me. Uh, I have been known to go on Riley's Twitter and argue with her. Uh, oh, you didn't even notice? That's cool. Should be that way. Oof. Be that, I, I can't believe that. I mean, wait, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm I mean, sorry. No, 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 Actually, no, no, I legit didn't notice. I'm speak. sorry. Hold on, my time to speak. I'm just saying it's a little. It's like I take the time oh. to go over there and try to interact. I got a lot of spippity spoos. Hell yeah! You need Did I even? Know. I didn't even copy my like, stuff over in here. Man, <laughs> that's so mean. I right, but it's all right. I won't hold that against you. So the electoral college has been working for a long time. It's uh, it's been. I didn't even. If I even forgot the to post. Of it, it's what one way. Yikes! Uh, hey, thanks for the follows, everyone. Ways, Sorry, I was at the opposite, bathroom. Right? Back and now, don't worry. The way that ideas move around the country and how they're represented inside the states uh, across the nation, right? So this thing is working. Uh, I don't see any reason to change it, and you know it kind of goes back to that old motto: if it ain't broke, don't fix it, right? And it ain't broke, so we ain't gonna it's fix broke. it. And, it's broke. It's uh, broke. If you don't like. Uh, how that is set up, right? Uh, this is the United States. You can make a choice to go live somewhere else. <laughs> and if you don't like it, yes, else, I'm, I'm okay. I'm completely okay with that. You can make the best choice for you. Amazing. Uh, if you don't like it, then get yeah. out. That's how it is. If you don't like it, then get out. If you don't like it, then get out. Okay, I think that we've just had a panel show. I appreciate you all coming on. You may all now scatter into Remember, the wind. Stick around. We're doing more. I bring my giant money bags over the mountain behind all of your backs. You all Thank have you, a Del. blessed day. Okay. Thank you. Have a good one. Nice Thank talking you. to all you. Thank you. It was wonderful, wonderful talking with you all. all right, yeah. Thank have a like great day. Bye. Peace out. See y'all later. Bye. Thanks again, Dylan. Man, it was. Oh boy, that was funny. That was a good one. Damn, that was good. Let me find, let me get Ico on here, all right? Let's find Ico. Where's Ico? We got some meme posts. Hey! If you don't like it, get out. If you don't like it, get out. Yep. Let me find Ico here. I, I know I have Ico. Hold on. I think this is Ico. Is that Ico? I think that's Ico. Oh, hey, hey, Ico, take your time. I'm just gonna chat with people for now. Yeah! So, how did we all listen? Did I not promise you a show? Did I not deliver you a show? Because I think, yeah, that'd be great, Iko. I know I just interrupted my rant, but I think I delivered you a show. Uh, just, uh, here's the Discord, Iko. Here you go.
I know, I'm like, I'm doing the ADHD thing where my, my brain's going all over the place and it's not done yet. Don't give up quite yet because we're going to have a quick talk with Ico. We're going to answer any, any questions. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Let's see. What do we got here? We got a Destiny. We got a Destiny clip. Packing the quartz. Hey, thank you so much for the gifted sub G. Much love to you. It is donos, follows, all that sort of stuff. That is what keeps this channel going and keeps me working as hard as I goddamn do. Uh, much love. Um, Crows or I got Pisco to agree to research. Do you have a, uh, opinions on repealing amending the Apportionment Act of 22? It was the act that capped the House and therefore the Electoral College. Um, that would be really interesting. That would be really interesting. Um, if you could d DM me that on my Discord, um, I would love to read more about it. I don't know about that specific amendment, but it sounds really interesting. Let's listen to this take real quick. What's this? If, here's the, hmm. Yeah, fuck it. I'll do this. This is my promise I make next stream. If we were to ever pack the courts in the US, I would leave the shithole fucking country. Because not only would you, the horrible fucking people that live here, rot it from the inside out, but it would actually be, in my opinion, probably one of the largest attacks on the institution of the United States. I would probably leave this shithole country if the courts were packed. Because who the fuck knows what's gonna happen next election cycle if Republicans win and we play some escalating war of dipshittery It's already happening. We're already in the shit. escalating war, my there, dude. There you go. That's my... And then that one guy, Sushi, said he'll pay for my ticket out. I'll be married to Molina by then. I'll have my Swedish fucking... Sushi, suspect shit. sushi. I will moonwalk the fuck out of this. Suspect Sushi, the proud boy, will pay for Dylan... For, for Destiny to leave. I almost said Dylan. Lolololololololololol. Proud boy. Sorry, I just think that's really fucking funny. I just, oh, that's so fucking funny. Yeah, I'm in Seattle. I live in Seattle. What's up? Hey, Ico's in here. Hey. Yeah, Seattle's a beast. I love Seattle. I fucking love it here. Hey, Pinkwug. Happy to see you. I don't know if Sushi is still on Twitch. And frankly, I don't care because um, he's a proud boy. So fuck him. Yeah. Oh, um, oh, uh, you got to click, uh, Iko, you got to click the little demon button to join. And then you'll be able to, um, you'll be able to join into the um, voice calls. You can just jump into the waiting room and I'll pull you into stream call in. Um, I'm not doing an open panel right now, but if you have a specific question, then, um, then yeah, go for it. Um, then I'll bring you in afterwards. Oh, y'all, um, Pinkwug, please drop your Twitter. Pinkwug is a really amazing, um, comic artist. Y'all should follow Pinkwug on Twitter. If you want to see really funny, um, cute comics, go for it. Hey, welcome back, Retcon. It was a wild panel. Absolutely wild. Yeah, there's a, um, when you join my Discord, you'll have to just agree to the rules by clicking the little, dis the little demon, and then it'll let you in and you can see everything. We, we got raided a couple times, so we had to, um, yeah. So, Ico, just do that. There we go. All right, give me a second real quick. We're gonna get Ico in here, and we'll chit-chat and answer questions and all kinds of stuff. Hey, Ico, can you hear me? I'm gonna mute your stream. Okay, cool. Um, did you want to do? I have a whereby if you wanted to do that. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, if uh, you've got a whereby, let's use it. I mean, we yeah, that would be the easiest way, I think. Yeah, I'll, sick. I'll sick, send sick, sick, sick. it to you. Where should I send it to? You? Um, you could just Discord me it. I don't mind. Uh, you can just click on my name on the server and and DM me, or or right here. You should be able to. It's probably the easiest way. Oh, wait, I can do... Hey, Peter Pansoff, thanks for the follow, everyone. Uh, 1,000 lifetime. Sorry I can't keep up with all the follows. Thank you all for the follows. Much love. Any thoughts on... Oh, my God. What's that? 1,000 lifetime said that Madman is me point uh, 2.0. I was like, what the fuck mm, are you talking about? Not going to agree with that one. Not going to agree with that one. Listen. I was gonna say. Because she said she was tired. That's oh. apparently why she's like me. That's why we're the same. Because she said being that tired. she's okay. tired. Yeah, I get it. And yeah. So same same yeah. thing. I feel great. I feel great. But sorry, go ahead. Yeah, here, let me let me hop on <laughs> into can't. the uh, whereby. Uh, and then we can then we can see each other's wonderful faces here. Let's let's get this up and going. Um I'm I'm knocking on heaven's door here. Hey, all right, let's bring this up. Here we go. Oh, let me 
just do this. Hello. 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 How are you doing? Uh, oh. Oh, I mirrored. I'm. <laughs> oh, yeah. We're, we're doing an infinity we're going thing right now. The infinity. Yeah. There we go. I'll just adjust it a little bit so that people can see your head better. I'm not going to just prime. um Yeah. Hmm? No, I was answering somebody oh. in chat. Sorry, sorry. Oh, okay. I should probably oh, put myself on a uh, push to talk thing. since I'm I'm uh Yeah, let me let me let me switch over to push to talk so I can address chat. Yeah. So um cuz I get very confused. I'm not even stoned right now, guys. I didn't even get stoned today. I'm not so going on anything else. This you, is the last thing. Whatever you see is what you get. What you see Just... is what you get. WYSIWYG. Exactly. As they say. But, yeah. Uh, can Continue. I mean, I want to hear you talk. Oh, yeah. I well, just, I mean, um, no, I just usually. Like the, yeah. Uh, whatever you're that? saying. So. Oh, oh, no, no, no. no it's fine. Usually after I do panels like this, um, I just you know pop in and, and yeah i just do q a with people and if people want to oh, chat yeah. with me about stuff yeah but i but I'll i figured you want to talk about in stuff in the so. meantime oh no no yeah you're... i mean we can do we can chat we can do whatever i just wanted to hear because this seems like a classic example of uh just a couple of people having to to debate their humanity randomly to some people who don't know what the fuck they're talking about also i really love how the uh madman doesn't uh approve of gay marriage thing just slipped by what y yeah that was a little weird wasn't it i mean i tried to say that like i mean that's why i went to the point about like oh like i was trying to highlight for the audience that these people are biased they're not being completely honest like they support the republican party and that's why they're so favorable to the republican party like this yeah literally the selling point was just hey not everyone is like me why why are you here then why you have nothing to offer you are fundamentally brain poisoned um yeah so i i just wanted i wanted to hear about um what how do you not explode how are you still like how are you you must have really like a uh, structurally uh or a lot of structural integrity in your body keeping all the pressure inside um i i i tend to uh focus it like a diamond onto particular targets uh some of those um being usually people who wrong me um like uh you may have seen i don't know if you saw my blowout with fanatic that was really great i don't know if you no, saw, i didn't uh you saw some of the result of um of my conversation with lsp i noticed on twitter oh i didn't see any of it i just saw the the twitter the bingo thing and i was like mm-hmm yeah banshee. freaking banshee oh oh you wouldn't even believe like he totally leaned into the sexism thing um a couple of days ago and that's when i decided nah fuck this guy i'm gonna make him look like a fool um and i did and he did look like a fool and then he mauled it on twitter about it um to everyone embarrassingly ignoring his tweets because uh, they know how much he embarrassed himself uh, basically what happened was um earlier this week i was on prime kai's panel um, LSP took it upon himself to, um, subtweet some pretty outrageous lies about me. Um, lie, like, like just fact, just flat out lies. Then he proceeded to dishonestly clip me where he literally interrupted one of the clips in the middle of my sentence. So I challenged him to a debate. I said, listen, you're, you got a big game. You're talking all this shit on Twitter. We've talked on panels. We've talked on stream a million times before. So why don't we have a conversation? Why don't you come on my stream and talk about it? He said, no, he, you know, backed out all these times. Um, and then finally i'm shocked yeah i know right um and after some twitter back and forth i gave him a lot a lot of room um he just finally agreed to go on dylan's show on friday realizing that um a lot of my fans were then and and other people's fans were watching and seeing him um be weasley on twitter so he agreed um went into the panel um accused me i mean keep in mind he called me things like a demon bitch he said i was like you know like this shrill like screaming whining he did uh, the entire thing no argument had no argument we literally played the clip that he clipped on stream for all of our streams to see exposed him as a complete liar which he refused to admit until much later on and the entire time that we talked he just 
he just accused me of whining while whining and not making an argument himself. So yeah, I'm pretty confident in my performance against LSP, and I, I'm pretty sure the audience um, is going to be on my favor in that one. Um, Wait, so where where can we watch this? Oh, um, where can we find the this VOD? VOD. Or what? It's it'll be oh, this VOD. It's from early from earlier, earlier today. today. Yeah, oh. and um, the other stuff, um, the other panel. If you really want the context, um, it's less exciting than he makes it out to be. Um, I've given my take in, on, on on nuclear weapons a million times. Um, I don't know anything about I don't know yeah, anything yeah. about this person. Oh, LSP? I just saw. Yeah. It's not much. Yeah, to know. I just saw and I was like, "Hmm, Mad Boy's gonna be mad." Yeah, LSP. Um, LSP's done a couple of really weird things like this. Um, I'm I'm gonna be completely honest. Like, I don't. Does like he have him a beard? No, he doesn't have a beard. Um, oh, okay, but he he definitely Someone does. Disaster. Him, yeah, him and his. Um, oh yeah, then he rage quit the call. Um, because he was like so exasperated with how much of a shrill banshee I was being. Um, you know, it's really funny how frequently it's it's really funny. It's actually like almost the exact same thing that the extremely misogynist fanatic said to me, and almost everyone says it to me. It's kind of weird. You just get called. Which a, one? What's that? Yeah. Which one? Oh oh, I meant no seriously. I meant fanatic, as in the guy whose name is fanatic. Oh. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. I don't know what uh, happened with that. Oh, um. Do you have like a. Yeah, there's a VOD for that. Summer. That one's right up. It's the most recent video on my YouTube channel. Um, It's probably the spiciest debate I've ever been in. Um, Yeah. Oh, hey, good night, Coco Burke. Um, I don't really know him either. Like, I, like, I've seen him on Prime and stuff, but I haven't really engaged with him at all. Um, uh, yeah. I'm going to follow your YouTube. Yeah, sick. Wait, I would love that. Uh, anybody who doesn't follow my YouTube, oh, uh, I can drop a link right in uh, right in my um, stream chat. Uh, hold on. Perfect. Um, yeah, that's the best place to, if you if you haven't, if you're, like, I put my highlights and stuff up on there, kind of, you know, the, the, the streamer thing that they do, the Destiny thing. Like, I put my highlights and my best debates up on there. Um, so you can always catch it. Also, I might be doing some streaming on YouTube in the future. I don't know. Right now, um, Twitch has been pretty okay for me. Um, I'm doing quite well tonight. Um, but yeah, so it's been very interesting. It's been a very spicy couple of days. I'm not going to lie. Um, but yeah, with Fnatic, um, he had some issue with me after the panel, um, but he came on and instead, um, got really mad that I said that he used a sexist trope, which he did. He did use that. I, you know, he, everybody saw it. Um, and what I never said he, he was sexist. I just, uh, oh, he said, you pointed out the sexist. Yeah. I just said, I literally said what I said thing. to him was, um, nice sexist trope. My dude, I think is the exact wording that I said. Um, and he lost his shit over that. Like, like, like came on my stream was freaking out over it. And so, um, as he increasingly got angrier and angrier and refused to even talk about it, um, or like make any progress or admit that he did that thing. Um, I decided to call him fragile because I, he was being fragile and that really, that really broke him. Um, and he went wild with saying, it's like, oh, your brain sucks dick. He dropped an R slur what? on my, yeah, he said, all, oh, it was wild. You can watch it and you'll see it for yourself Holy if you shit. want to. But he, yeah, it was like two hours. Yeah. And, and the funny thing is, is like, he started getting aggressive and then I just dunked on him for two hours. So it became a thing of me just humiliating him. He would not leave. He wouldn't back out. He just kept staying and, and wouldn't take the L. It was one of the funniest things I've ever engaged with. Um, but yeah, he ended up dropping an R slur on my stream. Um, and then, in fact, it's really funny too because um, the next day, or no, sorry, two days later, he went on Dylan's stream and went 18 minutes before he dropped an R slur, which got him permanently banned from Dylan's channel. So you won't see Fnatic on Dylan's oh. channel. <laughs> oh, yikes! Interesting. There's I've missed so much this week by just like you know, you've still been on like watching Twitch, but you just don't look as much for a day or two, and then all of this stuff happens. Man, it's freaking crazy. But yeah, no, I definitely. I don't see you yell at people very much. It's more like, I mean, like when you're on something and, uh, you know, we all have like yelling fest sometimes, right? Yeah, it gets but intense. You, you're pretty calm, at least when I've seen you, like when you're talking or you're regular yelling. I don't know. Yeah, I guess I it's mean, just the, the thing is, I don't know. I, I can be pretty spicy. I just like... I think the reason, like some people, like, I don't know. I, I think I get pretty spicy sometimes, but the thing is, I don't know. Um, I don't have like a, it sounds silly to say this, but like, I don't put a lot of my like ego into debates. 
Like mm-hmm. a lot of my ego is like, like I, I, I'm a little egotistical sometimes on stream. You know, I'm like the demon of Twitch debate, but that's more of like the streamer thing. Um, but into my is debates. Is that how like, you officially, uh, is that your like uh, official tag? Like the <laughs> no. debate demon? It was literally a, a joke, but bro? like it was so I funny. Mean, uh, people have been memeing on me. So yeah, I mean, I mean, sure. People can call me the demon of Twitch debate. I do tend to grill people pretty hard. I won't lie about that. I go pretty hard on people, um, but I usually try to give them the chance to engage really, really cool. Um, like engage really cool headedly and whatever. Um, and you can see like plenty, there's been plenty of debates I've been in where I've been really cool. I mean, my normal stream content is, you know, a lot of like react stuff and I do some chill stuff. Um, but I don't know lately, there's just been a lot of people really aggro at me. And so when that happens, um, yeah, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna like play nice with people if they're being horrible to me. Um, if somebody yeah. is breaking out sexist shit, I'm gonna call them on it. Um, and if I think somebody is being a weaselly liar, I'm gonna call them on that as well, especially if I have overwhelming evidence of it. Um, so yeah, I don't know. Um, I've had, the you know, patience I've, though. I mean, yeah. like the fact that you are actually trying to make points, like I don't debate uh, anyone. I have conversations with them. Or they say something uh, that shows that they don't have a grasp on the reality of equality and that part's not up for debate. Like, we're past this. Where are you Where are you living? I'm not going to debate a climate change denier. Like, it's just, um, I will just taunt them until they get mad and leave. But then people are like, why are you so mean? I'm like, I don't know. I just feel like maybe uh, we should all acknowledge that police brutality is real and that, like, you know, LGBT people are, like, people. Yeah. I mean, tonight, um, I definitely got pretty heated at a couple of moments. Um, But, again, I don't really, I don't know. I guess I just don't feel like um, I tend to do a lot of, like, ang- unwarranted anger. The way that I mm-hmm. try to approach it is that, like, I, I don't know. Maybe this is a weird way of doing it, but um, if I'm going to get angry about something, like I go, like I think about things like a lot. Like I ruminate on things a lot. So if something's like hitting multiple checks in my mind, and it's like this isn't something worth getting angry over. This isn't something worth getting angry over. Then then that's fine. Um, but and I won't. I'll I'll try to not engage in it. But if I see something that's like today, like um, this guy that we were just on with, um, critically thinking vet, he like went off Ooh. on this whole spiel about he's like. Um, oh yeah, I don't, you think, uh, he's like, do you think people should, you know, insurances should cover personal trainers because your fat ass won't get off the couch and eat and stop eating donuts or whatever? And I'm like, my dude, like, I- I'm just, I- and, I- and that was when I was like, okay, I see how this is going to be played. And so then I went in hard on him and, si- and and throughout the conversation, I was very mean to him from that point out. And I have no problem with that. And I feel like... No, I guess I, I have no problem with that style. I will be very mean to people who I think are very mean or very bad people. That's the way that I go about it. Um, and yeah. yeah, yeah, you seem to ha- have like a much higher threshold for uh, shenanigans. I think. I mean, you, you, you must. Yeah, uh, it's I mean, a requirement. I, think I, do. I guess. <laughs> yeah, I think. Uh, like, it depends on the person, right? Like, um, I don't know. I mean, I've dealt with a lot of of bullshit from a lot of people. I mean, to be fair, like. Uh, with this LSP guy. I pretty much blew up on him and dug into him today, but, like, this is the third time he's gone after me unprompted. Keep in mind, like, he went after me and lied about me to a bunch of people, directly, directly lied to me to other creators in this space. And, um... And that's like, I didn't make any mention of him. He was just doing this because he didn't like something that I, or he thought he didn't like something that I said on a panel. So that's the way that I tend he to do it. He thought that he didn't? Yeah, he didn't. He know, thought he, he didn't like it. Yeah, he couldn't even get my argument straight. So it was really, right. really funny. And that, that VOD will be up later once this thing is done. Um... But yeah, I don't know. So there are some people, you're probably going to see some clips of me, you know, uh, I have the demon mama mauled emote of me going like, Rah! like being activated. And that's when I'm like, okay, it's demon mode. <sighs> like you've, you've brought oh, the fire. But most I of the time, have no. a, one, I have a, a feast emote where I feast on the the blood of chuds and and caps. Hell yeah. Um, like that's the thing. Like uh, I tend to reserve it for, um, I tend to reserve it for people who are like very obviously my sort of, polar opposites oh that's such a good emote oh my god you know matt's stupid art um he did like the iconic hassan uh uh portrait that alex jones critiqued 
and said all the crazy shit about. I didn't know um, this artist. No. Yes, ev- people should go follow Matt's stupid art. I'm going. It's okay if I. Shout yeah, of course. Him out. Yeah, go ahead. He's shout it out. Do you? He's super freaking awesome. I mean, that emote looks what, great. He also made um, this shark emote for me with my head in it. Oh, my God. That's and so cute. Yes, he, he's super awesome. I highly recommend checking him out as a person. Super. When the pandemic first started, uh, since I've always been like a hairstylist, I don't. Uh, I was instantly canceled with with covid and i was freaked out and know what i was gonna do um and and he just got me a bunch of peanut butter and rice and uh and beans from like the internet and just had it shipped over to my house and it was really he's just a really good dude that's really sweet hey that's looking out for one another in this community i know yeah that yeah i mean i don't know when when the word praxis started like being a thing because i'm pretty much a normie i just saw like the meme of uh that girl on i don't know was it tiktok or instagram that's praxis yeah so i don't actually know what that means but it seems like that's probably what it is yeah that is praxis Uh, praxis basically means um when it's like uh in practice is basically what praxis means so like when you put your theory into action that's praxis um yeah, it's applied theory. So saying, oh, um, if you're in, like, say you're an, reading anarchist theory and you see them talking about mutual aid, well, do, going and doing mutual aid, going and helping someone be fed, that's praxis. Yeah. And there you have it. Very, yeah, it's been around for a while, cool. but it's it's repopularized because, you know, the left is, is like having a regrowth, which is great. Yeah. Um, I forgot. Oh, we were talking about feasting on chuds and uh you you were saying what do you do what's your emote for oh the Um, the the demon mama mauled it's like the mama mauled it's like me malding like i'm like when i get like mad and i've had enough and i'm like okay that's it boom and like people on my channel will know because i'll have my you know if i'm on a panel i'm like all right that's it i've had enough okay and that's when i've made the conclusion that like yeah this person is not engaging in like good faith they're not uh they're not being honest um and that's my that's my cue to go uh hard on them and the thing is i just Mm -hmm. feel like certain ideas um really need to be come down hard on um i think there's a lot of there's this tendency for a lot of right wingers to sort of hide their views um and be really really weaselly and dishonest about what they're actually advocating for um -hmm. and we saw some we saw a lot of that today there's other people who Mm -hmm. do it too it's really common with right wingers though so i try to make it a um i try to make it like a I don't know, a habit to, to be willing to and brave enough to call it out when I think that somebody is like not being honest. And then if I think they're further dishonest, then I'm going to go hard on them. And I don't have any problem unsettling them. Once it, once we get to that point, once I've determined like this person is a bad actor, then I'm good. I don't mind like hashing out some insults. I mean, I did that to last username tonight. I called him a Republican bootlicker and uh, he was like, oh, insults, insults. I'm like, yeah, but here you are. This entire conversation has been you avoiding answering the question as to why you really think that the Democrats packing the courts is bad, but Republicans fucking with the courts isn't bad. And the real answer is you just like Republicans, but you won't admit that. So Republican yeah, bootlicker, yeah, cut through yeah. the smoke. Yeah, as it's just like, a, I guess a an extra charitability uh that he seems to extend to the conservatives i don't i'm like hey listen if you have health care you live in canada i don't want to hear shit about what you think about health care you know what i mean like um when he was i don't i i also don't know how the first topic first of all was the first topic given to you as like like as specifically about like if if uh what was it how was it worded it was, was specifically it worded, like, worded uh should insurance cover um trans healthcare basically or gender reassignment surgery i think was the was the actual wording um mm. and uh it started off like relatively well and then i started to smell i smelled a little bit of blood in that i was like they're being a little dodgy. And it got really questionable when um, Mad Operation Madman came in. 
Um, I I don't know much about Operation Madman, but I couldn't disagree more with their with uh, her take on healthcare. And then certain things were said that were, um, I I don't want to say they were negating trans people. But there were a couple of things that were there, and they started to stack up, and it especially got into it when CTV started going off on as critical thinking veterans started going off about, oh, you should just take a walk in the woods and think about things. It's like he said that. Yeah, yeah, he said that. That he said that he believes, like he's like, oh well, you know, uh, I don't know how serious this thing is, and he wouldn't actually, he wouldn't, he was very afraid around the words because again, right wingers know their beliefs are unpopular and are disgusting, and so they have to hide them until they're in friendly, um, you know, until they're surely in friendly territory and so i started to oh, smell yeah. him doing that like yeah I'm, I'm i'm hiding my views and i'm like all right i'm gonna push on this a little bit and sure enough as it comes into it there's a little more to why he's you know so he's oh he's so uh, skeptical about why trans people should be able to get health care but not anybody else didn't really have any other problems uh, on it they often try to dodge the question entirely because they'll go well i don't believe in health care at all and it's like okay well whatever yeah exactly that's yeah that's why I get a lot of, why are you being so mean? I go, why are you, why are you freaking out right now? I'm like, I'm just not going to let the conversation move forward until I'm like, yes or no. Do you think this? Yes or no? Just oh, yes yeah. or no. And I'll stop everything. Because I think like, you know, it's one thing to talk to someone who uh, thinks that gay marriage, like who the fuck, where? God, like there's yeah. still... There, I mean, I know there were still, but like, like you think, yeah. I can't believe you would say that out loud because. Well, yeah, the, um, the, 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 um, the Operation Madman, um, like she, she straight up said like, oh, like, I don't, I think you're being unfair to Republicans because I, I, I don't believe, I believe in traditional marriage. I don't believe in gay marriage, but other Republicans do. I'm like, actually, I don't buy that. I think you're lying right now. Or at least you don't know your own party very well because it's the Republican party's platform. Literally this Monday, the, uh, the, the, the right-wing justices said that they want to overturn Obergfell, the very thing that allows gay people to get married in this country. So, yeah, I just don't buy it. And that's the thing. I have very, the one thing I don't have, I have a very low, okay, maybe I have a very a high tolerance in that I have to deal with it a lot, but I have a very low tolerance for people giving me bullshit to my face, and I will call them out on it. Some people don't like that. Yeah. Um, and also, some people don't like it when I, um, pin them on a point and make them be honest and I won't move from it. And it's not because I'm necessarily stubborn. It's just because I know that they're hiding something being dishonest or something along those lines. Yes. Abs I think that, um, well, well for me, since I grew up with uh, fundamentalist uh, Christians and I think we, I think, I feel like we've talked about this a little bit. A little before. bit. Yeah. We or, have a very yeah. similar background actually. Um, I yeah. grew up in, fundamentalist christian cult yeah in rural states yeah. yeah yeah so um uh you know because of that and knowing different kinds of because it was still like uh you know suburban new jersey but like bu busier there are a lot of still a lot of like uh diversity and stuff so all different kinds of like conservatives and uh i hear the dog whistles with dog's ears so that's really why i'm on panels not to like argue for anything but just being like when you say this or that or someone's like well my family raised me to respect all people i'm like you're definitely going somewhere um yeah and i just yeah i think that it's one thing when if someone's having like a debate and and about a thing that is like their specifically their bad take um but having someone like that on a panel it kind of sucks to just let like like we said think the part that she's will like willing to just openly say she's against gay marriage and no one really seemed to blink like the other like what are yeah. we doing? <laughs> I mean, here's the thing. Um, the way that I looked at it in that case, um, 
I don't really care if she, as a content creator, is against gay marriage. Um, I think that's reprehensible. If she wants to go one-on-one, -on -one, hell yeah. But on a panel, what I want to do is I want to show how she's lying to the audience. My goal mm -hmm. in every panel, I have a very, very specific approach that I do to panels, which is the entire time I'm always thinking, what would a random person in the audience think of this conversation right now? And what do I think would be important to highlight for them? And in my case, I think that it's important to break this myth that like the Republican Party has some bad apples in it. No, the Republican Party is the bad apple. The Republican Party is rotten to its goddamn core. And we should be ashamed that we even have such a party in such prominence. Um, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I have a question from chat for you. Sure, sure. Yeah. Um, do you ever think there is diminishing returns to even debating these things with people like CTV? Like does even engaging them do you more damage than that? Um, with CTV, um, I mean, I thought it was just funny. Like I always, I always sell myself as, and I, I literally, my chat will tell you this. I always tell everyone I am a political edutainer. My goal is to bring you entertaining political content that gives you the seeds to go build your own ideology. And then you can ask me questions. I can help water it, whatever. My goal is not to be some kind of like big brain theory God or write the next, you know, capital volume one or whatever. Um, my goal is just to get people thinking about stuff in the right direction. And that's what I aim for. So um, in this case, it was very entertaining and I don't think there was any harm on it. He was like, I think he was just like popping zannies or something. That guy was out of it. He was so stoned. Like it was, un like chat was laughing. Like the, you should have seen the number of a mega lols. It was just like, lol, because this guy was just blasted. And- um, Was it that or isn't he always like that? Oh, maybe he's always drunk. I don't know. Like I've never been on with him before. Oh, really? That's yeah, my first time. Because yeah. I see him around- and that's pretty much how he always se seems to be. Um, like the uh, the arguing about the electoral college forever, and then being like, "Okay, well, you you explain it to me then, because I know exactly what it is. I already know what it is, but I well, mean, I, know I just want to know. Why don't you, you know. give me the definition? Yeah, exactly. yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. Um, yeah, I don't know. I never have been on with that guy. There are some people. Um, I tend to have kind of a complicated view on the whole, like, I guess the general conversation around platforming. Um, by and large, um, I think there is a lot of value in debating people. Um, and especially when the platform dis difference is like in our favor, so to say. So like if they're bigger and we're smaller, there's a pretty good reason for us to go up against them and potentially take them, you know, give them a, a, sh a shot. Not necessarily that we're going to win their audience, um, but that we're going to get more eyes on ours, that their views are going to come over and maybe they'll, they'll, maybe they'll hate like or whatever, and it'll boost our videos and more like-minded people will come and find our content. Or mm -hmm. depending on the person, there might be room in the audience. But there's another benefit from stuff like panels, which is that panels tend to gather a different audience than the than those of the panelist. So when I go onto Dylan's panel, for example, he has a much more center leaning chat than I do. There are a lot of people in there who are who are interested in hearing what I have to say, but don't know about me yet. So that's why I like panels because I think that panels tend to bring um like they tend to garner an audience um that's very different than like even if there's a right winger on that panel. Um, I think that if as long as I go on that panel and make the right winger look like a fool. The people in that channel and that those centrist types are going to be more favorable to my view. And that's my goal, right? Um, but I do try to be careful with it um, because I think there are some times where it can backfire depending on them. Um, I tend to take a pretty strong stance against bl uh, platforming um, like really skilled. Uh, sorry, I'm just fixing my sock here. Oh, um, yeah. <laughs> but I tend to take a pretty strong stance against platforming like... Um, really really dis like deeply dishonest and skilled propagandists like for example i have a lot of issues when people um platform like milo yiannopoulos because um even though i think he's a fool and his worldviews are atrocious he is incredibly dishonest and he's also very funny in a certain way that can appeal to people that other people can't if i go up against a like a lecture fan or something like that 
they're not winning anybody over. Like, maybe they'll win over other, like, already Trumpist types, but they're not going to win right. any new people over. But if you go up against Milo, there's a good chance that he could sell that he's just a funny guy and you're the censorious left. So I think we do need to be careful at times. Um, sorry, this is like a long-winded answer to this question. But oh, like, no, no, please. But yeah, it's like, I do think we need to be careful, but I think there's, I don't think that we win by, um, like, retreating um, into sort of our spaces. We still need to grow, and that is our biggest goal. In my mind, the goal of the of the left or of progressives, if you're not a leftist, um, you should become a leftist. I'll talk to you about that sometime if you want. <laughs> just kidding. Not you, but people in the audience. Right, um, right, right, right. But yeah, but even if you're just a progressive, um, your goal should be that we need to be winning the most people over, and the only way we can do that is if we grow our platforms. And that's what I'm that's what I'm doing. I'm trying to do so as responsible as responsibly as I can. Yeah. Yeah, I do. I think that um, you're doing an excellent job. We need more like demon debate mamas around. And yeah, I think you're doing really great. Oh, and you. it just is. Uh, it's so interesting to see other like women or non men, non whatever. Uh, just yeah, seeing how people treat uh non men like when they talk and like in the yeah, just even in the chat, um, I was trying to clarify at one point that like some you know when someone just comes in to uh, a stream and immediately says what they think about a thing partially and it's not about the topic. Yeah, and I'm like yeah. I respond because it's it the answer seems or whatever they said seems like it was against trans uh health care uh like regulating it or uh, like having it be mandatory for insurance companies he assumed that we were arguing about single payer or not single payer again um so i pushed back on what he said thinking that he was talking about the actual conversation and he's like why are you being so aggressive why are you always so aggressive um because i like it, it's another person that goes on like panels and stuff i'm like hey i can't that's a you thing i'm just typing man yeah i only it's not even all in caps it's only like a little cap so, well, there's this whole like, thing that happens. If you're a if you're a a woman or a femme presenting person in Twitch space, if you even even have the tiniest bit of like pushback on anybody, if you don't couch it in like the nicest terms, you will get accused of being like a shrieking banshee. You will be accused, as we saw today, you will be accused of being like a horrible bitch, um, which has been called me many times. You'll also get accused all the time of talking way more than anyone else, even if you don't talk. That was one of the things that pissed me off like really set me off in this conversation i had recently with this fanatic guy and she's like you were talking the entire time and i'm like dude it, i objectively was not and the funny thing is i've watched the vod since i didn't even talk for the first entire section of the part that he was talking about he just he just literally in his mind me talking at all me pushing back on him at all was too much and they'll tell you that i went on a panel um you know prime kai's does that amazon lily um women's only women and femmes only um panel um, yeah, I've been on a few times. Yeah, yeah. Maybe, we might have even mm -hmm. been on together. Um, I can't remember. Um, on that panel, the one thing that I hear predominantly, every single femme presenting person in this in this space, same thing. I, everybody always tells me I talk so much, and you cannot win. I've seen, I've gone and watched the comments on these on these uh, videos, and I've seen people, I've seen swarms of commenters who are saying contradictory things about about women so they're like a woman on the panel to be like oh oh why why the fuck was x person even here why were they there why were they even bother and then it's like oh every time she talks it's so annoying so it's either like oh you're not talking enough or you're talking too much can't win and a lot of it is really just yeah, yeah it's just baked in and yeah i mean i do talk i, I i'm a bit long-winded when i take but i don't take more than my fair share i don't think i take more no than my fair share. and on those on those amazon lily panels it's pretty much everyone talks. No one has to yell. People understand uh, what you're saying. Uh, it it really when I started going on things like that as well as like I 
I started and I would love to have you come on one of uh one of these like weeks if you're available. Oh, um yeah. I I do with frames the echo chamber on Sundays um where it's like everyone there we like specifically group people together so that there can be like an like a varied conversation but like also productive like the base like if you don't Yay, believe Reed. in equality hey, like if you, if you are okay with people dying Appreciate in the it. street like you're not gonna be on you don't matter so yeah so that's like what we do and um because it seems like people think that without the chuds there's nothing to talk about like n like you just have to fight with chuds and that's the entertainment part but I, it's really not it's not i'm i it's amazing what you how where you can end up if you're not like blocked off at the end of the driveway you yeah know what I mean? um it's, it's really interesting too because like uh like some people refer to this like chud dunking um industrial complex and i'm not gonna lie i love dunking chud on chud. Dun <laughs> the wait chud what dunking. what is that you ever heard the, the term chud the, the chud no, dunking chud industrial complex uh no i have not yeah um no it, it's a, a term that some people have used. Uh, I find it a little bit funny because I just don't, I don't understand it. But is it uh, supposed to be a bad thing? It's kind of like it's kind of dismissive. It's like saying, "Oh, everybody, everybody just wants to dunk on on the chuds," and it's just you got to get your chud dunking in. But it's like I don't know. I have fun junk, dunking on chuds, but I'm not gonna lie. Some of my most successful panels have been nothing about dunking on anyone. The other day, I did a, a history stream just telling a story about the Battle of Blair Mountain, a, a really important, oft overlooked hit part of american labor history and it was awesome we had like 80 viewers watching that it was fucking wild it was and everybody had a good time so yeah, yeah. i don't know um i do think chud dunking is fun people love conflict people love a little bit of the spice i i always tell people i always bring the spice um but it's not the only thing and people overlook the other stuff that happens people real real stream real fucking stream watchers in chat y'all who watch a lot of streams i know you watch more than just chud dunking i know you watch a lot more than just uh chud dunking so, yeah. um wait what no you keep you keep talking i'm just gonna deal with something oh yeah um but yeah i don't know oh hey wait there comes the announcement thank you very much uh sorry one second riley thank you so very much i don't know why the thing was so late thank you so much for the raid happy to happy to have you all here um very very happy thank you so much riley much much love to you um it was if you're here i don't know if you're here but if you are it was wonderful Hey, yeah, I'll take good care of your peeps. I'm not going to be going for too much longer, but uh, I will take good care of them and I'll send them somewhere fun. All right? Much love. And thank you so much. It was awesome being on a panel with you today. Absolutely. Sorry, just wanted to shout out the R R Riley Grace Roshong just raided me and it was cool as hell. Oh, nice. Yeah. Um, hello, hello, raiders in yeah. Demon Mama's stream. Yay! Yeah, um, today's been really, really fun. Today's been a wild day, full of spice and full of chud dunking, but not every day is like this, but we still have lots of fun on my stream anyway. Um, but yeah, um, yeah, it's, it's been an interesting ride. Um, when I first started out, I was, um, I don't know, I, I kind of started out my stream with, like, this goal of, like, not backing down from stuff, and I realized how much shit that I was getting really quick, um, and I just... I just don't take it. And some people read that like really bad and they're just like, oh, like, like they'll react really, really badly um, to, you know, the fact that I don't like tolerate their bullshit. Um, but it mostly, the most significant one is by far, um, you get a lot of the sort of intersection of misogyny and trans misogyny for sure. Um, where it's just like, you get weird people who have weird feelings about women and weird people who have weird feelings about trans people. And it's, I bump into that pretty frequently, but I don't really, uh, yeah, yeah I don't know. I, I just have, yeah. yeah. No, go ahead. Oh, I was just gonna Finish say, I've just adopted this sort of, uh, approach of just cracking down hard on it. I'm not going to let it fly. Um, and, uh, yeah, that's just the way I approach it with my channel. And, uh, I don't know. Some people. No, I think that's yeah. great. That's completely, uh, I think it's important. I think it's important to also, yeah, um, we need different types, right? We don't all do the same job. There's like a spectrum of engagement with chuds, 
you know, like oh, for sure. you reason you reason with them until they reach a certain point, and then you dunk on the chats, right? I find them, I reveal them, and then I let people like you do the real work. <laughs> If you want to, I'm just like, no, no, you're just wrong. And, uh, yeah, those Amazon Lily panels, they really make them mad. So mad. I actually had an excellent time a couple weeks ago, the time before last, when, uh, there were some mad boys just waiting in the open panel uh, to Mald, we were talking about, like, ice taking women's uteruses and, you know, the kids dying. A lot of different serious topics. Um, and they, we had, so, uh, Catherine Dominates and, uh, and Mix Vivian Wolf jumped in randomly and said some crazy shit about, like, you know, I just want to have a civil conversation on because, of course, like these mad boys were like, "Why are you being so like aggressive to me and whatever? Why, are you why being so everyone uppity? else is?" Yeah, like just uh, he's like, they're like, no one else is yelling, and uh, so she comes in, she's like, "I just want to have a a civil conversation about like." you know whether or not we should strip the flesh from men's bones and it's like and then it just went on uh you know with Catherine to saying like i'm an anarchist but i would love to have my tax dollars go to that and it, it's actually um, amazing i'm going to probably make that part an alert that's um, awesome but we need we need more unapologetic uh people out there just saying mm -hmm. oh by the way this isn't acceptable yeah. this isn't like uh, an acceptable thing like position to have so someone can yeah, engage cover that with what they're saying but it should be noted for the record that like it's not gay marriage isn't up for debate like we are uh it just blows my mind um watching these things I tried to get some screenshots of of your and Riley's faces too when they said some things. You're both like, what? like, like normally it's just me making those faces. <laughs> I'm just feel yeah, like, yeah, I'm like, like, I don't know. I feel like I'm very, very expressive with my face, and like to the point where like when my my camera died the other day, and I was like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, chat. I can't even stream like this because I don't even know if I'm like reacting to things. <laughs> like it's just weird. Like I just have like a lot of facial expressions. So, uh, I use I do weaponize those on panels. I'm not gonna lie. I weaponize my facial expressions. It upsets some people. Um, not oh, always, well, but sometimes. Yeah. Um, and then sometimes. Uh, someone said once, like, why are you going to be, like, rude like this and condescending? If you're going to be an asshole, just be an asshole. I'm like, I'm just, I'm just being exactly what I am. Like, I, if you're saying stupid things, I'm going to talk to you like you're, you're stupid and explain that you are wrong to, for the sake of other people. Yeah. Um, and, and. I think that's another thing too, is like, uh, it's like, oh, fuck, how do I put this? Um, fuck, this is so hard to, to like word it. Um, I don't know. Like, here's the thing. Uh, people won't actually, the funny thing is, is like, y you mentioned like, oh, like gay marriage is not up for debate. Well, here's the thing. I'm actually willing yeah. to debate it if they want to, but nobody ever will. They always, they always hide it behind these other views. And it's funny because the number of people who've like, uh, said shit about me. And then I said, well, why don't you come on the channel and debate me? The number of times these chuds will just flee. They'll just fucking disappear. Like this one guy came in and was just shitting, like, like straight up, just like insulting my streaming, um, doing all this stupid bullshit. And I'm like, come on in and chat with me, get in the discord or I'm fucking banning you ban him. And then like 10 minutes later, we got like slammed with a bot raid, like a fuck ton of bots, just slamming our discord, slamming here. And I'm just like, you people are cowards. You won't even when did debate that happen? it. This was like, um, a week ago. Um, I guess it's the same this people. This happened been... to me and Freems on like yep. Sunday, I think, because it was dur. Wait, was it during Maybe the it was Sunday? Maybe it was. Maybe because yeah. it like on the Discord, it was great. Like uh, 
the spamming. I didn't know there was even like a, a TTS on Discord. There is like some, yeah. So then I, I, it sucks being a boomer and not knowing how to do anything. Cause I'm like, how do I make it stop? The, the um, TTS thing. Here's the thing. Free hint for anyone who has a Discord right now. Go onto your Discord and just disable TTS permissions from everyone. Because I can promise you, I learned this. The only reason I even knew this was because I happened to be in um, Pop Culture Professor, also previously known as Gushin. I don't know if anybody knows, but I was in Gushin's Discord once when they got raided by a bunch of chuds. TTS messaging with slurs. Um... And I, you, it's really hard to get it to stop. You have to like literally stop the, the, the Discord. You have to shut down your computer sometimes. It's horrible. So yeah, uh, um, make sure if you own a disc, if you run a Discord, please turn off the TTS options before it happens to you. <laughs> oh yeah, yes. absolutely. Um, Hopefully no no chuds have any fat. Do it real fast before anyone that might be hate watch. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> goes into your Discords. By the way, people. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's. Oh, it was the same day I just saw in your chat. It was the same day that every yep, everyone's Discord every yeah. man. Those chuds good at collectivizing, I guess. They come together. That's one thing. I think I, I think, want as far as I understand, they just bought it's just like one or two people who just bought a bunch of uh bots for like twenty bucks. Like I, I talked to somebody um from Bad Bunny's um chat and community who's like tied in I, I still have to sit down and talk with um og prodigy who wrote a bot called posada bot i'm gonna talk to talk to them about um about getting posada bot set up for my channel um which can help prevent those things um but apparently like bad bunny gets hit with it all the time and um it's like literally oh, just like a handful of the, like angry dudes who just throw 20 dollars at these like bot sites that you can buy a hundred like a hundred twitch accounts and then throw it in yeah, oh. I think they try to get you banned by like reporting you for botting. But um, I emailed Twitch and I was like, I was like, hey, like we got, uh, I jumped. Like, okay, it's completely fucked my um my numbers by the way because like now I'm only getting like three percent engagement because I got um follower botted for like twelve thousand followers, which is like, oh, that oh. sucks. Um, oh, so is that that's why people do it? Um, oh, yeah. I didn't understand. There's like, a couple of the... things they'll do. Yeah. Oh, I didn't understand, like, why the followers thing was, like, an attack, I guess. It just seems, like, very random, but the it affecting engagement makes sense. Um, I never look at the analytics part because I'm, like, uh, I don't know what to make of it. I'm, like, well, if it goes well, it goes well, I guess. I'm yeah. just gonna do do things. I'm a bit of an analytics uh, analytics uh, hawk. I I, I kind of find that stuff fascinating. So um, no, it's yeah. that's great. It's just my brain is not uh, set up that way. So I I I do. I've accepted um, that there is, I guess, more. Uh, yeah, like I said, I'm not even stoned right now. This is how bad my ADHD is. Like, Happens I have like, uh, yeah. Yeah, just, I have ADHD. As it's well, been so. better since uh, since joining Twitch, though, because um, I never did any kind of thing like this until I started uh, streaming oh, damn on Demican. Twitch. Um, and so I didn't even talk to anyone except my partner for like two years because I just kind of like stop doing social media and i'm like i think i have friends but i just don't so it's almost like i started talking in shorthand to my partner because he understands what i mean and then i had to start using full sentences and uh, it's it's going better at least i used to have to have a bookmark per like i would have like a friend or mod in my discord voice to remind me what i was talking about because every two seconds be like what was i talking about was yeah talking about? um i think like for me at least like streaming in interacts with my adhd in a really like satisfying way for the most part um which is just like there's like always people chatting in chat and sometimes my brain just goes off somewhere and I'm just like, sorry, everyone square brain, you know, like it's the ADHD, you know, like, um, but, but it's really cool. Like, I don't know, for me, it's like engaging with the chat and having all this stimulus is like the perfect balance. And also it just helps me like stay on track. And it is true. Sometimes chat saves my butt sometimes where I'm like, what the fuck was I talking about? And somebody in chat will be like, bloop. Um, 
Oh, Pinkwug. Uh, Pinkwug asked me, what the hell happened when you had no viewers? Um, and the funny thing is, I, I was very lucky in that I've always had viewers. Um, I started my stream with like three to seven viewers on average um, because I had some people who followed me over from Vosh's community. So, yeah, just I was very lucky in that way and having like a few okay. little handful of people. Oh, and of course, my friends, of course, um, like my wonderful yeah. mod and and uh, animation expert glooby but yeah nice yeah i um i actually i because i'm like and i'm like older than a lot of people on twitch and i don't play video games at all so i came to twitch because i Bosch knew of hassan and because of hassan i started watching will neff and uh he was like maybe like a 40 viewer uh person at the time Bosch when gang, I joined Bosch his gang. community. And that's how, like, his community is so fucking cool. Like, the community that he's cultivated. That's how I met uh, Matt Stupid Art. And so, like, having that support of, of friends. Like, when I started, I always had at least, like, five people hanging out with me. And that is, it must be really, really hard to start with, like, no twitch interactions at all yeah i mean but then again it's weird to stream and not watch other streamers at all yeah too. i always tell people like when people ask me like oh how to get into streaming well like like I'm not like any sort of like super success story. I'm doing pretty well. I have a really nice community. I have a wonderful community on that front. Biggest success ever. But you know, finances with streaming is tough. Um, Especially right now. I yeah. mean, like with uh, COVID uh, like and people not having jobs and stuff so it's totally I, I there are like a handful oh, sick, of people who do task. have money still that are keeping like twitch politics alive yeah. pretty much like that will just go and like gift a ton of subs here and there and i'm like good good work godspeed i think gifting subs is like a super cool thing for for people to do instead of like I don't like the demanding subs like okay guys listen it's time what are you doing like yeah yeah listen so. i'm just gonna take a quick second there you just reminded me chat you better fucking cough up some subs no i'm just kidding <laughs> i love you all very much uh my pitch is always i and i well, go with the pbs one brought to you by viewers like you so y'all make it happen if you got the free cash toss it our way yeah prime primes for uh for demon mama chatters primes and any like uh you know oil princes or uh what was it uh i'm really important calls it ppe princes now because the, the people PPE that have princes, all like yeah. the yeah the n95 masks and stuff and they're doing real great thank you yeah. thank you wendell d um it worked yeah, thank but, you um I totally forgot what I was talking about. Oh, it's See, okay. I might as well just be stoned. No, hey, you know what? It's fine. Way. Listen, people love this is the thing. Um, and I'm just gonna be a little little uh vulnerable Andy here for a second. Um, but listen, streaming is like amazing. And I I love like all of the bullshit of the platforms and everything we gotta deal with aside. I fell in love with streaming because I just loved watching streams and the way that you interact with your community and the way that everybody interacts with their community is fucking amazing to me. And like the cool thing is that it's a profession where if you sometimes forget what you're saying, it's not going to kill you. In fact, people are going to like that a lot of the time. And I like that. You know what I mean? Like I like when I'm watching a streamer and they're like, they're like doing something and somebody says something fucking dumb as shit in chat. And they're like, they look over and you know that they read the thing in chat and that they lose their phone. It's just great. It's an organic thing. That's like very entertaining. And you know, so hey, oh, yeah. never feel bad a about it. A thousand percent. A thousand percent. Although that is, it's kind of annoying because, like I guess having, cause I also like I I I call it like I have these two like tyrant kings, like these warring kingdoms fighting over the territory of my like body and brain with like ADHD and OCD. So there's like always a lot of stuff going on, um, and then and then I'll be compared to someone like Madman because she also said she's tired and stoned and lost her train of thought. I'm like, mm, 
Well, she just was probably running. I don't even think she was having problems. I think she just didn't want to deal with it. Yeah, I, I think she just was kind of checked out. Did she provide sources? Were there no, sources? Did she come no, back with those sources? No, nah, she didn't. Yeah. It's really funny, too, yeah, because I know not. exactly. Like, I've, I've heard these arguments a hundred times. You know, being trans, like, literally, I have to I deal with this shit all the time. Um, and... Yeah, that's the fucking thing. I'm like, yeah. how do you deal? I guess it's just you like you just must be used to it right like like i mean not used to it used to yeah. it, but like like you kind of it's like the calluses have you become callous um, i guess i don't know the thing that it is is like um for me part of it is like um like i don't know there's certain types of like transphobia that i don't think i'll ever be able to get used to um, I can tell you like very honestly, I can in fact tell you an experience that I had. Um, I once went on someone else's, I made a guest appearance on someone else's podcast and someone in the chat, um, was sort of aggressively and continually misgendering me despite being corrected for it. And they, they got banned out of the mm -hmm. chat or whatever. Um, but, um, at that moment it made me feel really bad because it felt like, um, it felt like because of through no fault of my own that I was negatively impacting someone else's like experience and their their place just because I happened to walk into the p space being trans. And that's something that I never get used to. People coming into chat and saying dumb like transphobic tropes and whatever doesn't get me. I have control over those people. You know, if they come in here, I can blast them out of my chat if I want to, which is part of the way that I deal with it. Um, like if I see people in here, there is some nice feeling that I get out of being able to just blast them out of my chat that they were here watching my shit and now they can't. So get the fuck out. You know what I mean? Um, very much so. I think that's, that's they can't part of it. see chat, right? Yeah. They won't like, be able to see chat. They can, they can keep watching, keep benefiting. They can, me, but, yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, that probably was the best, the best thing, the best. Thank you so much, Royce, by or the way. I guess the closest, thank you so very much. Uh, delightful banning experience that I've had was when I banned like nuance bro, when everyone was like debating him. That's really when I started, uh, I don't know. I had this realization because like I said, I had been away from social media. I, and I'm like pretty much okay. Like uh, a lot of things didn't affect my life. Like sexism didn't like being Asian looking didn't really a affect me too much in like day to day life because I could just navigate around like the dumb shit. Right. I'm yeah. like, I've always been fairly safe. I don't leave the house very often. And so um, just when like that, uh nuance bro arc happened and he was using like uh the asian community that he said he was a part of somehow as like uh against like black people like uh as an example of like black people are the most violent to all the other people and stuff and so that made me so angry like when like when people use like uh asians as like a tool um, and that's just being a tool to oppress other people. That's not even like the being oppressed part. And then seeing like uh, every single uh, person that debated, like all these white people debating him. Um, and then just like he got like a like a good faith hello and a cordial goodbye from everyone. And uh, I realized like how much chat gets thrown under the bus. Um, but like just the, the people like in general, like marginalized people being like what, like being on a panel, Good night, um, you, alive. You, you, you know, like especially line. the open panels line. where suddenly it it's Much love. like rest well, the, there will be like one trans person or like one black person or something. And then suddenly yep. like yep. the topic is like, is, are these kinds of people, people. And like you said today, yep. you're yep. like, you're. Was it you or Riley? It was both Riley of us. We, we double teamed Yeah, they were like, yeah. yeah, you're like, uh, you're talking about me right now. You're not talking about like them. This me. This is me. Eudemonium yeah. Lime. So, um, but typically, uh, the person when they are there on a, a panel like that, uh, especially if they are the only one, they you can't yell. You can't like if you leave, you look like. A snowflake mm -hmm. supposedly if you yell you look like uh out of control emotional you just yes, like was, reinforce Mariner, tropes about like whatever um so that's why i'm like hey you know what 
I can yell at people. I can yell for people. I can be activated. I can go on and just like tell this person that they're fucking wrong for someone else. Like that's, and you know, and I have a lot of people who will like DM me like from like, uh, like viewers um, saying that like, I really appreciate that you said the thing because no one was saying the thing, which is just that, you know, sometimes, sometimes also I try not to call people names, but sometimes, sometimes someone needs to be, yeah, yeah, like, um, like I called redneck a cunt the other day. Oh, <laughs> like redneck. I just, like, yeah. <laughs> redneck got banned out of my chat. In fact, it's really funny that you bring him up because, um, that redneck guy, um, I was doing a section on the ice uterus theft uh, situation, and I specifically asked him. Like, he was in my chat. I didn't know who the fuck he was, and he was just like, I was like, listen, can you just like not spam my chat with stupid shit? We're just about to do a really important segment, and I really don't want to like be distracted. So if you could just – we'll talk about whatever you want to debate about, but don't – post this pro-Trump crap when we're talking about a sensitive issue like this. Couldn't respect it. Kept doing it, so I just banned him out of my chat. And then he got all mad and and, and posted about how the uh, liberal, so much for the tolerant left, etc., etc. Yeah, um, no. Yeah. None of that. When you, um, oh, the reason, when we, uh, when we had like a dunking on Chud party uh, the other day, um, it was, we were talking about like the ice thing and then uh uh this one dude said that you know it's terrible about the kids sleeping on the floor and stuff but if you go to a different country like like you can't expect to be comfortable and i was like oh this is we're gonna have a silly goose time with you like that's what happens is is like that's holy shit yeah, and he said that. And the yeah, way I look said, at stuff like, crazy like that. Shit. Oh, yeah, sorry, no, I didn't mean to cut you off. Um, I was just gonna say like the 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 way I look at stuff like that is that saying something like that is inherently uncivil. So why the hell would I like that is an uncivil statement to make a statement like oh yeah, kids should just be, expect to die on a cold floor if they come to our country. Then I go, are you are you, really? You know what? Let's just fucking. <laughs> yeah. You know what? Let's just fucking. Let's dispense with the pleasantries at this point. Because if you're going to think you can slide stuff like that, I'm not going to play nice with you. And that's yeah. another thing, too, that I wanted to comment on is that, like, um, something that I've learned in this space is that, like, um, there's a lot of times where, um, like, you have to take a lot of shit for being, um, you know, a woman in these spaces, for being trans in these spaces, for being any sort of minority in these spaces, but you also have to realize that you can take your share and you just have to be confident enough to actually do it. Not not blindly confident so that you're saying stupid shit, but be confident in the things that you know and that you know for sure and be willing to stand up for it. And that's like something, that's my general advice to ev to everyone. I mean, like, I, I don't know. Um, one of the things I, I try to do is I put, a, I put a lot of work into understanding my own opinions. I put a lot of research into the stuff that I talk about. Not perfect, but I put a lot of love into that. And so once I'm on a panel, I'm going to be confident. And I'm also not going to just have to, like yield an undue amount of time just because that's the way that our sexist society has been structured. And if people don't like me, they can come debate me on my on my channel. So bring it on, baby. You know what I mean? That's how I, that's how I roll into it. So if, if people really have a problem with me, come on. I would love, well, I would love to see you uh, debate Madman, but I guarantee, listen, uh, I don't, like, I don't know, I don't know who they are, I don't know if they stream, but I would, I dare you, I dare you to take on Dima Mama. Yeah, I, I would love it. I, uh, if anybody has connections yeah. with Operation Madman, feel free to tell them that they should come talk to me about stuff, because I have a feeling we'd have a very fun discussion. It would be so fun, but I don't know. She might have internet problems that day. Um, like I really yeah. love, I love, I'd love to show you all of my sources, but mm, I just can't. I can't see anything. Um, is this my and starts crumpling paper and <laughs> my pog, Gina? You know. Thank you for oh, that the, announcement. The things uh, that, but anyway. Yeah, um, um, I mean, it's something I've encountered with a lot of these right wingers is they'll find ways to avoid. Oh, it's really funny. Uh, now, suspect sushi. You might be familiar with this guy, the proud oh, boy. Oh yes. Yeah, I was gonna debate yes, him. I was. 
I was going to have a conversation with him. Don't uh, do it now. Bef- well, yeah. yeah, like before. And I'm like, I don't even know if someone can have a conversation with him without it being TOF. Nope. Nope. Um, I mean, you might be able to slip by if nobody notices or nobody reports, but it's a big risk. He's an open, proud boy. Um, but yeah, no, that would have been amazing to see because, um, yeah, he's confident enough that he'll always go and have a talk. And I had the most, uh, a monumental document prepared to absolutely crush him. And I've gone up against him many times. So we'll see. It might still happen in the future on, uh, on YouTube or something. Um, oh, Danabo yeah. said that, um, he can reach out to Operation Madman if it, if it's in good faith. Yeah. Demon Mama of has- course can extend all the good faith. I have no good faith for people who are uh, against gay marriage and not like 99,000 years old. And I don't, I don't even know. So, uh, but that's not me. That is not, that's not me. This is for demon mama. This is what? Oh, I'll (laughs) absolutely, I'll absolutely engage. Um, Oh, listen, Listen, I will engage in good faith. I always, you people may not believe this, but I do always engage in good faith. But if we start engaging in good faith and that good faith is taken for granted or trod upon, I'm not going to play nice. Um, mm-hmm. You know, I'm more than willing to have a good faith discussion. I literally do this all the time. Um, it's just, you know, some people, they um, will claim they're doing something in good faith while they're actually saying things that are way worse than they want you to admit. And if you try to pin them on it, then they'll say, oh, you're you're misrepresenting me. Okay, well, then explain it. And then they won't. So I don't know. But again, I can engage yeah. very much in good faith. Absolutely. If, 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 um, if a conversation wants to be had about trans rights, about trans medicine, any of the things that were talked about on this panel, gladly. In fact, I think I could be very educational. I think maybe um, she would learn a lot from me. Um, Maybe even, um, I mean, I would assume there's been plenty of people in my chat who've learned from me engaging with people. And here's the thing. This is the funny thing. Because I have had people who came in not knowing a whole lot about trans stuff who then learned Mm -hmm. about it because I talked about it, which is awesome. The problem that I have is when people come in And they not only express that they're ignorant on a topic, which is one thing, not knowing something is forgivable, of course, but that they also are um, prejudiced. And then they might not even be honest about their prejudice. And um, if that's the case, like, that's not a good faith conversation, you know? If if Never. That's never going to be a good faith conversation. So, yeah. I Right. When someone has an agenda already or someone is sticking with, something that they're not going to let go of like um it's like debating a creationist you're not going yes. to ever ever change their mind so i think that um i don't i think that it's it's i don't know i've had some criticisms yeah, uh sure. presented Sounds to great, me Danibal of like well i should let thank you Danibo. uh let people like set themselves up before i completely like call them out as harshly as i do and i'm like no because no one's gonna remember what they said like in 10 minutes especially on a panel if someone says something that's very yikes i'm not going to like calmly be like well um when you see this like blah 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 and let them give like a like a faux reasonable answer like mm, no like i yeah it's just i think that i think um you do definitely come across as an educational person and i appreciate that as well Well, i'm not educational i have i do no education i don't know i think you can be educational um i think i don't know i think people undersell the value of twitch as a uh place of potential learning i do think there's some stuff like i mean let's be real panels are mostly mostly for the fun of it um but i do believe that it that and i think that i succeed at this i do believe that i can go into a panel with a couple of key things that i want people to take away and learn and that will be stuck in their brain and then they'll be thinking about this going forward and uh not everybody but i'm probably going to get some of them and i mean it seems that that is the case because uh, i mean i've grown my channel's grown and other people in this space's channels have grown from doing that type of thing so yeah um yeah yeah. do you think do you feel like people listen to you? 
Like, do you ever feel like because um, I guess because people yeah, will say like, oh, you're talking like so much, like we said, like you're talking so much or being so aggressive, whatever. Um, I, I wonder if, I don't know. I'm always curious about like, because there are a lot of, um, a lot of chuds that will literally just, I'll, I'll be talking, I'll be making a point and they look at me like, when did you get here? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like... No, I think that happens for sh for sure. In fact, um, the, the conversation I had with LSP today um, is a perfect example of that. And he's not even a chud, really. I mean, he's chuddish in some ways. Um, and he's like a liberal. Um, but like, yeah, that was one where I'm like, are you even listening to my words? Or is it just that you're tuning out the moment I open my mouth? Because that's what it feels like sometimes. And there are definitely times where people have just gone out of their way to mischaracterize what I said. And I'm just like, what are you talking about? Did you listen to my words at all? And it's like, nah, they have a they have a problem with who I am and how I engage and whatever. And not actually listen to my words at all. It does happen. Um, but I will say that I've gotten better at making people listen to me. And the way that I, you know, I don't know. I have some, that was, those are the tricks tell of the trade. <laughs> oh, wait, you, nah, nah, not, nah, you don't want to get too, too deep. Okay. No, I'll tell you about it. Tell, sure. tell me, tell me, tell me some stuff. Yeah. I, um, I, I mean, I think the spice it. is part of it. Like being willing to um, have a little bit of bite to the things that I say. Like if somebody tries to slide something by me and I catch on it and I bring it back up, if I um, like will if I'm in like a closing statement and somebody said something really egregious, I'll call it back and like, um, you know, openly denounce it or whatever. Um, those are ways that you can get people's attention to start listening to you because you've now made it personal. You know what I mean? And you don't have to do this if you're like, uh, you know, again, I don't think, I think there are a lot of guys who get away with not having to do that because they're, they're just inherently listened to and they're taken, um, as, oh yeah, like this person is speaking with authority on it or whatever. Um, but yeah. I think sometimes we have to be willing to push back a little bit. Um, and also, and it depends on the topic too, because I feel like with stuff like sexism, it's never taken seriously. Almost nobody in our space takes sexism. Ah, okay, that's not true. Not nobody in our space. There's a lot of good people who do, but like chuds and stuff in this space, um, there's so many people who don't get like take any form of sexism seriously and if you want to make that sometimes you have to make it personal and that's what i did with fanatic um where i was I'm, like i'm totally gonna watch that oh you should it's a great it's a great <laughs> watch um it, just so you know it's like the the context of the debate like that we had on stream is a little bit less important so don't worry so much if there's certain things that i'm referring from the previous debate that don't make sense mm -hmm. just listen for the for the the interaction that we have on there um i i love yeah. it yeah and it's um, something where i was like yeah, listen like you made uh i called him out on a sexist trope and i chose my words very carefully because i had a feeling that if i said anything about it he'd blow up no matter what i said i could have just said uh you know if i brought up that it was a sexist tro trope at all which it was and he was being sexist i am very sure of that now p following the conversation that we had but i was very careful with my words i said hey nice such uh, you know nice uh sexist trope you've rolled out for this conversation or whatever um and that specific it's thing so mad yeah and i'm gonna push on that a little bit if i see i'm getting someone's attention um by doing something like that of course i'm gonna push on it a little more because if they're just ignoring everything else i set i say yeah um of course that's how it goes again we don't have the luxury of playing nice in this space because we will just be talked over all day if you play nice you've seen this happen before i'm sure i'm sure you've seen great like other women creators, femme presenting creators in this space um, who do great shit, smart as fuck, and they play nice on a panel and never get talked to. They never get a chance to speak. Mm -hmm. Except they, for their opening they, statements. They sit there. Yeah. yeah. And it's because they're being nice. It's not because they're doing anything wrong. Um, it's because, it's just because people will ignore them and, and talk over them and plow over them. This is what I have. Um, let's see. I I have uh, lots of shit. I made it all like warp size, but <laughs> I have a lot of like animations for when I have something that I would like to say. So that way everybody knows it on the panel. Yeah, it's, a... it's like you can't ignore it. Yeah, it's there's there. many ways to do it, but it, it sucks. But we have to play by kind of dirty tactics sometimes. Um, and it wouldn't be that way if people didn't treat us bad. Um, it's just the way it goes. Um, Pinkwug in my chat 
um, brought up panels aren't really for changing minds. No debates really are. It's more for the audience. Yeah. yeah, I agree. Now, here's the thing. The funny thing is I do think that panels and debates can change minds in the audience. And there's a unique yeah. reason for this. The reason is because I think that when people are in chat, they feel s safer than they do with their being called on the spot. So you could be calling their exact ideas on the spot and they might even defend it in chat, but they're safe. They have a wall between them, which, le which means there's less of that ego flare up. So they're likely to sometimes think about it. But yeah. But yeah, I, I never go into a debate expecting to, well, unless it's with a friend. If I'm having a, like a friendly debate with a friend, then I'll be glad, I'll gladly engage in the sort of like changing minds of the debater. But yeah, people, in, it's always about the audience. And um, yeah, that's the way I engage with things for sure. You know, I think that um, one thing that I think people sometimes make the mistake while they're on a panel of paying way too much attention to the main chat like if it's someone else's panel <laughs> and so they get like upset about that especially like on amazon yeah that makes Lily, sense. like sometimes Pink too it's like it's like we have like we have all the people here we don't need to engage with chads don't even acknowledge them um until later when you feast on them uh mm. but yeah it's 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 very it's very um interesting to see all of the different uh ways that people engage and i think that it makes me happy that there are other people that are doing things that um aren't uh i don't know i guess like i i love that there are different people that can do things that i can't do and i i think that like there's a uh, way too much uh like critique of someone's style when in general it's like just because you don't want to do it doesn't mean it shouldn't be done it's yeah no i agree with you i think there's a lot of people who are who are like willing to like throw out um like creators just because they don't like the style um i mean i think this happened i think there's a number of creators we could talk about with regard to this um and the thing is, like, while I do think there are, of course, very much, of course, examples of people doing, like, harm that need to be called out and blah, 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 I think by and large, it's okay to have some people's styles that you don't like. We need a diversity of tactics, um, and uh, that's how you win. That's how you win over people is by having um, many different ways of expressing important ideas. So, yeah, I very much believe in that, and it's something that I love about um about this space right now and i hope that it gets better going forward because we can always do better um but there yeah. are a lot of different people in here and there's a lot of people um you know sort of on the way up that are i, I keep saying this like like uh twitch politics the the small twitch politics is just like so much good talent here there are so many mm -hmm. talented people here who are doing amazing shit and it's wild. Yeah. Yeah. It blows, blows me away. And I, I, I hope to see that that continues to grow and that we can all grow this space together. Um, we'll have to see. Because Twitch doesn't want it. <laughs> Twitch doesn't here. really seem to want it. Twitch to. doesn't want it, want it to grow. So it's like up to, um, I mean, and also like we, we all have so many like mutual like chatters and stuff. I love going into other people's streams and seeing like someone use like my PP laugh emote or something just like when no one knows that I'm there because I'm just lurking and it's just it's super fun. Um, and then it's like when and then when like we uh, hang out together, then everyone can like just. Uh, emulsify Mingo. and have like a fun time yeah yeah exactly. it's really good it is a really good thing and um yeah something that i really hope to see more of is that we keep growing and the thing is um i don't buy all the people um there were some people who said like oh like twitch is twitch politics is dead without without destiny or it's a dead end or whatever it's not it's growing the space is growing for sure there are more and more people who are interested in politics this space is growing and it will continue to grow if we continue to pour passion into it and do and not just pour passion like into the emptiness but also get good at getting our names out there be aggressive with how we um put our our streams out and and whatnot um yeah so um yeah i think that like really it's just um i think that like the more that uh, we all interact and, and support each other and platform each other. Like there's, I, um, when I saw that there are actual, there are like 
people hiding within the left that have like actually bad like like jq pillars and stuff like there's like some i i i've realized that um there's 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 True so much plug. actual True. like a uh, dangerous shit out there that like anyone that i'd had like a previous like issue um, with Denebo, or we could do did something that i was like trans rights that's not very nice HRT, of you to do to me all kinds of stuff um, i just let it go i'm like you know what if you don't want people to die in the street we're fine i don't care let's just let's just not like if if a message if someone's messaging doesn't make sense to you then it's just probably not for you you're just not the target market mm -hmm. and people spend a lot of time arguing over what americans think or what the average american is and literally there's no such thing as an average american that's really like true. do you remember when i don't know who who did it but some like people some people made like a a mock-up of what like a completely like uh intermingled person would look like like a latte person if there was only one like race because everyone just like made it and you know what i mean like they made uh like a sim uh i don't know what you call it, uh, like a, a 3D... synthesis or or something along those lines yeah something like like they did this to jesus too of like what jesus would look like probably in reality and which was like a brown person obviously um but yeah so they basically what my entire point was just that there isn't an average american uh and we don't need to guess how to uh play the play a game of like this is what the people will want because people don't want the same things yeah people and... love different stuff yeah, yeah, and that's fine. They're just other people. And um but you know, all the basic things like not dying on the street, like making sure everyone's going to use healthcare because no matter what, everyone's going to need it at some point. You're never never going to have a person unless they like live in the woods and die in the woods, like they will use healthcare whether, you know, yeah, I mean, yeah, everyone gets so old. Everyone gets, everyone hurts gets themselves old. sometimes. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So it's like these are logical things, like the things that, uh, like left lefty, uh, you know, principles. I mean, I can't really put a whole umbrella. I don't know enough about it. I don't know enough about. Uh, I was very confused when I came to Twitch, and there were all these words that I didn't. It didn't turn out to mean what I thought that they would mean just by like my literal interpretation of it. Um, so I, I still get pretty confused about that stuff. But um, you mean like, yeah, like so, universal health care or, or leftism or like or um, I think like when people just talk about like communism stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like not the not overall the, like uh, I guess terms for more specific things. Oh, you I mean guess. like when people have like a like a description of their tendency, like an anarcho syndicalist or something along those lines? Yeah, and then like, like when they try to explain, yeah, or like when they explain what it is that the explanation involves. Um, I don't know. I'm I'm up. I'm in favor of like of generally when speaking to like. Uh, a person you don't really know like to kind of assume that they don't necessarily know what you're talking about like for instance the uh the free will debate like when people like talk about free will versus um determinism yes exactly mm -hmm. i'm like no one knows what you're like people That's a think huge that you're topic. on the same page yeah yeah yeah, people think you're on the same page about that, but I'm pretty sure oh, great, that Danibo. you're just Thank not you. talking about the same thing. And yeah, so there's a lot of stuff. I don't know where yeah. I'm going with no, any of this. No, it's okay. Um, I actually got a wrap up stream here. Um, oh yeah, you've been on for yeah, a long time, I've been on right? for almost eight yeah. hours. So I got to wrap up here. Oh, I want to yeah. I wanted to spend a few minutes saying good night to my chat. Um, but oh, yeah. is there anything else you wanted to hit me with before you go? Do you want to shout yourself out to my stream? Because that would be really cool. 
Sure. Um, I'm Ica Rules. I do the stuff that I was just talking about. Um, I do weird stuff on streams. I do a lot of voice mod stuff. And um, I have the Echo Chamber with Freems Sundays at 10 p.m. Eastern. Um, and yes, we'll definitely have to get Demon Mama on in the future. And yeah, thanks for talking. I really yeah, appreciate it. Was it was awesome. I love talking and with you. Do you want to uh, uh, introduce yourself or outro yeah, yeah. yourself? Yeah, I'll outro myself. <laughs> yeah, Demon Mama Live here on um, Twitch. Uh, your Demon Mama on Twitter. You can also follow my YouTube if you want to catch like my highlights and stuff. If you're not, uh, you know, if you're, you're all booked out on how many streamers you can follow, I do put those up. Um, yeah, if you could come hang out and chill with us anytime. We'd love to have you. Um, there's probably some overlap already, I'm quite sure. Um, but yeah, um, so yeah, that's me. I do political variety content, a lot of debates, a lot of panels, a um, lot of history stuff. Um, try to keep it as fun as possible. So yeah. Awesome. Oh, and one final thing. Uh, this stream has been brought to you by Freem's Loose Lotion. Uh, Freem's Loose Lotion, just, just put it on. Yeah. I don't exactly. really know what it is, but there we go. <laughs> Exactly. Exactly. Well, you'll find out. You'll find out one of these days. Okay. Thanks for thanks for your time, yeah, and thank I'll you. talk to you soon. Bye. Hey, that was a great talk. Let me Let's just pop see. out of here. Ba -doop. Hey. All right. Chat. 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 We have had such a wonderful day today, have we not? Has this not been wonderfully entertaining? My hair is all over the place now because I've been like wah, 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 for like hours. Is there anything that I forgot to answer? Was there anybody's questions that I forgot to answer? Yes, Glooby, please show me something. Please. Edutainment achieved. Indeed. Of course. And I will be streaming again, uh, not this weekend, but on Monday, probably, is when I'll be on next, unless something crazy happens this weekend. You can expect me on Monday. I'm going to be taking two days off to um, spend some time with my partners, which is going to be great. You've had a wonderful day. I actually got inspired and was writing some music while you were having a chat. I think you will enjoy it when it's done. <laughs> Gay Fesh, that's fucking awesome. Good shit, and, and this is my personal... My personal praise to you for getting some art made. That's fucking awesome. Did LSP ever overcome his mother? That's a good question. One for the ages. I can't answer it. Only LSP knows the answer to that one, Gina. But I'm sure the answer is amazing. Yeah, uh, show me in a DM. Wait, after? Yeah, do, wait, do you want to show me? On, do you want me to show it on stream, uh, Glooby? A call? A call? Let's, Glooby, render it, and I'll show it on stream next stream. How about that? How about that? Sound good? Or or must it be shown now? Next stream? Maybe? 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 Do I know Spectre of Syndicalism? I don't, but maybe I will in the future. Um, did I answer? I hope I answered everybody's questions. Do you want to show me? Okay, all right. No, all right, Glooby. All right, listen. You get a special treatment, okay? Listen, Glooby, you get special treatment. All right, call me up. Come on, shoot me a call. Let's do this. Let's do it real quick. Let's show everybody the thing. Spectre's on Prime panels a lot. Oh, I haven't been on with him. That's interesting. All right, here we go. All right, hello? Hey. Oh, you're really soft. What the hell? No, I don't know. Sorry. Okay. All right, so you have a video to show me or a screen share or something? Uh, I cannot hear you. Give me a sec. Huh, I cannot hear you. Wait. How about now? Can you hear me now? Yeah. Sorry, I, I forgot I had push to talk on. Do you want to... Are you going to share your screen to me? What you're going to do here? Uh, okay. Make, All right. Really, All right. Really I can show... And you, and you want me to show this to stream, right? Yeah, it's fine. It's All right. Stream. Here we go. Stream. Enjoy. All right, tell me when. Go. All right. Oh, I voice typed all this, by the way. And I think I did a pretty good Mr. Mankey impersonation. Even though it's literally not what it looks like. And there's another part, but I don't want to show that yet. That's for when it's finally done. All right. Let's play it. Okay, everybody. Today we have two presidential candidates. We got Donald Trump, Trump, okay? And we got Joe Biden, okay? Now we're going to open with the opening statements, okay? Fuck you. No. Fuck you, dude. Fuck off. No. Fuck you. I said it first. Fuck it, bitch. I, like it show. I don't want to show the other part. It's, stupid. it's a little quiet. 
But oh, you want me to turn it up then? I could hear your voice acting. Yeah, oh. I mean, if you could turn it up a little bit, that'd be great. Because I, I cranked you up and it's still too quiet. How do I even do that in terms of... I have no clue. I, I could try doing this. I will say, your voices were fantastic. I, I want everybody on stream to be able to hear them. Here, is this better? Okay, everybody. Yeah, it's better. Is, okay. Today we have two presidential candidates. We got Donald Trump, okay? And we got Joe Biden, okay? Now we're gonna open with the opening statements, okay? Fuck you. No, fuck you, dude. Fuck off. No, fuck you. I said it first. Fuck it, bitch. Do I actually kind of want to show you the other part? Hey! It's nah, save it. Stupid. Save it. Save it till it's done, Glooby. Don't show it early. Uh, Make them wait. Make the chat wait. Uh, I'll give you a hint, though. Give it, me the hint, quick. It, uh, take on me. Ooh, good shit. I'm liking where this meme is going. Uh, voice acting, uh, 10 out of 10. Animation, great. Glooby, you okay. keep on this fucking animation shit because I'm telling you, you got talent. I'm serious. You did it all while I was watching your stream. Damn! I was like, I, got, I, was like, I gotta rock. I wanna, I wanna do it fast so she could see it. Hey, well, listen. Uh, don't feel like you gotta rush yourself. I'm glad that my stream was able to inspire you to do some art. That makes me unbelievably happy. And I'm not gonna lie, chat. You guys have been really kind to me today. So thank you all for that. We're going to find somebody to rate out. And if anybody has any other questions that I might have forgot to answer, hit me with them quick. Um, other than that, I'm going to go eat some food and pizza and hang out and stuff. Hey, uh, Pisco, thank you for the follow. Glooby, anything else you want to hit me with before, before I head out? Uh, Good stream. Thank you very much, Glooby. And I'm that old gonna... guy, I didn't understand him. The guy that kept hitting the vape. Oh, the C uh, critical thinking vet? Yeah, I think yeah. he was... Uh, I think he was uh, Hitting the he bottle a little bit. Stoned. Yeah, he was he was out of his mind for sure. Oh shit, I'm, I'm out of here. Goodbye. Bye. All right, everyone. Thank you for a wonderful stream. Thank you all for your support. Um, Pisco, thank you so much for the follow. Yeah, we're gonna raid out. Let me just figure out. Let me see who's live still. I think Ico's live. Oh. Since I picked her up. Um. Yeah. Let's raid Ico. Let's go into Ico. We'll go. We can. That would be. That's perfect. Let's let's do Ico. That's literally perfect. Go give some love to Ico. You all are wonderful. Thank you so much for the support. I hope you had a great time. More stuff soon. More stuff coming soon. Mwah. Much love. And who knows? Maybe on Monday I'll have more information about the the um, website. We'll see. Much love. See you all very soon. Good night.